everyone. Hello! We are here to stream. Thank you, uh, everyone for coming. This is so exciting. I'm retweeting the announcement. Oh, I yeah. Did it. That's great. Hi, everyone. So many people here. I'm excited. I don't have to draw this time, so it's not a performance. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This time it's We're just, just going to be words reading for screen. like eight hours in, in one go. Right? Oh, thank you. The hair good. Hair good. We match, sort of, but yeah. mine has been fading faster than Abby's. I have blonde hair, so it stays longer, I think, or something. All right, I mean, let's just get started. Oh, hi, Mom. Hello. I have, we're simulcasting to our Steam page and to our YouTube channel, because why not? Uh, so I've got so many little windows to keep my eyes on. Oh, that 47 right now. <sighs> Wowee. Thank you all so much for being here. This is amazing. All right, let's- um, I'll come up with something fun. Spoons. Um, Where are you going to write spoons? Slimy. Slimy. Slimy? Slimy. No. It's a little best. That's a that's a Sylvester's sneaky name. Sylvester's a cute name. Yeah, Sylvester. He lives in the city Good of afternoon all. Well, town well. place. The monster. I had a lot of fun on that monster drawing stream. And the the last that one that was did, not a monster drawing stream. It was that was a fan. That was a stream. draw our own OCs stream. It was fun. I liked it. Everybody had great ideas. Town place. The big city. The Big Apple. The Big Apple. Where's Sylvester? We're from. I'm from Hold the on. Big Apple. The Big. <laughs> oh yeah, that's apple. good. The Big Apple. Do we want? Oh yeah, games? we don't we don't stream too often anymore. Townsville, nice. We're doing street smart, street smart powerful, powerful build, build, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it was like one too many things to keep up with. Um, <coughs> and I've read this part of the game I... so much. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm really trying to optimize window placement, so... Okay. That's good, now, that's good. Hold on. Oh, shoot. Come on. Let's hope this isn't... Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay. And then if I bring this up, I can see everything. Thank you, everyone, yeah. who's... Followed Wild Sage. Thank you so much for the Prime sub. The Knuckle of V was so fun. That was. I'm so Which glad one? I know about that now. Oh, the person who requested oh, the Knuckle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Love Good to learn stuff. about that. Well, you're the narrator, so yeah, that's go me. Go for <clears> it. <throat> you jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and CD depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Pearl Ann Scarlet, your cousin's mother, and your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. That's the title of the game. Name drop. Title drop early. Uh, so anyways, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. Now if we can pair a Dustin plushie with a boiled peanuts plushie, boiled that's peanuts. interesting. Hello, I've Bob got a whole here. line of plushies Hello, I've been everyone. thinking about. Oh, sorry. I recognize so many names. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff. You know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Everyone's saying him. Obviously, Everyone okay. says they think this is this looks like Todd Bojack Horseman. I used to get uh, this looked like me. Um, I did not agree. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Dude, what's wrong with you? Pushing joggers into the harbor. That's awful. What if they drowned? We're from the Big Apple. What if they drowned? What if they drowned? <laughs> yeah, I was such a shithead back then. I'm still a bit of a shithead, but hey, nobody's nerfed. 
So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend, and he said it hurt a lot, so I guess she really was mad and not just playing. <laughs> Makes me ashamed to be from Baltimore. <laughs> it's classic Baltimore. I've only been there a few times, but these vibes are right. But she kept swinging, and soon enough, she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out, and her phone got soaked, so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year. So it's pretty serious. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like, for real. And, geez, do you ever get so mad you just want to, like, kill somebody? Hey! <laughs> stop it! Huh? Stop what? Stop what? Whatever it is you think you're doing right now. You know what I'm talking about. This whole corner is stranger on the bus and try and make him uncomfortable act. I'm not playing along. <laughs> alright, alright. Maybe I never really wanted to kill her. Even if I threatened it a little bit. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. Thank you for hating this guy. <laughs> it's based off of an IRL encounter with a guy when yeah. we were waiting for a bus from New York back up to Boston. All of the worst shit he says is exactly what this guy said. Yeah. Anyway. We, we missed the point where he went uh, shooting mountain lions with a BB gun. Yeah. Gosh, hi, uh, ES Rough Rider, and hi to your son, Teddy. Hello! Uh, John Umper, thank you for the follow. <clears throat> But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff. So I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. You gonna do the, the special one? Yeah, let's, let's just do the special ones. Yeah, it was a Greyhound. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Get your act together. Because someday you're gonna run into someone who doesn't tolerate your bullshit. I'm Joey Yu-Gi-Oh now. You cross your arms and glare at the young man with menace in your eyes. Huh, alright. Maybe you have a point. I guess New York will always be there waiting for me. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? I did it. No need to be nasty, I was just asking. Not like I'm gonna follow you up the bus or anything. So funny. <laughs> so if you aren't getting off at my stop, then you must be headed to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the holler, as they call it in these parts. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, so I'd know. Almost nobody ever goes up that way. Though come to think of it, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see. There's always a jobs listing or two on the boards around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I had a guy like this get drunk and fall asleep on my lap. Oh my god. Yeah, that would be pretty concerning. Traumatizing. I haven't heard from them in a while, uh, now that I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. The GM Fangirl14, thank you for the follow. Thank you so much. Hope they didn't die. He looks Good. back at his phone, for once focused on something other than you. Oh, Cadabry, thanks for the six month resub. Thank you. Oh, this is me. It's lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts! I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Yeah, sometimes picking a dialogue option establishes new facts about, how, uh, about who you are. Did I make it impossible to have a peanut allergy as powerful build? No, it is possible. Nah, we're taking them, right? Yeah, yeah, we gotta take them. It's an item. It's an we item. We have to carry the item with us. I, I love boiled peanuts. You take the boiled peanuts. Nice. I love boiled peanuts. Glad they're going to a good home. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. And just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow. End the line. Uh, Everyone's from Brooklyn. Everyone's from I'm Brooklyn and New York. I mean, yeah. sorry, in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there.
The bus finally comes to a stop. It's oh, breaks. Squeak. Oh, yeah. Squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign, at least, reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the door behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Hey, Sylvester. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. Always take the powerful options. Oh, hold on. Go back down. There we go. All right. Tabitha! You make direct eye contact, straighten your back, and extend your right arm. She holds out her hand limply in response. You grip it and squeeze, shaking once. Very professional. Tabitha's lip curls in disgust. She pulls her hand back quickly, covertly wiping it on her pants as she turns to the car. Oh, Shy, there are a couple options to eat the peanuts yourself. Powerful builds, protein is protein option, consumes them immediately on the bus, yeah. and I think there's another one that does it too. It's just if you take them, there's not an option to eat them later. They're only an item then. Come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. Oh, Peppermint Park is really good. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. Ah, welcome! Oh, welcome to the welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip. Dialogue options labeled Explorer can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. I'll let you do whichever. Yeah. Just I'm go through all I, of them. I'm Sylvester. <laughs> How are you holding up? Fine. You don't have to hide how you're feeling around me. We're family, even if we just met. She I sighs. learned about family from Fast and the Furious lately. It's family. She sighs a particularly heavy sigh. Look, I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine, really. I'm so glad we have uh, talking and not talking sprites for this now. <laughs> I can't believe we never actually met before this. Yep, you have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. Is this like what I see? <laughs> yeah, dead moms, right? Dead moms club. This is like when I see people named Abby in games. So I'm just like, but, but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Your cousin stares straight ahead. Her expression icy. Uh, yeah, the funeral. It's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Jeez, what's your problem? I'm just not gonna say anything. You decide it's best to not say anything in response. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you as someone used to cramped apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you, a jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. As soon as you enter, you're hit with a blast of dusty air. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive, each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. You want to eat tea? Yeah, nah, yeah. we're good at lying. Yeah, it's beautiful. I don't think I've ever been in a building that feels as powerful as this. Oh, that's a fun. 
you're lying through your teeth. But Tabitha doesn't need to know that. In fact, not only does she not need to know that you're lying, but she won't know, ever. You're a very good liar. It is. The estate was the prize jewel of this region for a long time. It's quite a magnificent piece of architecture, even now. Shall we take our tour? Follow me. I feel like something that hasn't come up in the text quite yet is uh, how much the Scarlet family does not like the Biltmore estate because it replaced them as, like, the estate in the Appalachians. Anyway, that's a fun fact for you. Mm -hmm. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a dong, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip, some explorer options prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. Falsenkatsu, welcome to the stream. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, I've always dreamed of having a kitchen like nah. I'm open to <laughs> I've always talk. dreamed of having a awesome. kitchen. Awesome, I love PB and J. How'd you know it was one of my favorites? That smile can't be real. There it is. Uh, somehow, like, you made it even worse when you pre-worked her sprites. Thank you. I don't know what I did. I didn't, but good for you. Well, I think it's like the face of her change. The, oh, yeah, the, the shape, shape of her face changed a little bit. Yeah. You know? I've always dreamed of having a kitchen like this. It's so much bigger than what I'm used to in the city. Is that a kitchen island? Aw, oh, thank you, historic architecture nerd, for enjoying the house. <laughs> it is. Thank you. Yeah. Is there someone in town to... to I might want to eat something other than PB&J this week, though. Much as I love it. Is there somewhere in town we can get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online, though, so I wouldn't be going with you. Oh, How folksy. very folksy! Is it? It's a store that fulfills your general shopping needs. General store just describes what it is. What if I want ice cream? Nah. Aww. All right, what's next on the tour? Bathroom, follow me. Great. It's been hours since I've gone. You don't want to go on one of those Greyhound buses. No, it's you nasty really don't. In there. Oh my god. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Hey, okay. Is that your cat? What's his name? Fru Fru. Do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Yeah. Don't even, don't even be, you decide to follow Tabitha's advice. I'm street smart. Street Shall smart we move on? Better. The bathroom awaits. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Fru -fru. <laughs> Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must, if you must. It is a nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mystery stains paint the floor. Uh, let's just lift it. Ah. Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. Friends! We're from Brooklyn. This is <laughs> usual. This is a normal bathroom. I can feel the UTI looking at this. <laughs> a toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. <laughs> the bugs are gone now. What is there to complain about? Oh yeah, the talk to animals is fun. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. Look, you, you can't be picky when you gotta drain the dragon. When you gotta go, you gotta go. When like, you gots to go, you gots to go. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. It does have that uh, abandoned hotel bathroom vibe to it, yeah. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half-hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you'd better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang her clothes up, but you can use the dresser. Should be empty. 
you want to use one of your specials. Hey, you need any help around the house? There's a lot of boxes and stuff lying around here. I could help you move things around and fix the place up. Look, I appreciate the offer, but Janie already comes in once a week. It's fine. Ah, uh, but if you use the bathroom in the diner, I'd have to draw another background. That's true. <laughs> Very difficult. What an inviting room. How'd you know how much I love cherubs? Is that what you call them? Cherubs? That chest is to die for. I'm surprised to see that you have such discerning taste. Every last piece of furniture in this room is a genuine antique handed down through the family for generations. Who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Guess I'll get settled. Follow me. I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. Foyer. Foyer. That's how you foyer. pronounce it. It's foyer. This is America. <laughs> this concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip, some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths. Some right away, and others down the line. <laughs> Why does the bathroom look like this? Just a reused backward from the... the, the yeah. yeah. Where are you going? Where are you going? To work. Somebody has to pay the bills around here. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine. Same as every Scarlet who came before me. Except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. Can I come, Can I come watch? <laughs> what? No, the mine is dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go with that's kind of sad. Don't you ever think about things you could be doing with your life that might give you a better sense of purpose than uh, running a coal mine? Some of us don't have that luxury of choice, Sylvester. Some of us had to stick around to keep the family business from crumbling, to keep this town from crumbling. Some of us had to temper our expectations for how our lives were going to go. There's a simple satisfaction to getting a task done, and that's all I need. Do whatever it is you want to do while I'm gone. Just don't do anything dumb or dangerous, not while I'm responsible for you. Are you sure you can't take the day off? It's a special occasion, your cousin's in town. No. Some of us have responsibilities. If you think about it, though, isn't family the greatest responsibility of them all? Ha! That's rich coming from someone whose mother abandoned us because she didn't want to run the family business. And now, here we are. I, or here I am, the only per person left to manage the estate. And here you are, asking to take me away from my duties to hang out with you. Oh. Altono96 asks, was there anything in particular that inspired the Tabitha character? God, I don't remember. I don't think so. I think we just wanted her to be like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's your yeah, cousin. We thought we it was fun time with that her. you come here to beat your cousin and she doesn't want to spend time with you and it's just awful. And I don't yeah. know, it just kind of grew from there. Yeah. I'm going back to work. Stay here, go into town, do whatever you want. Just keep out of trouble. Okay, but what am I supposed to do while you're gone? There's a very demanding job I should be getting back to right now that doesn't include figuring out activities for you to occupy your time with. I'm not your babysitter. Why don't you, I don't know, go walk around in town or something until you get tired? <laughs> don't expect to see much of me. Uh, also, fi find your own way to entertain yourself, asshole. Later. Why aren't you staying put? <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, uh, by entertain yourself, sit in a room and stare at the wall for a week. Did you read this one? Yeah. There are historic buildings to look at. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Okay, yeah, yeah. Did I do Inspiration. something wrong? Inspiration, a cactus. You asked me to come to this funeral, but since the moment I got here, you've been acting like I spat in your coffee. What's going on? Was it something I said? Okay, I'm sorry I've been testy since you got here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please just... Stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. All right, all right. Let's hang when you get back. <laughs> Sit in the garden and watch grass grow. Yeah. Perfect. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and this sprawling, decrepit estate. 
Yeah, well, you know, you prove that you need a, a babysitter in the first yeah. two episodes. <laughs> That's why she's it's a good. dynamic character yes. who adapts to changing circumstances. Such as you keep almost like your guest being almost dead. dying. Yeah. Multiple times, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Tabitha gone, there's no one stopping you from going into the forbidden wings of the estate. I forgot that this combo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot too. Wow, that shadow really does look like a cat. It looks like a cat. I have to fix it. <laughs> it's distracting. It's funny. Anyway, except for the locks and chains sealing them shut. Street smart. An insurmountable obstacle for most, but a mild inconvenience for you. As the locks fall, the doors moan open, revealing the entrance to what must have been an incredibly lavish ballroom. Yeah, Tabitha at least has a means to access Facebook. Oh, that was a oh, the journal looks really nice. Yeah. Faintly in the distance, you can hear the quiet notes of an old piano playing from another room. The forbidden wings are yours to explore. This was a mistake. Lock the doors and forget you ever opened them. Enter. You can see why your cousin warned you against coming here. Deep gashes tear across the floor, and years of detritus have turned what once must have been a magnificent and open ballroom into a tight and claustrophobic maze. One second, I'm looking at the quality of the... Oh, the music is max. Maybe it is pretty quiet in here, right? Yeah. Well, in general, I felt that the music's a little... <laughs> Thank you, Cadavery. I miss opening the doors and being met with just a brick wall. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was really funny, and I it also liked funny. it. funny. Uh, I feel like it was a little mean to Street Smart players, though. Street Smart. Uh, it was mostly that we did not know what should be behind the door yeah. and didn't have time to draw it. So right. I'm really happy about being able to do this. Yeah, it's fun. This is, this is a, a, I don't think anyone's, anyone's, like, put it together, or if they have, they haven't commented, but this is actually a piano cover of the song from the bus. Yep. Also, thank you for saying the art is stunning. Multiplayer Scarlet Hollow. Tabitha's two annoying cousins. That's this. All right, I read this one. The piano you heard from outside the ballroom has grown louder. Wherever it is, it's nearby. I think there's actually like a lot of interesting stuff that we and Brandon have done with the music in this game in terms of like different themes borrowing from other uh, other themes. It's probably just a self-playing model, but maybe you aren't as alone here as you thought. <laughs> I love the chat. You make your way over to the painting covering the far wall. It's a family tree. Angry black scratches cover the space where your mother should be. I, man, the amount of discussion there has been on like every type of board or forum for our game of this, of this tree. <laughs> <sighs> I won't weigh in. Where's the piano coming from? As far as you can tell, there are three exits to the ballroom. There is, of course, the door you came through, and on your far right is a door beyond a broken floor, a dead end. I would guess for future generations it would be kind of a, you start a second one, right? When yeah. you run out of space, like this wall on the then side now there's a new one and you start with like Tabitha or something a forest of scarlets I like the visual of it ending at the current line though it's I don't know it's nice it's fun <laughs> alright across the room from where you entered is the third and final exit a glass doorway you can just barely make out behind a pile of broken furniture you move to investigate it more closely as you approach, the playing grows clearer. Without a doubt, the piano is behind this door. Yeah. The pile of furniture blocking the doorway weighs a considerable amount, and it's safe to say that most people would be unable to move it on their own. This is actually this is an incredibly impressive feat. Yes. Clearing this is that superhuman. Out. Powerful build. You aren't most people, though. And with a bit of muscle, you clear it off to the side. As you move the final piece out of your way, the playing stops as if aware of your efforts, which one probably would be <laughs> if it's not a self-playing model. We're not weighing in on any uh, fan theory discourse. We'll try our best not to. 
I'm terrible at this, but I'm holding it back. As you step through the door, something slips through your periphery and into the shadows. You lock eyes with it as it lingers in the doorway at the far side of the room, the two of you separated by a cavernous gash in the floor. But your theories wouldn't be fun if we just gave you answers to your questions. It's the mystery. Yeah. Instead, you'll just have to keep revising them again and again and again and again um, in the months-long wait between each episode. Silently stare. You silently hold your gaze as the presence slinks further into the shadows. Leave this I... place. Whatever it was you just encountered leaves you wondering just how much longer you should even stay in the estate on your own. Let's go to yeah. the room. You stand at the entrance to your room. Dresser. Sleep. You immediately collapse onto the bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Or so you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises up from the mattress. These sheets might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. You try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places, and you can feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. Dresser. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. An opossum, sorry, opossum lurks within. It is quiet. I never know angry. what to do when I write it's it so out. It's so hard when you write you I just think kind you of have, have to say to an opossum. That is the, the grammatical thing, but usually a possum with an apostrophe is how I do it. Oh, because that's how you say it. Oh, but it looks awful. What? Because it's, well, okay, if you aren't used to it, it does make people stumble. As does an opossum. Grab. Please, Please get out of my dresser. <laughs> You attempt to scoop the creature up in your hands, but it digs its nails into the soft wood of the drawer, resisting your touch. As you tug harder, it stiffens in your hand and begins to drool, feigning death. You have spooked the poor thing. You close the drawer. You might as well leave the possum before you give it a heart attack. Dustin, Dustin. You open the top drawer next. It's empty, a good place as you'll find to put your clothes. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you'd have been better off keeping your clothes in your nice, clean bag, but there's no going back now. Let's go! Closet. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here. No, I ain't touching that. Some things are best left untouched. You close the closet behind you. Let's, uh, let's go eat food. We're hungry. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. A PB&J sounds exactly like what you need to take on the rest of the day. You head Dustin, to the kitchen. Dustin has a lisp. He can't change her mind about that. That's interesting. I don't think I have... I don't think I have a voice in my head for what Dustin sounds like. Do you? Yeah. Oh. It's how I talk, but um, without words. Mm -hmm. Without more words in it. Yeah, I think we both don't have character voices in our head. We just think in our voices, right? Not my voice for the most part. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task, given the state of the place, but the aggressive growl growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, a plate, and a knife. Usually when I imagine somebody like Dustin, I imagine, oh, uh, who's that musician? She sounds like a cat. Just like a very, oh, Joanna Newsom. Mm. Kind of just like a, this really high-pitched, strange, yowly voice. I like that. I'm going to do voice oh, acting for this game. That's, that's so cute. great. Do, do I all, love it. Y'all um, stream it. Or do you just do it together? Oh, yeah. We've been watching the... the um, yeah, those folks. Yeah, those folks yeah. do the, the stuff. Oh, it's so much fun. It's cute. The Gretchen is very funny. Uh, fridge. I'm beelining. Yeah, as you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. Below it, in separate handwriting, are the words, okie dokie. You open the fridge. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Right for. Why did you do that? 
What were you expecting? This takeout container is disgusting beyond words. A liquefied mess wholly congealed in its styrofoam shell. You can't even tell what it used to be. This substance doesn't just smell bad. It smells ancient. Protein is protein, you say to yourself, as you force the slimy substance down your throat and into the steel trap that is your stomach. Your mouth and throat and senses might be revolted, but you know your muscles will thank you for this later. Captain Barbasso, thank you for the follow. Thank you! You've never been one to puke, puke or get sick, but you don't see any reason why this slime would be any different. Hello! Mm. All right. Now we're not going to... We want to be besties with Tabitha this run. All right. Take your jelly. You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. I forgot why we were grabbing the jelly. I forgot that we were going to eat something else today yeah, besides the takeout. Yeah, we gotta eat so much stuff. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. Okay, I will say. Don't I'll worry, we know yeah, about yeah. we 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 remember <laughs> we the mouse and the mac and cheese the like that. We are keeping track of these things. Yeah, I'm so excited. That's that's the only that's the only little crumb I'll give. Um, yeah, uh, the tin foilers, the Charlie Kellys. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is not a consequence free Ooh, action. Johnny Cash is a fun one for Wayne. That's nice. All you need now is a plate, a knife, bread, and some peanut butter. Yeah, I suppose, like, you know, we've got that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. I kind of get, I mean, I, in general, I feel like there, there's parts of Wayne that are, like, very Marlon brando -y. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's so, a like, lot of that. So, like, that, that, like, streetcar on the waterfront era Brando voice. I'll do that voice. Can you do Put that? Put cotton voice? balls in oh, my. There you go. Yeah, you do that. Wow. Let me search the fridge. Wait. No, you do the. But you did that already. All right. Pantry. Uh, pantry. pantry. Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. Take bread. Yeah, you pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great. One step closer to a satisfying snack. Oh, let's see. Yeah, we're actually going to be uh, Tabitha's We're going to be a little time. gremlin that wants to be Tabitha's minion. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure is uh, not unfamiliar to a lot of people who have played. Yeah, but like I think in episode two we'll like wait for her for the mines and stuff like that. Ah, yeah. The like really full minion. All right. Take me we'll, we'll, we'll talk to other people about how uh, unions are bad, actually. Yeah, oh, uh, it's so mean that everybody's ganging up on Tabitha. She's so innocent. I can't wait That's until inevitable discourse where yeah. somebody is like, Crunk. you can say anti-union stuff in this game, therefore the devs are anti-union. Yeah, it's like, no. the authorial intent stuff is going to get tricky with her character of just yeah. like people thinking that just because we have the option, we agree with it. And it's like, it physically hurts to write some of the stuff I'm having to write right now. Where I'm just like, God, should we even give people the option to be this awful? But we need it. We want people to role play. The king of nut butters, and only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. <laughs> Didn't want to start over, so I picked a save from the gremlin route before the mines in episode 2 and did a 180 on Tabby. I successfully got that option in episode 3 as a result, and I'm looking forward to Tabby now that she is really fond of the uh, main character reacting to the mouse. Yeah, it's going to take a bit to get there, yeah. but it's going to be really satisfying for people... Yeah. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Give peanut yeah. butter. You got craft mac and cheese with a C. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, some people will purposefully ignore the fact that there are two sets of options to just be like, the fact that this set of options exists... Oh my exists. god, Luvian Blue, thank you for the $20 tip. Oh my gosh, that's, thank you. That's, that's so a, nice. Buying us oh, dinner. Oh, and you picked up uh, Crossroads and Loved Boy from the Safe. That's, that's a really that's good story. That's my favorite one. It. I mean, yeah. I love all my stories equally, oh, but I really like the boyfriend. We've scene. not I wrote to get it to make my sister gosh, cry. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but we've been talking about what our second game might be uh, recently. We've got some really interesting Ooh, we've stuff. We've got some juicy stuff. Yeah, It'll be very fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
okay. still going to be a couple of years until oh, we yeah. finish this one. Several. And this one will be done when books. it's done. I think yeah. right now, uh, apologies to everyone who looks at our Kickstarter and then sees, like, October 2023. We're shooting for October 2024 now. We shall see. Um, but yeah. it will be done when it's done. What shall we do? Uh, I don't want to screw with the mac and cheese. All That's right. important and special to our cousin. You close the pantry door as best you can and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. I am taking and keeping Stella. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Yeah, I've been I've been pr pretty happy with how little games taking too long to make comments that have been out there. I think the episodic release schedule definitely helps where it's like if every episode takes a little longer than the six months we thought it would take, like, you're still getting content instead of just, like, sitting down, disappearing, making the whole game. Oh, thank you all so much. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, want to be, like, the blizzard of yore instead of the disaster of what they have become. Um, pantry, right? Doing? Uh, no, Wait, cabinets. Cabinets. I get cabinets and pantries confused. <sighs> this asset was made too late in the process. What, this one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the one where we decided the silverware is in the cabinets because we didn't want to do, do drawer. drawers, too. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. There, oh, yeah, we're cute. <laughs> there are sometimes... Um, yeah, Luvian, this is exactly how I feel. The episodic release gives space for a theorizing community to build yeah, up around the game. That was that was our intent. Um, and it's super exciting to like see it play out the way it did. It's so much fun. Um, and I think, yeah, like, it's only <laughs> going to keep growing As from here. As someone who backed the Homestuck game, take all the time you need. <laughs> With a little crying thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think... Um, the the uh, passion of the theorizing community is like I don't know one of our greatest assets from a business perspective and it was wild back when we were like talking to publishers how few people seem to understand the our value vision. of that of just like no we're not going to just like pull the plug on the early access thing and do a so full important. release like the dis the discussion is necessary. Building community. The community building is necessary. The free QA, God bless all of you. Thank you all so much. Is necessary. It's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> Balrog theorist. We have stripped the Reese's room image like deep sea fish with a whale carcass. I still don't understand how words. Abby made that image. Like, it's like, oh yeah, there's going to be some art in it. And then she just kept going and going. It needed to be a and lot. going. It had to look like someone going. who had to pour themselves into their art Whew. to keep saying. And then, and then Abby ran out of ideas for art to be in the upstairs part of Reese's house. I couldn't do it. That hallway leading up to the door took you like days because you were just out. I just like sat in front of it thinking, what do I put in these pictures? I love just, like, the note of, like, oh, yeah, Abby, just, like, make r really tiny, original, like, Goya-quality pieces yeah. of art. I backed myself into, at least I like Bekskinski and Goya um, so that I could, like, draw upon that for inspiration. I had to learn how to do, like, light digital painting. <laughs> Ayu Osakai says, uh... I really like that Reese's art is all over the house, not just in the basement. It adds a more hopeful, positive, nuanced his relationship with his mom. Yeah, it's, that's the intention. It's she, a complicated did, yeah, relationship. It's a complicated relationship. She is not ashamed of her son. She worries for him. All right. The bowl. The bowl is funny. The bowl is weird. You grab a plate and a butter knife. You did it! This is the last ingredient you needed to make your PB&J. Time to get to work. Yeah, I wonder about that, too. Because it's definitely getting longer. To it's getting players. longer, but I don't know. Going off of, like, um, concurrent player counts, like, if anything, people have just been doing more of it now. And I do think that... Oh, thank you. Uh, Mix, are so nice. Oh, yeah, we don't... Oh, Close cabinet. All right. Class. 
It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Pearl Ann, so this wasn't from her 50th. I like the extra commentary you get. Yeah, we should get the mug for that reason, three too. From the, mug. from the few stories you'd heard from your mom, Pearl Ann wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Mug. 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 Right, sorry. It reads, I was blown away at Blowing Rock, North Carolina, so your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. I picked Blowing Rock because I remember going there with my brother once, and he almost flew away because it was too windy. He lifted off the ground. It was too small. Oh, that's another merch idea. Yeah, merch soon. <laughs> oh, man, just a merch that is merch of a place that exists, and I'm sure that there are mugs that look just like Yeah, that. are you allowed? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's a, a place. It's like a public Yeah, I know. Place. Are you allowed? I'm allowed. It's public. Nobody owns okay. Blowing Rock, I think. I don't know. Maybe the state does. I don't yeah, know if that counts. Despite the state of this horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations, protein awaits. A job well done. Yum, yum. All of that hassle, and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. I want to look at the garden. Oh, you want to look at the garden? I like the garden. This garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. It might not be very safe, but who's to stop you from venturing deeper? Oh, yeah, eventually. Can you explore now? Yeah, oh. because people keep complaining about... <laughs> The old, like, I don't care about tetanus. Had. I have yeah. got my shots. You wander further into the garden. It's quiet out here. That's all. Not yeah. much to see. It's nice. I like garden. Yeah, like, uh. Yay. Something that's really difficult making a game like this is it's like, honestly, the more complexity you add to it, the higher the standard people hold you up to. So if there's suddenly a, well, you can't do this thing because the story requires it or it would have required brand new art assets or anything else, like sometimes, sometimes you get comments. All right. You want to, yeah. congratulations. You've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Might as well head to town. There's not much left for you to do here other than head out and explore the town. You do just that. If you'd have known you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If well, only... Don't worry, there'll be some cemetery exploration. Time. Especially since, I mean, I you're mean, we burying do have, we your do have aunt also, somewhere. Uh, a couple of Kickstarter backers who get custom tombstones. Yeah! Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's name is Scarlet, so the Scarlet, 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 Scarlet. It's so good. Oh. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension. Though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. Continue. Down. I will do a new background for this eventually. It's really pretty out here, because it doesn't quite match that, does it? It would look pretty in person. Yeah. I did not have the artistic skills at the time. Well, you know, it was, it was a new thing. It we was had new. to, like, get stuff done. Finally, you made it back to town. The hauler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an mm -hmm. idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane, and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Puppy. Puppy. Should I be Gretchen? I well, we don't have to talk to animals. Right! We're powerful building streets. <laughs> Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. I'm gonna go back and close Stella's mouth and some of these. Tell me more about this wonderful creature? Or... Yeah. Bubby. I... Oh, wait, how do I sound like I'm from Brooklyn? There we go. I'm in love with this dog, and I wish to know everything there is to know about her. Oh, thank you for, say for saying. Love how this foreshadows the crisis of episode one. Intentional. Had to let you know she slips her harness. I mean, what? Anyway, 
Gladly. Her favorite food is Cheese Whiz. Her favorite toy is an odd sock I sew to look like a squirrel. And her favorite show is Murder, She Wrote. Sometimes I leave it on in the background while I'm working to give her something to do. She'll actually sit in her little bed and watch it, like an old lady with her programs. I think Celestine was like the, the one that needed the most revisions and rewrites. Uh, Celestine we is dreamy, yeah. like her. <laughs> it was back when we were still figuring out the right way to mind meld with Brandon. Yeah, it works now. It's weird. Yeah, now I just... Like, uh, just sent a weird list uh, of things. Synesthetically yeah. described, like, <laughs> smells please like give coffee. me, a, yeah. I think, I think for Oscar's theme, that was part of the description. The track must smell like coffee. All right, how'd you two meet? That's so cute. How'd you meet? <laughs> Which is a fun question to ask of someone's dog. How'd you meet? How'd you, how'd you meet? meet? What was your first date? <laughs> My mom was a vet, and she used to visit the regional am animal shelter on weekends to do checkups. When I was really young, I'd go with her to volunteer, which really meant I'd do a little bit of manual labor, then play with the dogs for the rest of the day. One weekend, believe it or not, someone dropped off this little one-year-old pug that had outgrown its cute puppy stage. As if they ever do. When I went to clean her kennel, she looked up at me with these big, watery, nervous eyes, wagging her entire butt and whimpering like no one had ever loved her before. I could not fall out of her heels, you know? My parents were rugged mountain folk, so they weren't big on toy breeds, and at first they refused to even consider adopting poor Gretchen. Okay, there's a comment on the YouTube version of the stream. What? If you want to keep clicking, go for it. Oh, sure. But I kept visiting every week, and soon enough, they caved and let me take her home. My dad still wasn't too keen on her at first, but soon enough, he was taking her out on the trails like she was a hound dog. <laughs> Sorry for talking your ear off, but I can't help it. I could prattle on about Gretchen for hours. How about I introduce myself so you won't be so nervous? I'm Stella. It's not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then, there's a new crop of coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. Stella's cute. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. You are not in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? The Scarlet funeral. Do you want... No. No. I never. <laughs> nice try. You probably could have fooled me if it weren't for those sunken eyes and rigid cheekbones. That scarlet blood runs thick. You must be Tabby's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of who would come to town for the funeral. Uh, episode one hurt sometimes because it was before we'd like decided on if someone's talking, their mouth is open, and if they're not talking, their mouth is closed. How's she holding up? <laughs> and every I feel like every time I see this, I'm like, I need to go back and I need to like change these sprites out, don't I? The pain. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I've been a little worried about her, all alone up in that big house. Sorry, did I hear you right? I can't imagine Tabitha ever going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. Oh yeah, it was so hard to find descriptors that wouldn't give too much, like, shape to a character so that you could still yeah. be recognized as a Scarlet. I was just like, what would be the traits? And I don't even know if Tabitha necessarily has... She's got the sunken eyes, for sure. But the... Yeah. It's... She always so... You know... <laughs> rough around the edges? Yep, that's Tabby for you. I wouldn't take it too personally. I'm not sure what it says about her state of mind that she's still her same old grumpy self. It'll probably be good for her now that, you, that, the, <laughs> that you're staying there. Even though she'd probably never admit it. Wow, look at, look at that bot doing a good job. Yeah, consider uh, if you like our game, supporting us on Patreon. Get to see some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, gets to uh, keep us as independent as possible so we don't have to talk to publishers. Um, if you haven't bought the game, you can buy the game. Wow. <sighs> Running small business. Uh, are you two friends? I was probably closer than most people have gotten to being able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had to at least get along with everyone else. She was a grade ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she's a Scarlet. Alexa, when I had the free game on Steam, I saw Stella and just fell in love. Aw, that's great. I am so happy that people love Stella. Yeah. 
We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck, and she was Mustard Seed. God, yes, Stella is still, like, absolutely slaughtering the, uh, who's your canon romance option poll. Like, I think a third of people pick her, and, like, everyone else is roughly tied at about 10%. I was so stressed out trying to come up with, like, just, I don't know, it's it's big shoes to fill, kind of, the, the big love interest, so... I'm so happy that people like her. I was just like, I'm going to make somebody who I would want to hang out with. She is the default. It's true. Me with Wayne or... <laughs> uh, what was, uh, my entire first run promptly became a stellar romance run because I took one look at her and went, Oh, girlfriend! As you might have, ex have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated and that was that. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. Dang, I am. I was just on, you've only had food a lot. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. Follow her. Follow her. Oh, she reminds me of my IRL partner. That's cute. Keep the people entertained. I will. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting din of human life. Tabby is a hedgehog or porcupine. That would be great. I like to think about what animals people would be. It's really fun. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. What are you looking at? That's got to be the one Tony goes with. But I will wait for them to proceed. Catch up on chat. <laughs> A stranger has wandered into town. All right. Welcome back. I have returned. Sylvester's back. Sylvester's back. Baby. We're gonna be a little sneaky. From the Big Apple. Slide right in. You slide into the nearest booth, pretending that you didn't notice everyone in the diner gawking at you like they'd just seen Bigfoot. Aw, hi there, Cannabis Dragon. Thank Aww. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What is Janie's daughter drawing? Stuff. Little guys. Stuff kids draw. No need to be so shy. They don't meet many strangers. It's kind of a big deal when someone new wanders into town. Especially since, well, they probably all know what you're here for, and by extension, who you're related to. Even if you don't know anybody, it's not easy keeping secrets in a town this size. Hey, Stella, I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. Big, oh, that. Yeah, yeah. They gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Aw, shucks. Thanks, Avery. Here's some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Tip, you can hit the H button on your keyboard to hide the text box at any time. Here she goes! Truly the perfect frame to add that tip. Uh, anything for you? Nah, I'm good. You hold out the still dripping bag of boiled peanuts. Gretchen sniffs at the spatters of brine on the table and licks her lips expectantly. No, no thanks. I shouldn't take gifts while I'm on my shift. Anything I can get you, though? Mm. We're hungry. Nice. Stella said she's treating us. Yeah, best get everything on the menu. <laughs> can I have a biscuit and a coffee, please? They're really good. Best in the cab. Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm, uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. You know, if you ever want to get rid of those peanuts, there's a trash can right by the door. Anyway, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. Uh, hi, Porcupine Quill. We're doing a powerful build in Street Smart. Yeah. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. 
that should be right after the funeral too so it's a special occasion do you want to do the church one yeah the potluck that church thing would it be weird for me to come if i'm not a member no no the sunday thing is coincidental it's actually hosted by the library uh not too many people go to the church around here if i'm being honest Hell yeah, religion the, sucks. The church line there, just like, would it be weird if I showed up? God, there was this church at the top of our street growing up. And if they didn't recognize you at, like, their church events that you were invited to for, like, people who wanted to convert you, basically, uh, they would be so mean to you and so doubtful of why you were there. Oh, God, people were so mean and weird and judgy. And I was just a child. <laughs> be nice to me. Uh, hell yeah, religion sucks. <laughs> Opiate of the masses, if you ask me. Sylvester from the Big Apple. The Big Apple. Haha, <laughs> don't get me wrong. There are plenty of God-fearing folks in town. It's not like we're a bunch of heathens or anything. We just have a bad church. You know, sometimes it's just a bad church. Well, the building's okay. But the pastor's another story. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. <laughs> so what Mark's meant that well, you know, player character doesn't need to know that. We're street smart. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day to day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? Yeah, Sylvester the Big Apple has never read Mark. Just quotes him. Yeah. Just quotes the What's guy. What's your angle here? <laughs> My angle? I would never have an angle. Street smart. She definitely has an angle. Okay, so my job means I spend a lot of the time, a lot of time in the woods with a camera, and it's always better when someone else is there to. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns. Biscuit in tow. Here's your biscuit. Winnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. What do I look like? A charity case? Nah, no, I'm just gonna go right to eat. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth, as if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. What's the one that gets you the Bojangles? Yeah. yeah. This is the best biscuit oh, you've ever shoot. had. No, it's but not. But you're not too big on biscuits in general. Do you have to reload? Yeah, I'm it's reload. worth it. It's important. I it's like the Bojangles important. line it's because funny. look, Bojangles makes a good biscuit. It's good. Oh, I've, I've had better biscuits in my life. You ever been to this restaurant called Bojangles? I had one of theirs on the bus ride over. Now that was a good biscuit. You're lying through your teeth. This was the best biscuit you've ever had. Yeah, Tosh. Every trait has like one out. Yeah. So um. Street Smart and uh, Hot have not had not yet, yet, but they will. They will. Yeah. Can't wait until the whole game is done and people start like min-maxing on what's the optimal trait selection for the ideal world state. Because there are That's some gonna things. That's going to be exhausting. Yeah, there like, are some things we can balance, but there are some things we simply cannot. Yeah. Yeah, like balancing kind of the weight of each decision and each like different variation for the decisions against each other based on traits. Yeah, I mean it's Ooh. impossible to Spicy. like really balance a decision anyways because they're so subjective. They're very subjective. Yeah. Like, oh wow, the response to the episode three decision has been incredible because some people feel very, very strongly on both sides that theirs is the clear correct. Like the answer. obvious correct one. No one in their right mind would pick the other one unless they were like a bad person or something. Yeah, and they're just like, how dare the devs do this? Like, how dare the devs do this? <laughs> I thought they said that uh, they would be equal, and it's like, well, I guess they cut. They are. You should talk to other people about it. Yeah, because like the episode three decision is a fifty-five forty-five split, which you know compared to like episode two is like eighty-five fifteen, and episode one is is similar. Uh, uh, spin your yarns, thank you. Honestly, I think you've done an incredible job so far balancing some really complicated factors. Thank you, it's so hard. Oh yeah, the Discord's been great. Thank you all so much. Anyway. To each his own, I guess. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, as Stella mentioned, she's famous. 
<laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Yeah, that's a fun thing too, Arian, where it's like, uh, so if you just do one playthrough, you don't even necessarily realize that there's a big branching decision somewhere. Yeah, especially if you have certain traits. It's just like, what? There was other ways that that could end? Look, if you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, I love this. I'm a YouTuber moment. The expression, the music change. Wait. Wait, what? It's not a big deal. I mean, it pays the bills, but it's really just a passion project, you know? You're too modest, Stella. Your videos are really good. You should watch them sometime, Sylvester. They're like Discovery Channel, uh, but with better research. Oh, huh, huh, they're both good. I mean, what's YouTuber? We could do the combo. Uh, I feel a like, wait, how do you know, know my name? It's like. What YouTube is. Yeah. Wait, how do you know my name? Oh, sorry, it's just that most people in town know about you. Sorry, I'm sure that must seem creepy. Oh, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. The holler is a small place. Everybody knows everybody. And that includes extended family. A you know Tabitha is the YouTuber who makes Minecraft hits. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, who's been talking about me? I never even met this side of the family. What would they even talk about? Your aunt must have been getting it from somewhere. She was always on about something you were up to. Oh, um, oops, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. What matters is that now people can meet the real you. So it doesn't matter what Pearl Ann may or may not have said. Oh, that's funny, Mickey. Yeah. Also, hi, Mickey. Hello. Yeah, you can always make a good first impression and wipe the slate clean with the whole town. And if that fails, you can always make a good second impression. Oops, it was the Bojangles line. Oh, so, yeah, it was the Bojangles thing. Oh, God, what was she saying? What was she saying about me? God, oh, jeez, look, I'm sorry I said anything. Hey, don't worry about it. Pearl Ann was a gossip and would do this sort of thing with everyone. Spreading weird little rumors about folks was kind of her trademark. Anyways, weren't we in the middle of talking about Stella's illustrious YouTube career? Sorry, I guess we were, weren't we? This is how I get when people talk about my stuff. I'm just like, I'm sorry. I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Catawba River Runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. Porcupine Quills, absolutely Pearl Am was a Facebook stalker for, like, yeah. our family. Facebook aunt. Oh, yeah, Deep One Hybrid. It's Facebook aunt. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in a river. Scared into woods. Scared into woods. It's the other one, like, haunted ice cream truck. Yeah. No, haunted ice cream beats. parlor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. I don't believe in cryptids. But you could click it. That footage could have been anything. But that's the fun part, isn't it? Plus, some cryptids have actually turned out to be real. Could you imagine your face if you didn't know what a platypus was and I started describing one to you? Or a giant squid? You'd think I was nuts, but you'd have been wrong. Pers oh. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. Haha, <laughs> exactly. Some exotic pet owners set it free, and now it will forever roam the Catawba, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. Do you mean to sell a challenge? That is <laughs> impossible. <laughs> impossible. Oh, thank you, Sealing Bubs. All of Gretchen's expressions during this scene are so good. Yeah, you could be really, really mean to her. The beaver line feels like a. Yeah. <laughs> that and the crevasse line. Absolutely. So, speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight, 
I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along? It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm going to go after the... Wait, no spoilers. Whoops, sorry, Avery. Is Stella a lefty? I guess she is. Wait. Cooks and eats with her right, but writes and drinks with her left. I'm very bad at keeping I think that's just not something we thought She's about. ambidextrous. She's very special. I mean, like, look, I, I write with my left, but I box with my right. Wow. So so much. There, there's people who have weird ambidextrousness, so intentional. Very, yes. Everything's intentional. It's okay. I should probably go back to it and uh, get back to it instead of standing around chatting. See y'all around. Goodbye. It was nice to meet you. Aw, hi ceiling punks. Uh, welcome to the stream. Gretchen's cute. Now that the coast is clear. Also, yeah, Tony has been doing martial arts since you were what four yeah like yeah six i think i don't i don't remember i took boston classes for like a year but then i moved that's my story yeah i'm going after a skunk ape ew stinky <laughs> i love that one that's what they say you should be able to smell it before you see it according to some sources tony confirmed powerful belt <laughs> Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug of war with her dog. <laughs> Stella's am by Am by dextrous. Yeah, see, that was, uh, that was called a little nugget that we dropped. A little a tip nugget. of the hat. Mm, a tip of the hat, if you will. They like to do a that nugget. in Hollywood. Yeah. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. You know, so what do you say? Want to tag along? These streams, is we have all the achievements for our game, so we, we can't, can't get, get like the Greg Turkington one. Hold the camera for me while I narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing. Mm. Against my better judgment, yes, I will follow a girl I just met into the woods at night to chase after a dangerous beasts. Sounds fun. <laughs> When you put it that way, it sure does sound like this is a bad idea. But trust me, we'll have a great time. It's been a while since I've had anyone besides Gretchen out there with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is the only way to pick up by women. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school, so it's kind of like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun, and that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole if he's up for that. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. So many people hate this. <laughs> They're like, hey, I was flirting with you. Don't you call somebody yeah, but, else. But she doesn't call if you're hot. If you're hot, she doesn't yeah. call. Reese, also, like, dude, what's up? Something I find fun with Stella is, like, a lot of the, like, more steamrolly aspects of her personality, like, are also a, oh my god, I'm not writing another dialogue menu where you can be like, no, it's not okay if you do a phone call. Um, it feeds into her character super well, and it's yeah. also interesting because depending on how you interact with her, you get a very different experience of who Stella is. Where yeah. It's like if you don't want to hang out with Stella, she is. and she forces you to do it, oh. and you're just like, "Wow, she's terrible." You you understand why Tabitha pushes her away all the time. Mm -hmm. oh. Stella assumes that everyone is too busy for her. Oh. Dot dot dot. Uh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or? Okay, if you're really sure. But if you change your mind. Oh, I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. He's town with his cousin. I know, yeah. Just here for the week. Anyway, if we're going to go look for a skunk ape. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man. That sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? 
Yeah, and some people, Stella is a lot, but some people, because they just go along with things, never notice. It's great. Or they're just, like, thrilled with how she's a lot. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll bring him. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. The ha-has are so hard to do <laughs> with real voice. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. <laughs> Ooh, I should do that every time she does ha-ha. It should be tee You okay? You okay? Me? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm more worried about Reese. He's had a lot going on in the past, gosh, 10 years or so, but I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh, well, it's not my place to talk about, really. I just got a little excited thinking about having him along again. He's hilarious. You'd love him. We should swing by his place sometime this week. That's that's what we call a little tip of the hat. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Later. <laughs> Had to introduce. Reese oh, yeah. is sick. F episode one, we wanted to, like, introduce most of the major characters via, like, name dropping so you know they exist. Yeah. But well, like, the, 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 the first draft of the script was a, you ran around town and got supplies from everyone for cryptid hunting, and it was so boring. It was, it was terrible. So boring. This is so much better. Just kind of getting to know people as they trickle in. All right. Ugh! Haven't I met enough people already? Now, nah, I'll do a we'll see. I don't know how much I should commit to doing this week. That's fair, but if you find you have the time, he'd love to meet you, and I think you'd get along. But we can talk about making friendship plans later. For now, we've got a skunk ape to hunt. Yeah, I definitely like Stella. She's bold. Yes. And as somebody who, like, would just stay in my house all the time if it weren't for other people being like, let's do things, I appreciate Sometimes this kind of person. Sometimes you need a Stella. You need a Stella. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. Plus, she takes you out to the woods to look for weird animals. That's great. Yeah. That's oh, you. you pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. Or third impression. After all, it seems everyone in town has heard awful things about you from your now deceased aunt. Let's give Avery a fiver, because oh, we, yeah. we was root to We Avery. said Bojangles was better, even though we knew it wasn't true. You reach into your pocket and pull out a crumpled $5 bill. You know it's a bit more than one would expect to get from a, such a short dining experience, but you might as well share the wealth while you've got it. That's how I always feel. You smooth out the bill before placing it on the table inconspicuously. Aw, that's awesome of you. Avery will appreciate that, I'm sure. Astrology is great because uh, Ooh, it's whatever you want to read too. into it. Yeah. yeah, I'm a Leo. I like that. Lions are cool. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow, and you see your situation with renewed clarity. I'm going to edit this background. Yeah, I want to. We, I we need put to add the estate, estate in it because it, yeah. it looms over the town. It's very important. Yeah, you're in a new place, far from civilization and the people you know, following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel. I feel nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. You feel nothing. You aren't particularly worried about or invested in what happens tonight. You're just along for the ride, putting one foot in front of the other until it's over and you get to sleep. Uh, catching up on the uh, catching up on the chat it's fun gotta love this brisk fall weather this past summer was the hottest on record since last year at least you know how it is these days each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer which always finds a way to be so much worse it's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change like normalcy is restored if only for a moment Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk apes. Stella would be terrible at therapy, though. Yeah, Leo's What's the weirdest thing you've seen out here, other than anything cryptid-related, of course? Oh, gosh, that's a good one. Let me think. Well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. I love how many people we've introduced to this thing that happens. Yeah. But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. 
Oh, Tetanus Lake. That's definitely the weirdest. It was a five foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage with grass and trees growing on it so you could barely tell it was there until you stepped on it. There was one of these in my woods. It was practically solid ground with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through it if you weren't careful, hence the name. Better be up on your shots if you want to mess around in there. It was all stuff from the 50s, too, which was super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I kept, keep on my dresser as a little souvenir. You ever hunt things that aren't cryptids? You know, like ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck, though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings hoping I'd stumble across some sort of activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaky floorboard. When all said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, and I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there. But if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any That's myself. That's what we call a little, little tip, tip of, of the, the hat. hat. <laughs> Werewolves? I kind of lump in with cryptids. I'd be shocked if there actually were people out there who turn into animals, but werewolf lore lines, pretty, lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptid. As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist, because if they really are out there, jeez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. So let's hope all of that's just bunk, am I right? Alright, though. What do you think about aliens? aliens. Don't even get me started. Did you see those UFO videos that the government declassified? Aliens are definitely real, and they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. <laughs> the fact that she calls out ghosts, there's a ghost leader, makes me watch the <laughs> werewolf line carefully. <laughs> you don't see me hunting aliens out here, because we know they're real. See, that's just what the government wants you to think. See, that's just what the government wants you to think. It's easier for them to cover up the secret research programs if they think every they trick everyone into thinking that aliens are behind abductions and UFO sightings and all that weird stuff. Sure, the government does mess up stuff on the daily, but the way I see it, I have about as much control over them as I would over extraterrestrial beings. So if I have no control over those things, I might as well choose to think it's been aliens all this time and let a little joy into my heart, you know? Besides, it's not like it matters which of us is right, or if either of us is right at all. Oh, I forgot this slide! <laughs> I'll die one day, and so will you, and eventually there'll be no one left who remembers us or what we did in our lifetimes. Remain silent. You remain silent, disarmed by Stella's nihilism. Sorry if that bummed you out. Ah, uh, uh, yes, the hot talk to animals, the Cinderella belt, Disney princess. Let's uh, move on. Did you hear that? Hey. Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old butt. <laughs> Terrible. Well, you don't want that one? Should do I do, it right. should I do deeper? Just do uh, deeper. Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old butt. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. Yeah, it's the first clue that Stella is not as happy and fine and cheerful as she seems. <laughs> yeah. When pushed. Anyway. Phew. Sorry for getting spooked, dude. I thought you were. Some creature of darkness. Nah, girly. Just old dude. Now, what the hell are you looking for way out here? Skunk cape. Sorry, I asked. And who's this, you sucker, that's coming with you? Now wait a tick, you are. Is that it? Yep. Let's see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences. Keep you in my prayers. Another oh, stranger. Edo. Thank you. Hey. Welcome to the chat. Another stranger. Another opportunity for a salty introduction. You hold out the slippery bag in front of Duke. It's grown quite fragrant since you first put it in your rucksack, like the scent of old beer. But you're pretty sure that's what it's supposed to smell like. Oil peanuts in your backpack. Ah, I'm all set, thank you. Now both y'all head back to town, you hear? It's best you sleep well clear of this area tonight. I'm out doing 
is my own critter and won't be too appreciative of a couple of fools that I can't ever scare away the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Boiled peanuts taste great. They taste, uh, they kind of have, so you put a beer in it usually. So it does kind of have like a little undercurrent of something like, I don't know, like an umami thing going on with a lot of salt. Uh, and they're soft. Like they, the texture is more what you're looking for with a boiled peanut. But it doesn't really taste like a peanut. It tastes different. And it's very slimy and it's really good. <laughs> anyway, oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I learned from the best that you did, but I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about chunk of bungas or what have you. Uh, my mom pops said they do taste like a bean. It's true. Something's been getting at my chickens. I've lost three this week and can't afford to lose many more than that. I'm sorry to hear that, but huh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no skunk ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what it is, but you won't believe me if I tell you. Also, can y'all hear Tony okay? They're kind of far from the mic. I'm, I project. It's true, I'm the quiet one. Oh, Duke, you don't think it's... I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They're out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting down my chickens. It couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man. Mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s. And even those were iffy. I can't believe you go out there on your YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple of school-aged boy scouts have been 100% confirmed if Appalachian cougars are some kind of far-fetched fancy made up by geezers like me. Appalachian cougars? Do you mean Dr. Kelly? You made me look like... <laughs> you made me look like a fool! I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anybody on you. I just don't think it's plausible. <laughs> You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. My mom dropping the boiled peanut recipe in the comments. <laughs> and if you two don't want a face full of buckshot, you, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. Okay. Uh, I use one of these, but yes. I want to do the... Uh, okay, uh, there are one? some good options here. What's the big deal? Aren't chickens really cheap? Can't you just buy new ones? I don't even know where to begin with what just came out of your mouth. Don't you know it ain't polite to ask about finances? Don't you know how important a man's chickens are? They keep food on my table. They keep my soul fertilized. They help me earn a living. And most of all, they're my pride and joy. I raised them all with my own two hands. Been with me since they was first laid by their mamas. Their family. The chickens we lost last week, they was the prettiest little wine dots you'd ever meet. They come up and eat right out of my hand, sit on my lap. Sure, I'll raise more chickens, but there's no replacing birds like these. This one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Wait, these are both good. Oh, man. People never take them. Oh, this is a tough one. I you kind of do like... This, you're going to do that one? one? Yeah. You just mad they didn't live long enough to get eaten by you. <laughs> the uncomfortable Stella face. <laughs> the really, team. yes, it's a rare <laughs> Stella Ooh. face. You say you loved them, but how could you truly love them if they were meant to put food on your table? You, you do know eggs come out of chickens, right? Practically fall out of them on the daily. Killing them would lose me more food than I'd gain by a wide margin. Oh. I didn't actually know that. Like, they come out of the butt? Are there, are there babies inside? <laughs> Wouldn't say a man. 
Yeah, you, you can call it blood. Most everything that comes out of a chicken comes out of an egg. And no, so long as you keep the roosters away from them, the eggs aren't fertilized. They're just protein that would have otherwise gone to waste. What, what a teaching to those city schools. All right, Sylvester, I think you've baffled poor Duke enough for one night. I think it's best we just head home and leave the poor man to his wild goose chase. Have a nice one, Duke. Yeah, it's... I Not like knowing where eggs come from. That ain't right. <laughs> Here's the thing. Kanika kind of likes... Dumbasses. If, if you're alone. Yeah. She thinks She likes cute. lunks a lot. She likes lunks. She's a fan. As you and Stella return to the trail, she carefully looks back the way you came. Okay, the coast is clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out that easy. Come on, I know a trail that let, let, that'll let us get around him. Lead the way. And trust me, we won't have anything to worry about from old Duke or his shotgun. I've gone out hunting with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the trees when he walks. Stella he... continually gets surprised by Duke. Over and over. Yeah. <laughs> Even if we do cross paths, we'll hear him long before he catches wind of us. The trail's just up this way. Let's go. All right. This looks like a good shot. Mind holding up the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. I must fix the date soon. Oh, yeah. It's fine. It takes place in an alternate dimension. It's fine. Ahem. As night falls, my new assistant, the mysterious Sylvester, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll begin our hunt for the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. <laughs> no, I can't comment on fan theories. Maybe we it must. is a time loop. I don't know. Though mostly encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Okay, the stars thing was really funny, was though. Funny. This is just this is just <laughs> the stock image of stars. Here's hoping we, we get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, stay searching, Stellars. I can take that camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start the tracking scenes once the sun sets all the way. In the meantime, we get to take in all this beautiful scenery. It's gorgeous out here, don't you think? Can we walk faster? I need a workout. It's hard to take it all in, what with all the danger. I've been trying to not slip and fall to my death, and now Duke's out there. Don't worry. Even if you slipped, the bushes and trees would break your fall. You might get a little bruised up, but that's just mountain life. One of my favorite things to do when playing this game is deliberately mispronounce random things, like sp pronouncing skunky, skunkape. Skunkape. Anyway, just watch where I walk and you'll be okay. Your quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud, percussive snort. Death has come for me at last. Goodbye, cruel world. Ha, no need to come to terms with your own mortality just yet. That's just the sound deer make when they want to warn the rest of their herd about big scary predators like us. Let's check it out. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of light while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. And then it's gone. Go for it. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're going to hurt yourself. She cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato, and they don't make harnesses to fit potatoes, do they? Hey, uh, you know, I, I think there was something wrong with that deer. Did you see its face? Now that you mention it, there was something a little off. I bet it was an abscess, maybe a tumor. It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of, so they just get bigger and bigger. Poor thing. But there's not much we can do about it. All right. Well, that got my heart rate up. I am so ready for the hunt. Same for me. How about we take a quick snack break to fuel up, then we get right into the night's activities. I've got all the best snacks. As you settle down to rest, Stella breaks open a bag of assorted snacks. I love snacks. Yeah. Yeah, one of everything. You grab as much as you can. Your body one, is a temple. One and unit. And its priest it's demands offerings. The bag. Yeah. 
Haha, <laughs> somebody's hungry, huh? I'm glad you're having such a good time with my food. You look at Stella in response, your mouth full of delicious snacks. There will be time for conversation when you're finished, but for now, you eat. You and Stella settle down on an overlook, snacks in hand, as the quiet sounds of evening wildlife wash over you. Gretchen gnaws at a stick, distracted for the time being. Was that deer inspired by deer fibroma? Is that like the, the cancer they get? Where was... Is... I think we might have come up with the ditchling concept before the deer was drawn, so we knew what it would look like. There are... Let me just look one second. Yeah, herbivore also isn't like that. Um, yes. Limiting. These are of the pictures a, I saw. <laughs> of a classification, like yeah, like you know, basically not lumps. to get powerful build on you, but protein is protein. <laughs> ah, you and Stella settle down on the overlook. Oh wait, yeah, I've already yeah. done this line. So, tell me what it's like in the Big Apple. Do you have a house, an apartment? Do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me what it's like to be Sylvester. That's a fun one. I've got a doorless basement that floods whenever it rains. I also have five roommates, and they have to come downstairs to do laundry in my room because the washer and dryer are down there. This was a living situation I had. It was great. It's the worst. Half the room is unusable because it's three inches deep in water every couple weeks. And I don't remember the last time I've had a good night's sleep. Or privacy for that matter. Yikes, sounds like the old Scarlet Estate might actually be a step up for you. Are your roommates nice at least? Uh, they're nice enough, but it's a tough living situation. I get that. I certainly don't think I could live without any privacy like that. There's gotta be a better apartment than that in a big city like the Big Apple. It's cheap, though. It's got its issues, but it's cheap. A are lot of these the, room situations. A lot of them are. Yeah, a lot of them. Not the internet cafe and or not the, the shed. shed. Yeah. Um, the truck one. Truck is cat, spoons. So just Especially truck's bathroom right? issues. Yeah. I mean, you know how it is with cats. They yeah. hate it when you're behind a door. <laughs> how dare you? So, what do you do for a living? A lot of these are from Tony. I've been a cartoonist for too long. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know those ads you see on the sidebar of every website you visit that feel like they know way too much about you? Oh yeah, the ones that recommend stuff based on things I could swear I only talked about in person. So creepy. It's like they can hear everything I say. I work for a company that builds those ads for other companies. I went to school for computer science and thought I'd be doing something challenging when I got hired, but instead of actual programming, they mostly had me go in and make endless changes to the font size and color or whatever to make more people want to click the ad. I usually make like 40 or 50 ads that are almost all exactly the same and track each one of them on a giant spreadsheet. That's my life. Uh, uh, the... Happy Stella voice sounds a little like Sarah Marshall. That's the person you're wrong about, right? That's who I picture when I think of Stella. That seems a little soul-crushing. It is. And as it turns out, they're paying me way below market rate. A crisp breeze passes over you. Awkward. Just what about you? Sense. What's your living situation? Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so it has a lot of pleasant memories attached to it, and I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built that house, and he must have done a great job, because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. Yeah, gotta be your parents aren't exactly around anymore. Yep, you got it. They died a few years back. But it's okay. I've done my mourning. Life goes on, and we still get to live in our beautiful family home, just me and Gretchen. Could be a lot worse. tough one. So the, what were they like? Did you get along? They were amazing. Two of the nicest people you'd ever meet, and interesting, too. My dad was a bit of a regional legend among hunters and trappers, 
He was always out in the woods on the trail of something, and we certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. I remember I made a character who built those ads and absolutely loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it's also my only character who abandoned Becca and Alexis, so make of that what you will. <laughs> That's quite an interesting person. She, he had to learn how to fend for himself, you see, since his family didn't have much growing up. So he learned how to hunt and trap and got damn good at it. He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get it if I ever found myself too far from a grocery store. I could make us a pretty good salad with just what's in this clearing if I had to, though it wouldn't exactly taste great. As for my mom, she was a saint. She was a local vet, the lady on all the farms in the county knew to call if their animals were in need of something. She was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of 1,600 pound cows all day is a great way to build muscle. Oh. Sorry, sometimes, the uh, when I'm, yeah. But she was gentle, too. Even the smallest mouse would get the proper care in her hands. I'm sure she's most of the reason Gretchen is here. Here is one of the oldest dogs I've ever met. So, yeah, those were my parents. I can relate. My mom died pretty recently, so I get it. It's all right if you ever need to talk about things. Aw, thanks, Sylvester. That's really sweet of you. How are you holding up? I don't feel much about it. It's a long time coming, so I've made my peace with it. I get that. But even so, I'm sorry. We're both too young to have to deal with this shit. Whoa. Stella immediately packs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. Jesus Christ! Yeah, no kidding. Whatever made that sound, I've never heard anything like it. And it's close. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me, and let's check this out. You and Stella inch towards the tree line as she shines her flashlight into the woods. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from a nearby bush. Maybe Duke's birds weren't eaten after all. Hooray! Can you all hear the sound effects? Okay. What the, what the hell was that? Hold on, I gotta play that back. Holy shit. I'm guessing it must have been maybe two, three feet tall. It doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out Skunk Ape. But whatever it is, it has one of Duke's chickens. Looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. <laughs> right behind. Oh. I was on board with this whole cryptid hunting thing back when I thought it'd just be a spooky jaunt in the woods. I never thought we'd actually, like, find something. Now is not the time to hesitate. If we're catching this thing, we've got to go now. Stella sprints into the woods in pursuit, leaving you no choice but to run after her, Gretchen excitedly pulling at the leash. Oof. Did you trip? Seems clumsy for a hot mountain girl. I thought you were used to uneven terrain at night. <laughs> we've all had our bad days. I'm usually pretty careful. Guess I just got a little excited. Stopped watching where I was stepping. Plus, there was something slippery on the trail. Oh no, that poor thing. It must have been one of Duke's. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. You move towards Stella to get a closer look at the chicken. Don't let Gretchen too close. She'll try to take a bite of it if you don't stop her. You hold Gretchen's leash close to your chest. She seems nervous, squirming tightly against her harness. Good God. At first you thought it might have been a tumor, but this is something else. The skin is stretched taut, the growth pulsing beneath. Street smart. Whatever it might be, you know better than to investigate this lump any closer. You've seen horror movies. You back away from the chicken, your curiosity eclipsed by your interest, instinct for self-preservation. You turn away from the chicken, unable or unwilling to continue inspecting it. Ahem. It seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and she's not looking good. I am hesitant to speculate, but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor, could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Jeez, I'm gonna have to put up some massive content warnings for this video. Hey, do you hear that? What in Sam Hale are you two doing out here? Didn't I tell you to... Hardy? 
Oh, Bertie, what's wrong, darling? Good God. Do y'all see what did this to her? I'm not telling you shit after you waved that gun in my face earlier. Why, you little... Duke, it's all right. We were on the trail when we found her. Like this. Whatever did this to her, I think we can hear them in the trees. Put that camera away, for God's sake, girl. I don't want to be in another one of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. Hi, Malaroots. Welcome to the stream. We're doing um, Powerful, Powerful Build, build and Street, Street Smart. Smart. No one needs to see Birdie like this. And we're from you wouldn't put her now. online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting. Duke, did you hear me? I think they're coming closer. Come out, you sons of bitches. Duke, don't shoot them. We have no idea what'll happen. You hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they'll pay for what they did to my girls. Come on, you, whatever your name is. Grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. So easy. easy. Do both. Easy mode. Powerful build. Why is this even a decision if you can just do both? You heroically dive forward, tucking Gretchen under one arm and grabbing the flashlight with the other. I said aim the damn thing, quick. Perfect. Disgraced, if that should make it pretty easy to track, eh, Stella? Yeah, blood trail's pretty hard to miss. Guess we know it wasn't a mountain lion after all. Though it didn't look like any cryptid I've heard of either. This is going to be one hell of a video. We've got to go after them while we still have the chance. Thanks for taking care of Gretchen, by the way. I can take her from here. I'll be damned if I let her chase after those things alone. Alone, you have no choice but to follow Duke, Stella, and Gretchen into the darkness. Yeah, I guess I'll die. You think to yourself, a coward to your core. As the dark of the night surrounds you, the sound of a snapping branch cuts into your ears. If you're going to die, it might as well be on your feet, surrounded by other people, rather than in the woods alone, by a monster or a slow starvation. You steal your nerves and run after Duke and Stella. Sorry for the illusion of choice there. Oh, it's fun, though. The character decision. As you push deeper into the woods, the unearthly sounds once again surround you. Yeah, a lot of the things that don't seem like they have any impact, they, like, affect how people see you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just ignore them. I put up with worse than this on the streets of the Big Apple. Exactly, exactly. The blood trail cuts through here. Come on, we must be close. Oh, sorry. Damn it, girl. Are you trying to get us lost? Slow down. There's a clearing up ahead. I think I'm going to be sick. Lord, that smell. The shrieks pull back into a, into steady whispers as you, Stella, and Duke stumble upon the putrid bodies of dozens of dead and dying animals. A sinking realization pulls at your gut. This is their nest, and you are surrounded. Get all the footage you need, Stella. If these things jump us, I'm pretty sure I could take them. Are you out of your mind? There's got to be dozens of them up in the trees. They're circling us to protect their brood or whatever they've been planting in these animals. Oh, monkey. We gotta get out of here while we still can. Duke's right. There are too many of them, and we've got plenty of footage. We need to get out of here, and fast. Oh, Annie the Parrot, thank, thank you, you so much fun. for the follow. Welcome Yay, to the stream. Punch, punch, punch. Just as you follow Stella and Duke in a mad dash through the woods, so too do the unearthly hollers and whispers of the nest. In the highest branches of trees and down on the forest floor, they're all around you, casually keeping pace with your all-out sprint. Quick! I, oh. <laughs> Quick, my truck's down this way! You make it to the road, but three of the creatures stand between you and Duke's truck. Yeah! Stay back! Brooklyn charge! <laughs> You take a single deep breath before propelling yourself towards the creatures. Brooklyn punch! As they recoil, you plant a foot firmly in the ground and throw your body towards the abomination to your right, your fist firmly connecting with a powerful haymaker. 
Its body feels wrong, as if your blow had just collided with a bag of loose organs instead of a living creature. Caught by surprise and outmatched by their physical prowess, by your physical prowess, the creatures leap back and scatter into the woods. I like that the imprint of your fist is still there. Yeah, you are still the dominant species here, at least for now. Punch! Get in the truck and let's get the hell out of here. Duke, do we have to take the truck back? I could just walk. This creature's left. I'll be fine. Silly, now's not really the time. All right, I can do this. The three of you sit in silence as Duke drives back to town. The ride feels both like an eternity and like nothing at all. Eventually, it's over, and you find yourself outside of Stella's house. Thanks for taking me home, Duke. Anytime, but Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what were those things? I have no idea. I've never heard of anything like them, but I got a ton of footage. Nothing really clear, but it's a start. Let me know if anything happens with Birdie, all right? She's going to be fine, you hear? I better go check in with Bo. He'll be worrying about me. You and your friends stay safe. Looks like those things didn't follow us, but, well, no point in talking about the books. Just look out for yourselves. But I don't live here! Too bad. I ain't your private chauffeur. Stay with Stella tonight. She's got the space, ain't she, girl? Yep, totally. I've got a guest bedroom with a bed and everything. Sheets, even. There. Taken care of. And here you are, back in town, away from the woods, with no one but Stella in sight. Your phone buzzes in your pocket. Now that you're back in town, you must finally be getting reception again. Six missed calls from Tabitha, and 13 text messages. Yeah. You try and call Tabitha back, but it goes straight to voicemail. You text Tabitha back and let her know you're okay. Your message sits unread. Whoa, I think I'm in trouble. I think I'm in trouble. I think I'm in trouble. Yeah, Tabitha seems worried. It's pretty late, isn't it? God, what a mess this night's been. I can't believe you punched one of those things. Yeah, it felt like hitting a bag of organs. Not that that's something I've done, but it was just like meat suspended in this jelly that was barely held together in a stretched out bag. I don't think it had bones. Dang, and here I thought skunk ape sounded gross. You should call the cops, right? Uh, you're not from around here, but that'd just be wasting time. The police out here mean well, but they don't really do anything, you know? If anything, they just get mad at you bothering them. Oh, uh, Arian, I think I also had an option in one game to take Birdie along that wasn't punching. I think it was making yourself big and mean looking. That's if you have powerful... Wait, should we say? Right? There's no harm in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's powerful build street smart. No, book smart. Or book smart, because yeah. you know uh, things about You can scare life. bears by you make yourself bears. big. So you make yourself big. You make yourself big. It's great. Yeah. A very uh, rarely uh, picked option. What happens now? What do you make of everything? Oh, we... yeah, sorry. Oh, that was you. I don't know. I haven't seen or read about anything like this, although maybe... We've got to find out more about those things. The library doesn't open for a while, so any real research will have to wait until the morning. That being said, there is someone in town who might have some useful information. My friend's mom. Oh my god, Ido, thank you so much for the, the tip. Thank you so much. Donations, hugely appreciated. Yeah, it buys Not us necessary, dinner. of course. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, of course. it buys us dinner. We're probably, like, maybe after episode two, going to order something and take a quick break to... Well, 20 minute food rah, break. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah. Um, speaking of quick breaks, I'm so sorry. I've had so much coffee today to seem energetic for the stream. So I'll be back <laughs> in just a second. Genius bruiser. Yeah, it's a fun build. Uh, the book smart, powerful build. Yeah, it's going to be a long stream. 
I'm excited, especially when we get to the longer episodes. Episode one feels so short now. I'm like, wow, this is like, what, 15 minutes? And it's been like two hours. Ah, ha, ha. Coders run on coffee. Why else would Java be one of the most popular languages? Ooh. I'm about to follow Tony. My turn. Help. Oh, I was trying to bring her. <sighs> I'm learning how to pick up our cat. Java is the language, and it uses beans. Yeah, it's been two hours. I think the stream was also up for, like, 20 to 30 minutes before we actually started the game. Um, we're, like, simulcasting to Steam and YouTube, which is um, a little challenging. So I had to make sure all the stream stuff was, was working. Yeah, the logo is is uh, is a coffee cup for Java. That was the the language I learned in high school. We did Ancient we did Q Basic for our freshman year's intro to programming, and then the AP Comp Sci classes were Java. All right, her place isn't far. We should head over now before it gets any later. Yeah, Python was it was fine to learn. It had been long enough since I'd done programming that I would have been starting fresh with anything. We'll probably be switching over to Unity for our second game, just so like porting is easier. But I'm as a uh, learn how to code again thing, RenPy was like pretty easy to just dive right into. Yeah, this is a great practice game. Yeah. Just kidding. It's our masterpiece. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Cool, let's go. I gotta do a fun voice now. I hope she's still awake. Sylvester! <laughs> he sounds like Marlon Brando. If you wanna think about what a young Wayne looks like, just look at those pictures of, of like, on the waterfront or something. Young Wayne. Young Wayne. Jesus. You and Stella turn to see a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear it approach. Welcome home. Before you can respond, the door behind you swings open. An older woman stands in the entryway. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone, disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? And who's this? Hi, Miss Forsyth. This is Sylvester. Is it okay if we come in? Of course, of course. You're in luck. I just put on water for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Sybil. You're an adult now, after all. Welcome to my little nook. So nice to finally meet you, Sylvester. I was so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul, and she's been sorely missed in the holler, and now poor Pearl Ann is gone as well. Do let me know if there's anything you need while you're in town. You hold out your bag of peanuts as a gift to Sybil. She offered you and Stella tea, after all, and it's only polite to offer something in return. Oh my, thank you for the kind offer, dear, but I'm afraid it's far too late for me to have anything so salty. Who was that outside? Just a very sick man. You don't need to be worried about him. Yeah, you knew my mom? You knew my mom? Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for many years. She was such a lovely woman. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with unsavory tales of her youth. How did you know she died? 
Oh. <laughs> Wait, a sick, attractive man. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Perland was a chatty woman. Not much went on that I wouldn't get an earful of. Bless her heart. We need your help. Uh, yes, I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff? I'm not so sure I follow, dear. I know which oils to use for which aches. I know a bit about classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? We ran into some creatures out in the woods. These things. I don't even know how to describe them. Mm, I can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't... This wasn't the local wildlife, Mrs. Forsyth. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out her camera and tilts the street screens towards Sybil. Ah, one of your little videos. Where was this? Up the mountain, to the northwest. Yeah, our composer is so talented. Within the town limits? Yeah. I see. Is there a way to make the video bigger and louder if you can? I'd need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. You'd better come with, Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Kanika, come on out. We could use a little help. What, Mom? Oh. Hey, Stella. Hey, Gretchen. Who's a good potato? And a stranger. What are you doing in my house? You hold out your boiled peanuts. Generosity is the best way to make new friends. No. <laughs> Tabitha's cousin? Yeah. Sweetie, we were wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. Okay. Ah, oh, so Max. Thank you oh, so much so for the kind. donation. Hugely appreciated. Oh, my room's a mess. I'll just bring it out here. Uh, just saying this now, because we're we're gonna touch up some of the assets for earlier things. I think we probably want to redo these Kanikas. They don't feel consistent with her character design. Yeah, it was like one of the first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, a mental note for. Just a mental note. Yeah, I feel like probably I probably summer I we're gonna fix. have a thing out. Yeah. <laughs> want to do a little more like kind of passive trait commentary on things that happen to. Not a huge amount. But Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. There's a lot of dead and sick animals on the recording. You know I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? I'm sorry either of you had to see this, but Sylvester and I have no idea how to make heads or tails of it. Stella, are, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I'm fine, really. I'm okay. <laughs> well, I'm not fine. The other three look at you, unsure of what to say. Unfortunately, if these creatures are what I think they are, the two of you are embroiled in something quite sinister. My grandmother called them ditchlings, and they are a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Mom, come on. Whatever's doing this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Sylvester with this daily folk crap. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite the grisly scene in the woods. But just as birds flock before a storm, the ditchlings congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate. To see so many in one place is... Sybil holds her silence. Jesus, Mom. They've clearly had a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Stella. This is helpful. Stella, whatever these things are, they aren't magic. We can't rule that out. Not after what we saw. But fine. Let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to those animals. You saw that nest. What were those growths? I punched one of them in the face. It was super gross and squishy. Like it didn't have bones. 
you... Oh, this is... <laughs> you punched one of them? Also, wait, that doesn't make any sense. How can they move like that without bones? Sylvester's not lying. I saw him punch one with my very, my own eyes, and uh, that's a good question. If you thought episode three Kanika had an anime look, just wait for episode four. Oh, yeah. The design is... It's fun. I'm having some... Her outfits are the best to design. Yeah. It's really fun. Clearly, something supernatural is afoot. It's more likely that he's just misremembering things. That being said, that sounds kind of grub-like. I wonder if those growths are just like some sort of parasitic larval stage. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something that's out there. Not without doing some research or talking to a biologist. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that'll clear all of this up. Oh dear, I'd forgotten entirely about the tea I'd put on. Let me fix you up a couple of cups. It'll help to soothe your nerves. <laughs> Skanika just transforming into a goth magical girl over the course of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's getting late, and I should let Sylvester get some rest. <laughs> Good for her. I ran him ragged today with all that hiking and running through the woods in terror. I'm tired as shit. That seems like something ah, Sylvester would say. I can say up. This is important. It's important. Okay. Maybe it's that I'm eager to get home and start doing some research. I'll ask around on my usual forums to see if anyone has information on ditchlings. Is that what you called them? That's right. You go on home now and do try to get some rest. Don't stay up all night on the online. Let me get you some of my house-made peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe the soul. I should make the online a proper now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of uh, like... Bye, Stella. See you tomorrow, okay? And call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kaneko. I'll see you. Bye, Sylvester. It's excellent iced or warm, though with the nights seem getting chillier... Warm will probably be best. Helps wake up the bones. What did She's got lead all us kinds to come up with the name Ditchling? They were originally called Wreckers. Yeah, that's much worse. Uh, Ditchling because we were looking up names for what you should do when you see them, and Ditch is one of them. Yeah. Time to get out of town. Time to ditch this joint. Yeah, I think it was and a lot also, of... it helps this because isn't it's right. like this isn't they're right. in the margins, so it's like they're in the ditches. I don't know. Yeah. Kinda, it just works. Feels right. What's in the tea? Leaves. And water. Be careful out there, both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. Alrighty, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to stay the night if yeah, you want. Stella, sweet of you, but I should probably head back before Tabby has a conniption. Are you sure you're okay heading back up the mountain alone? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, I should add something there if you punched one to be like, what are they going <laughs> to do? So hey, what are they going to do? What are they gonna hey. do? Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. Well, we're not staying because this is a, uh, this is a... Tabitha's little sniveling uh, <laughs> minion run. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, we're in this together. Yeah, we're in this together. Yeah, Why not? yeah. Stay safe, buddy. <laughs> so disappointed. You begin the long hike back up to the Scarlet Estate alone. I mean, I'd be disappointed if I were Stella. Don't want to be alone. Almost home. Spookers. You've made it. <laughs> Your salvation in sight. You make a mad dash to the door. Uh. I think if they're inspired by anything, they're it's kind of a Mothman situation. Mix of like Mothman in terms of what they spiritually represent and like a Fresno nightcrawler I think was the baseline for the physical appearance. Yeah, that yeah. that's right, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's kind of the closest it is, but really it's I was just sketching and I was like, well, what should they look like? Like this. And there is some inspiration for kind of the faces themselves. It's um people's faces smushed against smushed glass yeah because it's kind of like when a corpse settles you know what i mean like when it settles it kind of gets all out of shape as you as you reach for the knob the door swings open where the hell have you been hi tabby 
Ah, so you met Stella then. And she's gotten you all worked up. Ugh, that explains everything. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, you don't want to hang out? Still all hyped on adrenaline from tonight. I would love to just hang out for a little while. Cool down a bit. No, I'm not going to hang out. Hang out. You. It's late. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Don't do anything stupid while I'm asleep. Just go to your room and sleep. You're alone in the estate. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you settle into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. You pull out your phone and call. Hey, how are you? Did you make it back all right? I died, actually, on my way home. This is my ghost. Haha, <laughs> you're very funny. Wait, are you serious? You have to tell me if this is a joke. It's been a weird night, okay? Ooh, I'm a ghost in the machine. Okay, I'm going to choose to believe you're joking. Now go get some Z's if that's something ghosts do. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Dot, dot, dot. Unless you are dead and this is my only chance to talk to someone from beyond the grave. Ah, this is stressful. I'm just going to hang up. From the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments. For now, you're safe and you're warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. Will there ever be a time when we get Dustin to sleep at our feet? Dustin is an independent, grown-up. Yeah, he's a grown guy. It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. Cutscene time. Animatic time. Time for me to ready another RT. To uh, just yeah, be like starting episode too. two. Oh, are you going to do a, a tweet? I'll RT your tweet. Oh, I was just going to do a QRT. But, um, yeah. Got this. Okay. Yeah, I like that little exchange with Stella. With the ghost in the machine exchange. <laughs> Dustin can independently decide to cuddle at your feet. <laughs> That's true. Not safe, though. Drawer is safe. Please. He's just a little man. I love this animatic so much. I guess not animatic, it's just animation. <laughs> it's very good. Oh, thank you, Ash Cheshire. I love these animated chapter caps. They are such wonderful transitions. Uh, this one was also fun. I love doing little, like, hints. He's just a little birthday boy. Just a little guy. Plus, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. Oh, oh no, 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 no. I was, I was teasing. <laughs> yeah, you Ceiling are totally bumps. Thank you for the donation. Fine. Plus, I yeah, mean, no there's also apologize. an effect with hot where literally everyone, everyone, everyone likes just you. you better. Everyone likes you. Because there's just something endearing about, you know, a traditional, or somebody who is, has the energy of a hot person because that is what makes you hot it's the confidence it's the confidence it's you sell in yourself yeah you believe in yourself yeah maybe we can get with dustin mom <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh, <laughs> the little guy beam i think it's from a tweet i think that's where it first God, originated it must it's be just, or a tumble it's or like a, a tweet i saw many people saw it many eons ago of just like my boyfriend likes to start fights but then he's very small. He's a short man, uh, a short king. And um, when they start to respond to the fight, he will say, no, no, don't hit me. I'm just a little guy. I'm a little guy. Plus, it's my birthday. Oh, I'm yeah, a little yeah, birthday boy. 
Yeah, I was. That was something that we like kind of baked into the hot trait later, but it felt good to like have more steamy romance op, ro like romance visual novel stuff for hot specifically is a way of like you can decide on a given playthrough how much you want to opt into that. I am going to, like, dick. give it just a second before we start the next episode. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Love sure. it, love it. Did it. Did it. All right. Um, we're skipping the recap, right? Oh, yeah. We, we know what happened. I'm familiar with episode one of Scarlet Hollow. Are you? No, no recap. Oh, whatever, you're good. <coughs> You open your eyes. The sun has risen. The birds are singing. You are still alive, and for now, you are safe. Right. Um, but it's like right away, if you're hot, it's super easy for Tabitha to actually like be pretty chill to you uh, yeah. when you first meet her. It's a good, and plus it has some fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, it sure yeah, does. And it's good yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, it will only get better with time. Yeah. I like the hot trade a lot, personally. A familiar unease settles into your gut, tangling into a knot of anxiety, wriggling as the events of last night play out in your head. You can't help but remember the sight of pale faces jeering at you from the trees, their calls echoing through the woods as you ran for your life. Yeah, Street Smart Hot is a good combo. Uh, and we try and like add some less over-the-top flirt options for the content patch that we're doing. There's also some kind of coming up as you get to know the characters more. Yeah. Because a lot of the people who would wind up, uh, like, I don't know, it was kind of like, a, if you're flirting, you might just be a very forward person. Yeah. Uh, whereas, like, now that you've gotten to know people, there are actually a couple flirt options for people in episode four so far. Like, a couple of kind of flavors of flirting, especially some that are not hot. Coded, yeah. Like, like episode coded, three is when you start to one. get non-hot flirts with people yeah. that kind of felt like the correct pacing for a slower burn. Yeah. You're not sure if you'll ever feel okay again after what you've seen, but you can't stay in bed forever. Hunger pulls you from the clammy depths of the mattress. Check on the possum. You open the drawers to check on the little possum you met yesterday. Oh good, he's still here. That's nice. Pat the little man's. You reach in to pat the little man's. He immediately plays dead. You good leave talk. him to good his talk. theatrics and close the drawer. I'm gonna switch the characters in chapter four. You might have a good time with cap chapter four then. Might be, it might be when stuff starts steaming up Get a little. little. Spicy. Wink, wink. Oh, also, thank you so much, Ceiling Bumps, for the tip. Yes. Thank you so much. Don't worry, that I noticed amazing. it right away and thanked. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> you creep towards the window, careful not to be seen by whatever might be lurking in the garden. For a second, you thought you saw movement. Oh, I forgot. There. It could have been an animal. It could have been something else. Whatever it was, it's gone now. Maybe you'll head out there and investigate after you've finished waking up. Next. It's probably a good idea to check in with your new friend. You can't imagine she's holding up very well. Uh, yeah, yeah. It might take her a minute to get back to you. In the meantime. Fast ears. Time to start your day. You're back in the kitchen. Fru-Fru eyes you from her favorite spot on the counter. <laughs> like, scared at some point, the manor is going to slide off the hill, and the big choice is going to be between saving Dustin or saving Fru-Fru. I don't... Why would the manor slide off the hill? What? It's, it's, Not that, but the manor is so stable. Build, you wouldn't build a big, expensive house on an unstable cliff. Yeah, the cliff is totally stable. For sure. <laughs> that being the only <laughs> chance to pet Fru Fru. Excuse oh, me, ma'am, but may I pet you? Excuse me, ma'am, but may I pet you, beautiful fur? We're going to be from a different place every episode. No, Part so of that's you just hopes. from the Big Apple. Part of you hopes that flattery might win over, might win her over, as silly as that may seem. <laughs> you are, after all, talking to a cat. Talking to an animal? That's ridiculous. You wouldn't download a house. Fru Fru merely flicks her tail faster. It doesn't look promising. Becca voice. The, the cliff is like totally stable. <laughs> oh my god, thank you for the 5,000 bit cheer, oh, Alec. Oh, thank you. Uh, welcome oh my to the gosh, stream. thank you. That's so kind. Yeah, episode four. 
Okay, here's... The, every time we make a new episode, it kind of feels... Not to toot. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toot a little. Toot I'm going to toot a little. Yeah, every time a new one comes up, it's like, wow, we really outdid ourselves. I don't... This has got to be the We're peak. The next one will be worse. Episode four. Yeah. It's, it's juicy so far. I'm enjoying And it. very different. Yeah, something it's I, different. Something I really, sorry to talk for a bit, something I really like about the format with this game and like doing the episodic release structure is like, it is essentially, um, it's an anthology series with like, you know, a, a very thought out and planned uh what's it called wrap around is that the term or a through line a through line yeah, through line yeah that's that, that's line. the correct one yeah. uh so it's like every episode we get to kind of explore a slightly different subgenre of horror and do different things um i love the ghost stuff in episode three so much i think we're both stuff, so proud of it yeah. episode four has some really really cool other stuff though <laughs> I think so. Oh, thank you for Maro. What episode hasn't been juicy so far? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like episode four is going to be interesting. You should check your time getting up. Hey, cuz. It's yeah. like 8 a.m. I hope you guys have so many saves to bring into it. Yeah. Because we're doing some stuff. Yeah, it's really complicated. You only work on one episode at a time. Okay, so the process. The breakdown. When we started, we figured out this is the through line. We figured out all of the details for what the through line looks like and what the pieces of each episode will be and how they tie into it. Uh, so we have like, you know, we have a document that's just like, this is the story. Small details change, but we haven't changed anything major. Um, and then each episode is we do it as we go because it makes the most sense to work on it linearly yeah though between releases there tends to be at least one big patch that backtracks to previous episodes with the lessons we've learned from the most recent one to polish it up or yeah. to add talk to animals like we did yeah. so there's going to be a nice patch for this summer i think where we're going to uh, I'm going to go back to episode one in particular and close some of those mouths and open what, them yeah. when they need to be opened. Um, we're going to be making the estate visible from quite more a few more backgrounds because yeah. that was just something that we... It should be looming over the town. Yeah, we you should know we where it is geographically, that. just kind of. Um, there's another thing, too. Oh, yeah, we might we might add some extra little background wanes as a Where's Waldo type situation. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I don't want it to be, like, too obvious. No, but I it's think not going to be... It's going to be subtle, go. right? It's going yeah. to it's gonna be st stuff like the window in this episode where you don't realize that there's anything there until you're told that there's something there. smiling at the Alexa comment. <clears throat> you should check your time getting up. It's like 8 a.m. It's like 8 a.m. I'm sorry? It's like 8 a.m. Is that late? It's late for someone who was supposed to be at work half an hour ago. Like me. I wanted to make sure I relayed this message in person in case you decided to ignore my texts again. I don't want any repeats of last night. From now on, no running around in the woods after dark. It's dangerous out there. God bless these new Tabitha sprites. They look so They're much better. so good. Yeah. You could fall down a cliff. You could get stuck in a hidden cave somewhere. You could get lost in the woods and never be found. Just because nothing happens here doesn't mean it's safe. And just because Stella spends a lot of time in the woods doesn't mean she'll keep you out of trouble. I want you home by sunset from here on out. Hey, what is up with you and Stella's? Oh, thank you, Renald. Renald says, I love the character. Yeah, she's my so favorite much. one. Oh, you want the episode one choices real quick. We have a handy uh, journal. We took the peanuts. We found Dustin. We broke into the Forbidden Wing and we're powerful build and street smart, so we got the extra room in there. Thanks, Mom. We ate the sludge, but like... We're powerful build, We're powerful so we build, so no consequences Delicious. there. Delicious, yeah. We uh, used powerful build there. To get out of anything we punched, bad. <laughs> punched a monster in the face. I am the danger. <laughs> uh, I didn't remember writing that. Met, met Kanika and Sybil, and then we went back to the estate. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, Tabitha is uh, my favorite. 
We just have a history, that's all. I don't need to explain myself to you. Ooh, that's a good idea, Luvian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> scribble, scribble, now we come up with everything independently. Yeah, yeah, it's all us. Actually, it, it, it is though. Is, yeah, yeah, like we, we've got our, our stuff on lock, except I yeah. think to put it. Oh, well, I mean, we're we're going to think about funeral attire for episode seven. Um, oh my God, uh, Jessica Ravenblut, thank, you so, thank you so much for the bits. Oh, so kind. And thank welcome you. to the stream. You're welcome. A, a dedicated save for pukey. Oh yeah, That's there's going to be some excellent pukey content in episode four. Yeah, I recommend a pukey run. <laughs> for episode four. Yeah, everybody else gets new outfits. Yeah. And now I fixed her sprites so I could change her outfits. That's true. Because before it's oh. that I saved them really small because I thought I wouldn't have to edit them ever again and I was extremely wrong. I, so. I like the idea of, like, Tabitha's outfits not really changing, being an expression of her character, much like she only eats one thing. Yeah, she's very she, particular. She has a lot of these clothes. It's like uh, Mark Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs. They just have a closet full of the same outfit because they're little freaks like that. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. Well, now Yay! you can tap with a smile <laughs> on Twitch. So yeah, I should probably... We should do new Twitch emotes. We should do new Twitch emotes. We have a big backlog of Discord emotes and stickers we have to do. Yeah. Uh, That's another... Yeah, I've been idea. maybe struggling with a bit of, like, post-episode release burnout that I'm finally coming out of. <laughs> yeah, she has the one coat and then other stuff. Ah! <laughs> um, you want to do the Explorer? Yeah! Can I hang out with you today? I don't want to be by myself. At the mines? No. Yeah, Tabitha definitely um, struggles with people. Uh, yes. All right. Hey, hey, I'm sorry about last night, but what you're doing right now unacceptable cuz you can't tie Sylvester down get over yourself you know what I have to deal with this week and I have every right to get snippy with you for causing me more stress Tabitha buys her dresses in bulk just like she orders her food likely having to decide what to wear every day is exhausting yeah I'm late enough as it is I'm going to work and I expect you to see here to see you here at sunset and look the outfit works for her Tabitha takes a few steps towards the door Sunset! <laughs> oh, yeah. Your cousin huffily exits the kitchen. Her footsteps fade down the hall, ending in the characteristic creak, then slam of the front door as it opens and closes behind her. Once again, you are the only human in the estate. A text from Stella. It's another tired cat. Hope you're holding up okay, or as good as you can with all the stuff we saw last night. I was up most of the night on cryptid forums. No real answers yet. I'm at the library now, if you want to join. I have scones. Scones? Say no more. Powerful build. And that's that. Time to start your day. There is actually a path in the early stages of episode two where you stay at the estate and skip the library. And Stella and Kanika come and drag you to the mines. Yeah. Um, we had we, we cut it. it so we could hit our release uh, deadline, and then we just, like, never went back and added it. It's also, like, the library is a really important segment where it joins a bunch of loose threads from episode one of, like, do people know who Wayne is? Do you know what ditchlings are? Do you know that? So it's, like, it, it had to be a joining point, and the more don't engage with the spooky stuff there is, like, the harder it is to, to kind of uh, write the rest of it. Yeah, like, this is a choices matter game, but it's not a you can make every choice possible Yeah, game. unfortunately, <laughs> Your decisions I, will matter, but... I do not have the capabilities of, a, of like, a tabletop DM. Yeah, we can't personalize this. your run that, that much, since we have to do a pre-scripted thing. Yeah. Sure, Stella might have scones at the library, but scones are later. PB and G, PB and G, peanut butter and jelly is now. Peanut butter and gif. And that's that. Let's go to the garden. 
As your eyes wander to the garden door, you shudder, remembering the brief glimpse of something you saw <laughs> from your upstairs what? window. What? You don't want to spend the rest of your lives creating ever-expanding branches? <laughs> I mean, I do, I but I... I and go but to the zoo. I want... To, we zoo want route. to, like, focus on what are the branches that, like have sort of the most interesting and meaningful deviations. Yeah, because we were also finding kind of the sit in the estate was very boring. It was a little it dull. It was very hard to make it exciting because it's like, well, we have a big event this episode and it's not in the estate, so yeah. we have to get you out of it. You, we have to get you there. There's only like, so, there's only so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Oh, no, no, we no. We got, we got that you were getting. Yeah. It's just, you know. Sometimes it's it's things that uh, folks folks request in my inbox. Sometimes Tony answers questions. Yeah, so I like to when we're streaming address these things verbally instead of writing things up. Oh yeah, quick. Oh yeah, let me here. I can fix this. I can oh, fix it. Oh, that's perfect. No, oh, but there's that little bar at the bottom. <laughs> Wait, is that showing up on the screen? I don't know. It's strange. No. It doesn't seem like it is. Doesn't matter. Ooh, that's All right. It was probably just a raccoon, but the uncertainty of what you saw gnaws at you and compels you to investigate, if only to prove that it was nothing. The choice is to attempt to walk away from the town. It's just continue down the path over and over and over, occasionally seeing roadkill on the side of the road. A car passes right, Like, an easy you. way to do the, like, don't engage with the plot paths is they result in death, but we, we don't want player death to be... Yeah, I love that guy. I love that little guy. We don't want player death to be a thing that happens until, like, the end of the story. Um, it has to have, like... It's gotta have no, it's, like, it's like It's like when you're you're Aww, running a you, tabletop. Honey. That's so sweet. It's like we when you're running a tabletop and you'll fudge a roll if it's, like, a trash encounter that has no story relevance and a player dies because you want those Just deaths so to have a meaningful impact on the story. Oh, thank you, Alec, for saying, how did you learn some of the line shading? Very pretty. I myself. <laughs> I do a lot of hatching. It's like my favorite thing. Hey, is this Dustin Monk? That was what I was thinking. Uh, that's yeah. dust. That, that's, that's actually a possum. Yeah, yes. What did you think it was? Oh, someone mentioned a uh, garden mouse. Ah. Oh, thank you for liking my shading. Yeah, spoilers. There might be some like episode seven endings that result in death. Of course, I did um, not edit Dustin Mom out of this image. For... That's right. So, <clears throat> anyway. At the very least, you don't see anything now. That is, if we decide there are so seven endings that result in death. Investigate further. Yeah. You wander further into the garden, trying to pinpoint the spot where that thing had been lurking, if indeed there had been a thing to begin with. Take it all in. Take it all in. The garden is peaceful, but undeniably eerie. Here, more than anywhere else, you're surrounded by the ghost of what this place used to be. I mean, if you want to mention that we... I, I think we've mentioned that if player death is going to be a thing, it won't be until the end of the story on, like, previous streams. Yeah, I feel like... It's a design philosophy thing. Yeah, the design philosophy is very much a... An ending takes you out of it, because suddenly you are resurrected, and that's, like, not something that happens. So it right. really takes you out of the story. It makes the consequences feel like they don't actually matter anymore, because the worst has already happened. You've died, and you came back from it. Exactly. So it, yeah, it like kills the immersion. So it would have to be the end of the storyline, and you'd have to start over. It can't just right. be like, a, I reload my save, and I, sorry, I won't take that option that just ended in death. Which is why the consequences of major decisions are either a permanent but non-death consequence so far, or consequences for other characters because there is no like I died version of save scumming for it. It's it's consequences that you have to live with and move on. And if you die, you can't live with the consequences. Yeah. And I actually feel like dying breaks the tension. It does. Yeah. There's actually like, um, this was a a big factor in how they designed the AI for the Leviathans in uh, Subnautica, which I find super interesting which is they are intentionally designed to deal enough damage that it's significant, but it rarely kills you in one go. And then they like throw you a vast distance and disengage a little bit so you feel like you're escaping because as soon as you die like more than once to a Leviathan, it's uh, suddenly not scary anymore because you've lived through what death is like in the game. So it completely takes you out of it. Yeah, whereas... 
as Ch Ash Cheshire here says, the consequences for other characters being a thing is brutal. <laughs> and that, it, but like, we want to hurt you. We don't want to make you feel like you are, like, mm -hmm. just going to reach a dead end and have to start over. Yeah, it's like something that frustrates me. Sorry, sorry to just talk a bunch, but know, we're streaming. We're streaming. We're doing a marathon stream. It's fun. Um, something that, like, frustrates me in a lot of, like, choice-driven games that also have, like, significant action components is, like, oftentimes you will make a major decision that say one of the consequences is well this next fight is a lot harder and it's just like that doesn't really matter because it's a video game and you're going to win the fight consequence free you know like i think that happens a few times in dragon age which is my favorite punching bag because it's made by a massive studio and is loved by all including myself um Oh, but, I think you mix my darling. But there's a few things there sticky. where it's like, oh yeah, you can get the best, you can get the equivalent of use powerful build to grab Gretchen and the, and the flashlight, and it's just you fight two bosses at the same time. And the only consequence to that is it's a harder fight, and if you die, you reload it a few times. A greenhouse sits in the midst of the overwhelming greenery, unreachable from years of neglect, its glass clouded and cracked. Statues reach out from within seas of weeds as if begging to be rescued. And most strikingly, behind a pair of rusted metal gates at the very peak of the mountain sits a graveyard. You can just make out a few of the headstones, the scarlet name carved deep and proud into their faces. Yeah, scarlet, scarlet. Scarlet, scarlet. We'll have to decide who on the family tree some of those, uh, I guess the, the two backers are. There's two of them. All right, gang, let's check the ground for clues. You crouch down, pushing aside the greenery to examine the soft earth. Oop. A boot print. A big boot print. And what looks like some kind of viscera. Your thoughts turn to the specter from the night before. Where's the protein is protein option here? Uh, Let's it in. <laughs> you snap a quick photo, just in case it comes in handy later. Yeah. You send the photo to Stella. Your friend. I gotta remember, there's yet another time where the did you go to Sybil's or not thing broke in the library for someone. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> Take a bus sample and send it to Oscar's Palette Lab. What is this? It's blood. Human blood. That's the only thing that, like, his friend ever tells him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, it becomes like, uh, how do I min-max my way through it, where I prefer the route of being extremely upfront. Um, there's going to be two bad options, and every trait gets an equal number of outs to them. One. Um... So you can't really min-max it by being like, did I did I do this other quest before this one, which gives me the easy way out. You stare anxiously into the darkness between the trees, searching for any signs of movement, but the woods are still, at least for now. The autumn-tinged mountains, sprawling for miles in every direction, now feel less like beautiful scenery and more like the walls of a cage. His friend works at the Blood or Not Quick E-Lab. His equipment is limited. Yeah, it's all that's left of Theranos. That, <laughs> those tiny testing things, all they can say is, is this, is blood? this blood? Your phone buzzes in your the pocket. The answer might surprise you. Jeez, that's creepy. All the more reason to come to the library. Look who I found at library. Said she was up all night thinking about the video. Adding you to a group text. Group text. Oh yeah, right, I'm Kanika. I'm only here because it's quieter than the store, or was, lol. And I'm trying to figure out what animal that could be. I don't buy into this harbinger of doom stuff. We know what animals they are. They're ditchlings, and they are harbingers of doom. It sounds like they're having fun. <laughs> Your fave is problematic. Oscar, parentheses, best friends with Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like they're having fun. Ditchlings aren't real, Stella. No, it's not. We punched one. Can't wait to solve this mystery. Almost back to town. Boop. You make it to town in one piece. No creatures jumped out at you. No scary men blocked your path. The oh. sight of other people is comforting, helping you forget the things you've witnessed as if they happened to someone else. Oh, hey, Sylvester. 
They are just talking about you. I stopped by Sybil's to pick up her new tea blend, and... You're the biggest thing to come to town since the coal mine. Folks have been absolutely buzzing about you. We went out with Stella last night, right? Did something happen out there? She barely even waved when she walked by. Yeah, let's lie a bit. Let's you wanna lie? lie. You you wanna wait, lie no! Wait, no! wait, no! We're good at lying! We just got some really good footage, that's all. You don't need to know. Now that is juicy. Tell you what, I'm on break for the next half hour. How about you swim by the diner when he can fix you some of Sybil's new blend and try and calm your nerves? It's chaga and lemon balm. It does wonders to relieve stress and tension. Oh no! Nice! <laughs> if you want to spill the beans on what happened, I'm all ears. Anyways, it's up to you. See you around, Sylvester. See ya, Sybil. Take care now, Avery. I see you're a private person. I could respect that. You never know how someone might respond to hearing the truth of what you encountered last night. I'd better get back to it myself. I'm glad I was able to catch you this morning, if only to see how you were holding up. Please don't hesitate to stop by if I can be of any help. I don't like being yanked around. Hey, lady, I don't like being yanked around. Last night you were on about some great doom landing on our doorstep, and now you're stone cold about it. What gives? Because something ain't adding up here. I've shared what I know about the Ditchlings, and I trust that you and Stella have what it takes to get to the bottom of things. I'm so sorry to cut our conversation short, but I've got things that need tending to. Stay safe, Sylvester, and God bless. Ah, we're from, we're from the Big Apple. Oh, also, Tony's from New Jersey. So. I am from New Jersey. You probably have a bit of time before you're needed at the, li needed at the library. All right, I forgot you could go to the general store. This is your first time seeing the general store in the light of day. A young man sits at the table by the register, too preoccupied with his phone to care that you stepped in. Dang, kids and phones. Kids and their phones! Hi, Bunny Five Men. Welcome. Or Bunny's Men. What you doing on your phone? Games. Oh, you want to do Miles? Games. Probably haven't heard of them. Uh, if I want to buy some chips or something, do I talk to you? Or... We are powerful build, street smart. He sighs. I guess, yeah. Kanika decided to skip work today, so of course whatever plans I had didn't matter. Just take the chips. I don't care. Oh yeah, thanks for looking out, man. You grab a bag of salt and vinegar chips from a nearby shelf. It will sustain you in the coming days. Right on. Snubs. Snubs. It is snubs. Alright, let's, let's just... Yeah. See ya! The young man doesn't respond as you turn and leave the general store. Ooh, that's a good question. How big is the potato chip bag? I think it's one of those, like, non-party bags. But not the small ones. Medium. Yeah, medium. Kanika's brother's a teen. He's a teen. He's a teen. It's hard. It's hard, hard out here died. to be a teen. He's in a dead-end town, and he wants to do other stuff. He wants to play Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle on his phone. Got a diner? Teen. Trademark. Yeah, diner, why not? You head towards the diner. The diner is a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with the tantalizing smell of breakfast. Great fast. Everyone listen. Listen to me, please. There are monsters in the hills, and they're apparently some kind of harbinger of destruction. If you value your lives, you'll leave this place as soon as you can. Uh, gameplay taste? Gameplay taste? Uh-huh. Takes place. In North Carolina. Yeah, that's where I'm from. Roughly in the Asheville area. Yeah, like a little south, southwest of Asheville. Someone had fun in the woods with Stella last night, huh? Nobody seems to be taking you very seriously. Real transplant. You slide into the booth across from Avery. Hey there, stranger. Before you can exchange words, Winnie sidles up, a fresh mug of tea in hand. Heard you might need this. 
The answer to 29 down is oink, by the way. What? But the clue is pen sound. How is that a sound a pen makes? Wait, pen like pig pen? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? I don't know why you even bother with those things. They're just going to frustrate you. It's just something to do to fill the time. Well, maybe I should switch to Sudoku. Winnie leaves Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. So, uh, what the hell really happened last night? You can tell me. I won't judge. You hesitantly take a sip of your tea. It tastes like you're drinking mold that someone tried to unsuccessfully spruce up with lemon balm. What the hell is in this tea? <laughs> All right, probably should have warned you. It's chaga, this fungus you can harvest from birch trees. Supposedly has a ton of health benefits and it sure tastes like it. Challenge, you know? Should we spill the beans? Sure, spill them. You spill the beans. Glad to have someone to talk to you about the horrors you've witnessed. Witnessed. Wit witnessed. Witnessed. Wow. That is some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distant. Monsters in the woods. I may not have lived here long, but I've never heard of anything like that happening around these parts. Can't say I like the thought of it. Pegged you as a transplant. Where are you from? I moved here from Charlotte, gosh, three years ago now? Maybe a little more. Lost track. Aunt Winnie offered me a place to stay and a job, and who was I to pass on that sort of generosity? To be honest, it still feels like I just moved in. Practically everyone apart from the coal folks grew up in this town, so it's like I'm a perpetual new kid. Don't get me wrong. Folks here, plenty polite and friendly, but there's a shared history I'll never be a part of. <laughs> I haven't felt like an outsider at all. Everyone here has been so welcoming. I went on a cryptid hunt yesterday. No need to dunk. But I guess I've only been here a day. Yeah, I don't think it's the kind of thing you notice until you've really lived somewhere. But hey, who knows? You regret moving here? I don't think I have the choice to have second thoughts. I'm not going anywhere without Aunt Linny, and there's no way she's leaving this place. Why'd you leave Charlotte, then, if you don't mind me asking? That's cool. I was having some issues with my folks about my education, which uh, wasn't great, especially since I was still stuck under their roof. When my aunt heard about it, she offered me a job and a place to stay, and the rest is history. Yeah, let's, let's use our strength. Yeah. Know that everything I told you about last night was a lie, but I'm not going to let anything happen to you or this town. We're on the case. Thanks, Sylvester. I'm not typically one to get worried, but We've got fists and that's they're especially ready to true punch. with someone like you around. Oh man, looks like my shift is starting. Hope you're doing a bit better. Maybe the Chaga's had a chance to start working its magic. I'm going to keep my ears open for you. The diner is where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes on around here. Let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. Avery slips out of the booth, giving a friendly half-wave before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner, ready to start your day, or continue your, your day. Sorry. I missed it. The library. <laughs> oh yeah, it's very hard to... It's very, at very, least very hard. have Avery show that their feelings are hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's very They're easy just to so just permanently win does. them over. Yeah. They just want to be included. Yeah. You enter the former town hall. What once must have been a stately foyer has since been converted foyer. into rows. <laughs> combined the two. Has since been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted reference collections and reading areas. Oh yeah, thank you. Oh hey, you made it! Do you want to shush? Yeah. You quietly shush Stella before heading over to her and Kanika's table. This is a library! Yeah, the most offended they get is if you say Bojangles has better biscuits. Yeah! <laughs> exactly! You made it! Glad you could join us! Morning, Sylvester. 
I'm tired. Snitch on the guy from the general store. Do you want to? Or no, you're street smart. Street smart would never snitch. Yeah. I'm still pretty amped up on adrenaline, actually. I've never done a Scooby-Doo before. Ah, uh, the mural on the wall. Yeah, the good. mural's good. <laughs> uh, that outsider vibe. Huh. Some creepy old guy with a real estate scheme and a bad costume is at least a little more believable than monsters and curses. All we need now is for Gretchen to start talking. Ha ha ha! Anyways, I guess we should get started. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is a, a map. Oh, I'm pointing at the screen oh, like yeah. you can see. But uh, the top thing there is uh, zoom in on the map of like the surrounding counties. Uh, there's some general plaques. There's a North Carolina flag and like an old gun from like the Civil War and stuff. You know, <laughs> they have those things. What's out? Ah, will the stream be saved? Uh, I believe the I believe the VOD will saved. be saved and we'll upload it to YouTube. Yeah. I think it's simultaneously going to YouTube as well. So mostly doing that so the video is automatically uploaded. Yeah. Stella says, "Oh, oh! Before I forget, we've got to talk about that photo you sent me this morning." Kanika, check this out. Sylvester found it in Tabby's garden this morning, right in line of sight of his room. What in the world is that liquid around it? It looks like pus. Those boots are too big to be Tabitha's. Tiny feet Tabitha. <laughs> Not normal feet Tabitha. Definitely. I wonder if there's any connection between those prints and what happened in the woods last night. Like what? I mean, I don't have anything specific, but we do have the whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore. And this photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about those splatters on the ground. If whoever left those um, prints is sick, maybe it's from the creatures you encountered. Hey there, strangers. And literal stranger. Acropo peanuts. You extend your bag of peanuts to the librarian in a gesture of friendship and good faith. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Is this a gift? I'm allergic to peanuts. Not serious allergic, but they give me a rash. Hey, Oscar. This is Sylvester. You know, Tabby's cousin. Oh, I should have known you were a Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her uh, very well. I was still a little kid when she left. Yeah, that scarlet resemblance, it's, uh, strong. Uh, I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian and only librarian. Oscar's amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the kids around here gotta grow up with. I don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple shelves of boring books donated by old people. Y'all are too kind, but speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosalina around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts, and I wanted to make sure she wasn't getting into trouble out there. You know the crowd she hangs around with. They're good kids at heart. I'm sure they're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. Teen interests. I, <laughs> I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. Maxwell Place. It's this great old abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were teens. I can't believe I used to be so reckless. The floors there were like Swiss cheese. Excuse me. I should really have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. Yeah, let's do the street yeah. smart. Right? Kids are smarter than you think. But she can take care of herself. You might not want to let her run off like that anymore, though. It's not as safe as it usually is around here. Or is, is that so? Kanika's right. There's some weird stuff going on out in the woods. That's actually why we came in today. Have you ever heard of creatures called ditchlings? They're a type of cryptid that shows up around places on the brink of disaster. They kind of look like if the Pillsbury Doughboy was a creepypasta. Kanika's mom told us about them last night after seeing some footage we got in the woods. Ditchlings? Doesn't ring a bell. Dang, worth a shot. This is you. But. Oh, sorry, I was reading the, uh... Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? 
Well, they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Uh, should I be worried about something? R2 Drew2, thank you for the follow. Welcome following. to the stream. I don't know yet. I'll be right back. Gonna go nab some more books. Behave while I'm gone, Gretchen. Aw, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old gal. Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, drool leaking from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. But she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something unusual going on out of the woods. Let's see. Get out of here while you still can. Those woods are chock full of monsters, and Sybil says it's only gonna get worse. Voice. 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 I'm gonna try calling Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really. Hit. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble. We'll be sure to keep our eyes peeled. Voice. Voice. Thanks, Kanika. And Sylvester, if you see a 13-year-old girl with a black braid and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? Blom. Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Ooh. Got him. Just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. Uh, voice is like uh, uh, a New York, Northern Joysy thing. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right. Got our snacks, got our source documents. Let's get this research party started. This is going to be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. I'll be doing most of my research online. You never know what kind of weird biases the folks writing these books might have. Whatever you find online might be biased too, you know. Which is why we cross-reference things. Yeah, you're right. It's good to cast a wide net. I guess the books are up to me and Sylvester. Reading awaits. Reading awaits. All right. All right, let's, let's just do them all. Yeah, we'll just go through. Him. Forced into retirement at age 50 due to a war injury from his time in the Indian Wars, exacerbated by his short stint serving as a captain of the Confederacy, Silas Scarlet also lost his eldest two sons to that bloodiest of wars, leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the country. Andrew Scarlett built the surrounding town into what it is today, with expensive stone buildings, a bustling main street, and overseeing it all, the elegant Scarlett estate that was, until 1889, the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region. Culminating in the tragic collapse of 1918, it was found that Charles Shaw, the co-manager of the mine, had loosened security measures to increase production during World War I, resulting in a fatal collapse and the deaths of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlett's eldest son, Theodore, who had taken over for his aging father during the bustle of the war. His brother, Enoch V. Scarlett, managed to put them up, pull the mine from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So this is how your family made its fortune. Yes. Let's just keep going. Silas Everett Scarlett was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlett in 1818, one of 12 siblings. He grew up in, North, in eastern North Carolina during a tumultuous time in the state's history, and not much is known about his life before he joined the army in 1836. He quickly rose through the ranks, in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlett, Dot, dot, dot. The federal government granted the now Captain Silas a tract of bounty land in exchange for his service in the Indian War, and he settled in into the hills of North Carolina in 1841. That land would become Scarlet Hollow. But it started as a simple log cabin built by Silas's own two hands, occupied by his family of ten, Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children. Let's give some logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hills, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount, cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus, he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's now famous coal mine. 
you're finished with this one. I'm checking in here. Uh, the dude in the portrait is from the internet. <laughs> All right. A few entries catch your eye. Wampus Cat. Often linked to Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad. She hunted it down and, by wearing a bobcat mask, tricked it into using its own vile magic on itself, freeing the people of their region from its evil. Others say the creature comes from the story of a woman who wore the pelt of a wildcat to witness forbidden hunting rites. The hunters of her village gathered to perform the rites, and she watched in secret from underneath the cat's pelt, but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt and transformed into a creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her calls are those of great sadness and can serve as a warning to anyone who dares go against tradition, definitely based on just the horrible sound that large cats make. All of them. They sound like screaming women. Tommyknockers originated in Cornish mythology, spreading to the United States when Cornish immigrants began working in Appalachian mines. They're named for the knocking that can be heard from seemingly within the walls before a cave-in. According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Others believe that the creatures take stolen hammers to the supports of mines and collapse them on whoever is unfortunate enough to still be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish, leprechaun-like beings, but some claim they are the spirits of dead miners, forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. Taily Poe! There was a ho- oh, th yeah, this one- I forgot! It's a whole story! <clears throat> There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night, after a particularly bad week of hunting, both their stomachs empty, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole, and before he could even figure out what it was, he'd drawn his gun and fired at the thing, his hunger guiding his actions. But it was quick and ran back through its hidey hole and out of sight, leaving only its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Guess this'll have to do, he said to his dog, and threw the tail in a pot to cook a soup. He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling them up. The hunter crawled into bed, satisfied, and his dog curled up at his feet. He woke up to the sound of long nails scrabbling across wood. His dog was nowhere in sight, only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been. And in the gloom, he saw two big yellow eyes staring straight at, at him. Oh, thank you for saying it's spooky. I want my taily po. A high, hoarse voice croaked from the darkness. Go away, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him, still shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across hardwood, accompanying, accompanying its movements. I want my... Taily Poe, the creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, the hunter squeaked, his voice catching in his throat with fear, but there was no dog to be seen. I want my Taily Poe! Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt from the darkness, long claws stretched out towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night, but the next morning, all that remained of the hunter, his dog, and his cabin was a chimney standing alone in the woods. You're done here. <laughs> also, thank you for talking about the so music talented. and whatnot. Oh, y'all are so Always nice. creep. Yay! I'm so glad. Uh, a lot of the reason I put that in there was because people were confused when Kanika made a reference to a Taily Poe. Um, and I'm just like, I need to tell the story. Gotta tell the tale. It's fun. I think I'm all done. Let's check in. All right. If we're going with what Kanika's mom told us last night, I think we can rule out any natural disasters as what brought the Ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents. Looks like our estate has a history with those. What about y'all? Find anything? Ah! Before you can respond, a handsome black cat leaps up onto the table. Stella quickly slams her book shut. Aw, hey, Pixel. You might want to close your book. He loves to rip up any paper he can find. Don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Pixel immediately goes to town on Stella's treats. Sorry if Pixel's bothering y'all. Hopefully he hasn't gobbled yeah. up any of our books. <laughs> also, Abby, can I order food? Oh, sure. Do you want that poutine? Oh, yeah. Just one for each of us? Yeah. Do you want 
want the owl flower thing as well. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably fun. I'm just gonna order it now. Oh, I don't think that's awesome. I don't. Think it's expensive. Probably not. It's a dollar, yes. So, do you want one? Yeah, I do. You want some caffeine? I got that one. I'll make sure. Oh, I've got a phone here. What? Sorry, everyone. I am just feeling my hunger. Yes, it has fade. descended upon me as well. There you go. So, I need second to place this. I was thinking we would do our food break between episodes two and three, but I think we'll just be doing it uh, when it arrives. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. I'm going to also go to the bathroom real quick. I'm so sorry. Bathroom break. Bathroom break. Ooh, I wonder if you, what would happen if you had talked to animals and put Gretchen, Pixel, and Fruit in a room. Ooh, pizza. That was our other option. There's this place near us that does a, a like, vegetarian butter poutine with tofu and paneer. It's amazing. Butter as in, like, Indian food. Sorry for the, I know not everybody likes the sound of cracking knuckles. Sometimes they gotta be snapped. I can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Question, oh. is Dr. Kelly romanceable? <laughs> I think, I, I'll say that there are, there are unrevealed romance. romance options. Yes. Why do you let a paper shred of freely wander a library? Uh, I do most of the art by hand, and then yes, I use um, I, I use uh, Photoshop. Yeah. Oh, bye, Arian. Arian, thank you so much you for stopping me. by. Also, oh, I'm expecting like that would be so cute and so fun. All right. If you've seen this little guy's face, how could I say no to that? Leave Pixel B. You decide to leave Pixel B. The cat curls up on the table, fast asleep. All right, I'd better get back to shelving. Let me know if y'all need anything. Yeah, right? Stella, what was that you were saying about nuclear incidents? Oh, you are talking about that Goldsboro thing, right? Yeah, apparently in the 60s, a B-52 carrying a live warhead broke up midair and dropped a couple of bombs. Fascinating bit of history there. The first of the two bombs landed upright after its parachute got caught in a tree. Thankfully, it didn't go off. At the time, the government claimed the bomb was unarmed, but it later came out that the only thing preventing a detonation was a single electrical switch, which failed to trigger on the descent. And 60 years later, that second bomb still hasn't been recovered. Right. Its conventional explosive disintegrated in midair, but most of the nuclear material was made unrecoverable by flooding. If I remember correctly, they just buried it and sealed it up. Oh, so then Nuke made the ditch links. Case closed. Looks like we got it, folks. I, I don't think so. Old Row is almost 400 miles away from here. Look, you never know with radiation. We actually know quite a bit. It just melts you. It doesn't make monsters. And a six-year-old bomb isn't going to explode on its own hundreds of miles away and kill us here. You never know. There could always be a whole underground society of bomb-worshipping mutants just waiting to blow it up. I've missed this. Do you think there's a call here? Uh, yeah, sure. You lean in and quietly whisper to Stella and Kanika. You guys think there's like a cult here? Which one? Top one. Maybe the Ditchlings were actually nudists doing some kind of weird ritual. Har har, very funny. 
You were there with me last night, Sylvester. You know as well as I do. Whatever we saw, it wasn't human. <laughs> a DLC where we return as a therapist to help everyone work out their issues. Alright, uh, we'll just talk about the bugs. Yeah. So about the coal mines here. Kaneko visibly shudders. Yeah, cold sweats just thinking about being at a place like that. I feel for the guys who work up there. Endeavor. Speak for yourself. I love a good crevasse. I'll let you do these. Sure. Yeah. What happened after the mine collapsed? The book kind of just glosses over that. I know words like gloss. gloss. I went to school. I'm a computer scientist, apparently. There was a union for a little bit, but it didn't last. There's not a whole lot written about the past <laughs> century here. Yeah, the Scarlet Hollow Mine isn't exactly the most ethically run business. No offense or anything. I'm sure Tabby runs the mines better than Charles Shaw did. Still hasn't let the union in, though. <laughs> There's a reason she and I don't talk. You guys really seem to have a bone to pick with this Charles Shaw fella. That's what happens when someone directly causes a monumental disaster. Especially in a small town like this. People tend to spit when they hear your name. He got run out of town on a rail, you know. And that's not a figure of speech. Back then they actually tied you to a rail and ran you out of town. There's a big mural of it over on the far wall. Got off easy if you ask me. Something toxic in the mines, poison in the town. That Wayne fella seems sick. I don't mean it in the cool and radical sort of way. That creep who keeps coming around my mom's tea room? He snuck up on us last night and called out Sylvester by name. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong with him. Maybe there's some sort of parasite down in the mines. Maybe it infected Wayne. Maybe Wayne infected the local wildlife. Yeah, that could work. Do you have any luck with Rosalina? <laughs> Not yet. I knew a teen would be a handful, but I didn't think it'd happen overnight. I'll probably head out once you're all done and check out, check in on our usual haunts. So, Silas Scarlet. I guess he was a product of a different time. Uh, Who knows what future generations will, uh, <laughs> nobody will think when they look that. back on us. Sure, but the dude was still a monster. Sorry you're related to him. I got this, I can eat that. Um, yeah, I get it. it. Must be one of those burial ground situations, right? Like in Poltergeist? <laughs> Absolutely not. Even I know that's just urban legend stuff. If stolen land is cursed, all of North America is cursed. Yeah, Scarlet Hollow isn't special. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wampus cats kind of sound like they could be mountain lions. Voice like a woman crying out, somewhere between person sized and cat sized. Definitely, they are 100% mountain lions. Kanika, you know there are no mountain lions up here. I thought you were supposed to be a skeptic. But the myths are old, right? Mountain lions didn't go extinct in the Appalachians that long ago. Those legends just haven't died off yet. Almost every cryptic can be tracked down to either a hoax or someone getting confused about a perfectly normal animal. Sometimes both. Bigfoot, for instance, served as a prank. Then folks saw bears walking around on their hind legs and got freaked out. And now here we are. You'll eat those words when I get the first clear footage of a Bigfoot. If you manage that, I will print out a piece of paper that says Bigfoot isn't real and literally eat it. I promise. Thank you for the for liking our mountain lion fixation. I'm holding you to it. I'll just click through all these. Yeah, right? sure. I think the ditchlings and Tommyknockers, what with the whole warning thing. Good thought, but Tommyknockers live in mines. That's like their whole thing. I'm going to write it down, though. Tommy knockers are literally just the sounds that happen when a bunch of rocks and wood are about to collapse. Are they? Or are they the sound of mysterious creatures pounding on the rocks and support beams with hammers to cause a collapse? 
There's simply no way to know. Yeah. My mom used to tell me that Tally Post story back when I was little. Can't believe I forgot that one. Scared me so bad I didn't eat soup for years. Thought a monster might try and dig it out of my stomach if I did. I love that one. There's this old chimney in the woods that I used to think was the chimney from Tally Po. The one that was left after the thing did whatever it did. Now I know it's just because chimneys don't burn down and wooden houses do. That doesn't mean it's not the chimney from Tally Po. I've camped out there a couple times and seen some pretty spooky stuff. Yeah, I watched that video. You saw raccoons. You're gonna get rabies one of those days chasing after wildlife like that. What can I say? I like to live on the edge. Bless me, Ryan. Yeah, I think we Let's should head back out. to the woods. <laughs> we know those creatures are there. Anything else right now is just speculation. The two of you barely made it out of the woods alive last night. I'd much rather we at least try and get more information on what we're dealing with before we blindly throw ourselves into danger. The Ditchlings are either exactly what Kanika's mom told us they were, in which case they're not what we should be going after, or they're a potentially dangerous cryptid we know next to nothing about. We might as well try and learn a bit more before we go back into the woods. There's an awful lot of mine-related stuff in my notes. Maybe that should be our next stop? We can poke around, find out if anyone's seen anything weird. Just to clarify, you're suggesting we go question some of the miners, right? We're not poking around unprepared in the actual mines, right? Dot dot dot. Right? Yeah, totally. 100%. I would never. We don't even have a good reason to go down there. Good. Let's uh, keep it that way. You know how I feel about mines. I promise, Neeks. We're just gonna go question some of the miners. And if that questioning gives us a good reason to poke around, say, a cool abandoned coal mine, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You can cross that bridge when we come to it. I am not going underground. I'm just messing with you. We'll stick to the surface. Okay, good. And hopefully we can find out what's wrong with Wayne while we're still at it. <laughs> Cowards! We know where our enemies are. Could strike heard. now while the irons are still hot. <laughs> Okay, muscles. Nice. Good Kanika face. We'll have plenty of time to go back into the woods later once we're a little better equipped. What? Foreshadowing is a narrative. <laughs> this is what you call a tip of the hat. Tip of the hat. This is what they in the industry call a tip of the hat. The only problem is Tabitha. She's not exactly going to be thrilled to see us snooping around the mines. We can be sneaky. I'll make sure to be a good lookout. She'll never even know we were there. Look at us, going out on a caper together. I missed this. I missed it too. I mean, sure, it's not under the best circumstances, but I've been so wrapped up in running the store, I didn't realize how much I missed being able to hang out with you. Though, there is something missing. Reese. Reese. Really missed that dude. I can't believe how long it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? Nope. I've tried to plan stuff, but he's been too sick. Didn't realize it was getting so bad. That poor guy. You know, we could just pop over and surprise him. He seemed excited to meet Sylvester. Maybe we'll finally get him to leave his little cave. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right, let's roll out. See ya, Oscar. We'll let you know if we run into Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep you all posted. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Yo, you good? <coughs> Can I have some of your water? Yeah. <laughs> My throat. Reese's home stands at the edge of the forest wall, an isolated buffer cushioning the rest of the town from an unending wilderness. But the mines are fun and safe. <laughs> Going into the woods is fun and safe. Stella says this. Haunted houses are fun Everything and safe. Everything is so fun. It's so safe. Reese, it's Stella. I brought some buddies, too. Shh, not so loud. He's still sleeping. Can I help you with something? The woman in the doorway stares directly into your eyes. You can practically feel her simmering irritation wash over you. Hi, Dr. Kelly. We were wondering if it'd be okay if uh, Reese could come hang out. Nothing strenuous, we promise. I'm not going to go wake him up. If he's sleeping, he probably needs it. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now anyways. Hey, Simo. Thank thanks for coming to the stream. Uh, Ghost Tracks is what? It's a... Uh, it's a 
it's a spook in Texas, right? Yeah, yeah. It's um a thing where it's like a bunch of kids supposedly die on train tracks, and then if you park on the train tracks, it's they'll a little push you messed over. up to have uh, d- dead kid advertisement on a shirt. It's a tourist attraction, and uh, it's, it's thematically a, there's relevant. There's a nar- foreshadowing. It's a narrative device. <laughs> <laughs> It's just been so long since either of us have gotten the chance to hang out with him. I'm sure he and Sylvester would get along super well, too. Offer boiled peanuts? Or lie? Uh, let's let's lie. Yeah. Also, uh, Tristan Rambles, thank you for the follow. Ah, thank you! Ghost Jack, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, I do not believe in ghosts. I don't. I like to, though. I like ghost stories a I lot, like though. pretending. And I like when people tell me the spooky ghost stuff that they've seen. Yeah. Still is white. We're just going for a light walk. I've heard such great things about you, son. What accent is this? Oh, uh, Tristan Ramble's like, you Oh, so I'm just doing home. like more of a Brooklyn, but like maybe with a little bit of a uh, woo to it. I'm only in town for a few more days, and it'd be a shame if I didn't get the chance to meet him. Dr. Kelly looks you up and down and sighs. All right, you win. He's usually feeling his best around mid afternoon. Why don't you come over tomorrow? He can have some supper. <laughs> We can have some supper, and y'all can hang out for a bit. He can have some supper. I, I I would say ghost agnostic is probably the angle for me with, like, a healthy teaspoon of doubt. Ghost skeptical. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Tristan. Yeah, Luvian, that's how I feel. I don't believe in ghosts, but at night, when I hear noises in my apartment, I'm like, I'm gonna die, ghost. and I'm it's a ghost. Die, yeah. And it's gonna pop out of me, and it's gonna be very, very scary. So, uh, I'm not a believer until it's nighttime. I don't promise it'll be perky, but I'm sure it'll brighten his spirits to see you two again. I'm sure I'll be happy to meet you too, Sylvester. That would be great! I can bring a side dish. Maybe deviled eggs? Does he still eat those? No. Eggs are a little mush for him. They don't settle well. You can leave the cooking to me. I know what he can handle. Okay, I'll bring soda then. That's not... Okay, yes, fine, you can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine. Ginger ale, preferably. Oh, and leave the dog at home. She might cheer him up. You know, they have those therapy dogs in hospital. No dogs. Thanks so much, Dr. Kelly. We'll stop bothering you now. See you later. Dr. Kelly nods in acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several locks clicking into place can be heard from within. God, that woman makes me so nervous. I remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids. She always had the best stickers when we got our, had to get our shots. Maybe she's just stressed about Reese. Or maybe she's just nice to kids. Either way, I guess it's just the three of us. You gonna drive? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't like the thought of going up there without the van. Cool, I'll take my shortcut then. Shouldn't take long for me to get there. You're welcome to tag along, Sylvester. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you'd rather ride with Kanika. Right. With Ride Kanika. with Kanika. Either way, it works for me. Uh, don't ask the explorer. Yep. I'll ride with Kanika. See you at the mines. Kanika is a careful driver, but her old van still, still bumps, bumps around, around on, on the, the mountain, mountain roads. roads. Oh, oops. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for indulging us on that little diversion. Reese's mom can be a lot, but I'm glad we have solid plans for tomorrow. Cell and I haven't really seen much of him the past few years. That sort of isolation can't be good for his health, no matter what his mom says. Do you want me to just go through all of them? You can... Yeah, 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 yeah. Does Stella have a thing with Kaz? Took some convincing to get her to ride back with Duke last night, even after everything that happened in the woods. Wait, she actually got into a cart last night? Oh, I think she must have been, been really freaked out. That's how her parents died. Car crash. She was in the car too, just some cuts and bruises. She doesn't like cars and tries her best to stay away from them. I don't think she's ever going to actually leave this town. Has she uh, seen someone? Like a therapist? Good luck finding a therapist within walking distance of Scarlet Hollow. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I don't think that's something Stella would go for anyways. She likes to solve her own problems.
Thank you. <laughs> Have you ever thought about living somewhere else? Yeah, this wasn't the plan and it still isn't. It's actually a couple years into vet school. Top of my class, might I add. My dad died. My mom wasn't up for running the store, and my brother, well, you'll meet Miles if you haven't already. I only wanted to take a semester off and help them get back on their feet, but it's been a year and change now. Self voicing enabled. Self voicing disabled. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just about my family, too. The general store, that's the general store. If it winds up going under, it's hard not to imagine the whole town collapsing with it. Maybe I'll get, get to go back next semester. Say welcome to the Dead Dads Club, but I don't actually know if my dad's dead. You're funny. Vet school, though. Just like Stella's mom. You know, I never really thought of it that way, but yeah, I guess you're right. You shouldn't wait on other people for permission to live your life. A little harsh, but I guess you're not wrong. I suppose it's hard to think about what I what I want with other people relying on me like this. I appreciate the vote of confidence, though. A lot of people here share your perspective. So, uh, what's actually going on with Reese? Good question. I wish I knew. Mom's been saying he's sick for years, and it's not like she's wrong about it. It's been a wreck the few times I've seen him. That's rough. That's rough. Yep. This one by the general store this morning. Was the guy there your brother? Brother. Brother? <laughs> Ugh, Miles, yeah. He didn't do anything weird, did he? Yeah, he did such a good job. Model employee. Really. That's surprising to hear. Sorry I jumped to conclusions, I guess. He's usually difficult about responsibility. Yes, our hair is matching. Uh, yeah. It's that Tony's faded faster than mine. Uh, sometimes it feels like I can't trust him to do anything without leaving a mess for me to clean up. I wash my hair more often than you do. <gasps> you can't reveal that? <laughs> Why? Well, I, I, I like, you know. Yeah, you shower like every, sometimes yeah. twice a day. I like showering. Tony loves to be in a shower. Don't get me wrong. He's, like, I don't think you're supposed to wash your hair as often as I wash my hair. He's family and I love the guy, but he sure doesn't make it easy. Do you have any other theories on what's going on? Is that from what we talked about in the library? Sorry. You have fully transformed into a baby. I don't know. I don't think there's enough information yet to support these strong conclusions. I've been wondering if what you two saw was maybe some sort of mutated animal. Like a strain of hairless monkeys or raccoons or something. The library. Yeah, exactly. I've heard you're not supposed to. It's yeah. fun for Tony. Do you know about Morgan Island? It's off the coast of South Carolina, and there's a whole population of rhesus monkeys infected with herpes, like 4,000 of them. Maybe the ditchlings are some kind of alopecia research monkeys, which sounds ridiculous now that I've said it out loud. Forget I said anything. Yeah. What if? Dude, yeah, aliens. aliens. <laughs> That's hilarious. Absolutely not. Are aliens real? Totally. I'm sure there's life somewhere out there. Do they look like weird little hairless blob monkeys? Definitely not. Our whole hairless bipedal situation is one of the rarest body plants. Humans and other apes are super unique. Whatever multicellular life is out there, it's probably just crabs. And the likelihood that they'd make it to space, let alone to another inhabited planet? Dang. Here I go getting worked up about aliens. Sorry. Just have a lot of opinions on them. You and Kanika sit in comfortable silence for the last few minutes of the ride. Where's our food? Is it time oh, it's, to step it's, in? To, to pause? It's going to be here in a few minutes. All right, we, we can, can get we to can the get to right mines. before you enter. You and Kanika arrive at the mines before Stella. Stella's probably going to be another couple met. Hey, y'all. How was the ride? Oof, I'm going to put Gretchen down for a sec. Did you run here? Yep. yep. Felt like getting a run in. I didn't want to keep y'all waiting. You didn't run into any of those creatures, did you? Nope. 
That makes sense. They're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I should feel relieved or disappointed. But we're all here. What's the plan? I guess we just go talk to people. I guess so. I should probably be on lookout duty. I'm a bit of a persona non grata in the mines. Tabitha? Yeah. I might have tried sneaking in to talk to her a time too, or two too many. And Gretchen makes it extra hard to be sneaky. Gus is going to be here momentarily. Let me set up the little pause oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you also. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Miwa, Atura, Atur, we are about to pause so that we can have some dinner. <laughs> and then we'll be right back at it. We'll be right back at we're it gonna, until we're done. Until we're done. I am so excited. This will give us the strength that we need to finish. Yes. Media source. Wait, to add an image. Oh, thank you, Tristan, for saying I love Scarlet Hollow so much. Thank you. We are getting uh, butter poutine. <laughs> yeah. I'm very excited. It's fun. Browns. It's a special treat. Boom. Oh, Done. thank you so much. Pause our little video. Pause this. Wait.
Oh, Tristan, thank you for the huge donation. Oh, thank you for making one of my favorite games. The art is gorgeous and the writing is phenomenal. And the love put into that, both that and the expansive coding you've done is incredible. Thank you so much. And Grunge Gamer, thank you for the follow. Yeah, right. the others that we missed. Becca, Becca loves, loves games. Thank, thank you, you for the follow as thank well. Thank you so much. We are back. We are back. And folks, I'm thrilled to be here. We're probably less likely to get caught if only one of us is snooping around down there. <coughs> I don't need to explore. I was practically born for this job. Count me in. You're gonna do great. So, the plan. The plan. You know those cheesy old rom coms where somebody wears an earpiece on their first date? Whoa, do you have some kind of surveillance setup in the back of your van that I didn't know about? What? No. With a pair of earbuds with a really good mic. We can just do a group call. Kanika hands you a pair of earbuds. Oh, I'm gonna also just tweet out that we're back. Okay. Yes. You can keep going now. <laughs> the, the cousin thing was keeping you up, Annie. Oh my god. <laughs> ah. We can feed you questions if you get stuck, and Stella can give you a heads up if Tabitha's headed your way. Dang, I've missed doing this sort of thing with you. You're so thorough. Aw, oh, thanks. I do my best. I guess we should part ways and start the call, yeah? Stella and Kanika break off, leaving you alone at the entrance to the mines. Your phone buzzes. Hey! Can you hear us? Try saying something. Something. Yep. Something! Stella and Kitty could chuckle on the other end of the line. All right, cool. Nothing to do now, but enter the work site. Enter the work site. Enter. You pass through the unlocked fence and enter the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. I'm, I'm in. in. I'm in. All right, Morpheus. Good to know. Yeah, we're not. We're yeah, not we're, going. We're. We're. we're we gonna, have street smart. We're gonna take advantage of our street smarts. Yeah. Yeah. You approach the nearest group of miners, a blonde woman, a broad-shouldered man, and an old-timer. Their uniforms identify them as Harrison, Davis, and Zax. You got a reason to be bothering You got a reason to be bothering us. Tom waits over here. <laughs> you know anything about a guy named Wayne? He's such a cut up. Miss that dude. What happened to him? <coughs> what happened? The miners shift for a moment, uncomfortably glancing at one another. Isn't that the guy y'all said was, um. He's gone. It's on the maps. <laughs> now he's Batman. Alright, let's not press him. Let's not press him. Seeing anything weird lately? The miners look you up and down. Weird how? People getting sick, like, more than usual? No, nothing like that. I feel fit as an ox. <laughs> we have good working conditions in the mine, and our health is wholly looked after. You run into any weird animals, though? Nope. You been talking to that townie? The one the boss gave a lifetime ban to. Wait, are they talking about me? Yeah, she's like a Bigfoot YouTuber or something. Her videos are actually pretty good. Yeah, that's me, all right. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> but you know, now that I think about it, it's pretty weird. I haven't been seeing many animals at all lately. Used to be I'd see all sorts of critters. Now it's mostly birds. This is your first year up here, ain't it? Just not used to the seasons changing. All the animals are hibernating, that's all. I don't know, she's got a point. I've been up here five years now, and it's never been like this before. Heh, <laughs> maybe it's that global warming then. I think they're calling it climate change now. You heard any weird knocking in the mines? <coughs> Can't barely hear nothing when the machine's going down there. He's right, it's loud as shit. 
does sound like knocking, though, the way the machine pounds through the rock. Not sure if that's what you were thinking. You're not asking about Tommy knockers, are you? Tommy what now? Tommy knockers. They're like an old Welsh myth. Little guys that live in mines and knock on the walls before they collapse. <laughs> Nothing like that around here. Any, any weird questions? Sorry, any weird noises any weird questions coming from the woods? Like from me? Not a peep. We're underground most of the day, though. You know, I heard something unusual the other night. Thought it might have been an owl or something, but it didn't sound right. It was an owl. They were just not used to the local wildlife. A couple of other questions. Whoa, what you think of Tabitha? <coughs> the miners stare at you, distrust in their eyes. Harrison chews her sandwich slowly. She works hard. She's a good boss. Who's asking? Yeah. Keep it on the down low, but I'm working for a competitor. A unionized competitor. We're thinking of buying Miss Scarlet out of the mines. <laughs> so what is this accent? Yeah, I, I, oh, I'm you're using pretending. using my street smarts to pretend. To be like a Mississippi lawyer. Really? I'd kill for a few more dates off a year. Yeah, I heard those union boys get paid sick leave. I wouldn't mind some of that. I don't buy it. They're already looking for people to lay off. I don't intend to be one of them. I love it here. They're laying people off? That's the first I've heard of it. I guess once you lose your job here, you're probably not going to stick around for very long. Tabitha is an excellent boss, very professional, and runs a tight ship. That's the honest truth. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Thanks. Bye. You walk away from the miners. Yeah. Yeah, let's just keep going. You head over to the next group of miners. You stop in your tra- I forgot this. <laughs> you stop in your tracks, a shiver running up your spine as an unfortunately familiar voice calls out to you. You shouldn't be up here. It's dangerous. <laughs> Show up his boss. Whoever this creep is, he doesn't seem to understand who's boss around here. You rush forward to throw a punch, but before you even finish swinging, the figure's already moved to your side. While you recover from your swing, your other hand shoots up and reaches towards the veil, covering the figure's face. You can't out, out sneak Sylvester. As your fingers wrap around it, your body is thrown back by a forceful shove as the figure bounds back towards the shadows. You don't have to be afraid of me. Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. <laughs> Before you can say another word, the figure is gone. <clears throat> the veil you pulled from his head lies on the ground in front of you. It's stained and yellowed with what you can only assume is a film of pus and dead skin. You've eaten worse. <laughs> hey, Sylvester, are you still there? You've just been getting static from you. I, I had a tussle with Wade. You know, just a, a tussle. Little tussle. tussle. Whoa, I thought I saw some action down there. Are you okay? <laughs> Ask his pal should test the veil, too. I just uh, grab his mask, veil, whatever was on his face. Did you get a good look at him? Yeah, yeah he's Lies. just a man. <laughs> just a man. You're not sure if you're lying more for Stella and Kanika's sakes <laughs> or if you're lying more to yourself. Take the veil, send it to blood or not, quick eat us. Ah, <laughs> uh, with the way those miners talked about him and how the call went to static, I was kind of hoping he was a ghost. As much as I know how much you'd be thrilled if Wayne was a ghost, Sylvester's right. Whatever's wrong with him, he's just a man. I wonder why he wants me to stay at the estate. He told me to stay at the estate for the rest of the week. West? But I thought I'd be safe there. Why would he tell me that? Oh, sorry. What the hell is that supposed to mean? He's been threatening you, right? The plot thickens. This just means we're on the right track. It's not about to back down. Whoa, so brave. Heck yeah, Sylvester. We've got your back. 
Yeah, I loved setting up the ghost stuff, knowing that she would Hey there! Can we help you with something? I'll do Isaac. <laughs> do any of you know a guy named Wayne? Wayne? You mean Sam Wayne? What are you asking about him for? Wait, have you seen him? I saw him just now. He muttered some <laughs> creepy stuff to me and disappeared. I knew it. He probably just got back to camp after whatever he went off to do. Oh, uh, Selena Kingston, thank you oh so gosh. much for the donation. Thank you. That is so kind. We really appreciate all yeah, of you being so nice to us. Yeah, hugely appreciate it. Hold on a tick. Creepy isn't exactly Sambo. You know that, Isaacs. How do you know it was Sam Wayne? I don't recall seeing your face around here before. The name on his jacket. Wayne. Just like yours says Smith. So do all our jackets, but I've, if I switch with Isaacs, that don't make me Isaacs. No, no. It's gotta be him. There's no way he's dead. You really think he's running around town, creeping on strangers, and ignoring his friends and co-workers? It seems more likely to me that someone took care of him, so to speak, and is running around in his clothes. The miners stand in silence for a moment, considering what they've just heard. That's not possible. That's ridiculous. This is messed up. But who would, who would do something like that? I don't know. Why don't you ask his girlfriend? Yikes, do you think? No, no way. Just saying, he wasn't exactly the first fella to fall for her uh, charms. A lot of heartbreak in that woman's history. A lot of jilted ex-lovers if you catch them adrift. Dang, who are they talking about? I told him not to get involved with her. I told him. Who was he seeing? Who was he seeing then? I... Oh, now, if you don't know, there's no way I'm poking that wasp's nest. Forget we said anything. Yeah, I don't want to be next to the chopping block. Come on, don't dangle something like that in front of Sylvester. <laughs> Look, I just don't want to cause any trouble. Enough people are losing their jobs as is. Got mouths to feed. Losing their jobs and in Sam Wayne's case, disappearing. We've already said too much, come on. As the miners turn and leave, you can't help but get the feeling that Isaacs has more to say. As the miners pack their things, you scribble your phone number onto a scrap of paper. Hey, thanks for the help. It was great to meet you all. You reach towards Isaacs and shake his hand, passing your note to his palm. Don't mention it. Should we check in? Just as a heads up, the only group I still see out there is pretty close to the main office. Might be, it might still be worth checking talking to them, but I don't know if I can give you all that much of a warning if Tabitha comes out. Yeah. I'm talking to the last group of miners. Don't worry. I'll keep my eye on Tabitha's trailer. Good luck. I don't want to know where his other mouths are. Go around asking questions, huh? Stella wasn't kidding when she said these miners were dangerously close to Tabitha's office. You take in your surroundings, making note of any shadows you can melt into at the first sign of trouble. You don't look like you're from the inspector's office. It's like a voice. This guy's voice. Good. What can you tell me about Sam Wayne? Oh, ho, ho, he got himself into trouble, didn't he? Trouble. Trouble. <laughs> Why, you seen him around? What's that young buck up to? I think he's been doing a slasher movie, but in real life... I bumped into him twice now, and his clothes were soaked in blood. Trouble. Oh, wait. I know we're not seeing it here, but I'm curious. Inside Tabitha's office, there are two portraits. It's one of them for a lamp? Yeah, yes, and the other is Enoch. Oh. I believe. Trouble. Trouble. We a wife. Oh, we a wife. Oh, <laughs> his clothes were soaked in blood. What? You mean like going around killing people in a hockey mask? Now that's quite a development. In here, I figured he'd just run off to live in that big mansion with his bell. Stella audibly gasps. 
the thought of a strapping young man like him with that sour face broad always left such a bad taste in my mouth. Oh my god. Gross. As if you would fall on your knees if a woman of means showed the slight bit of interest in you. Or any woman at all. Sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> Soaked in blood. Sounds like Oscar's friend is at it again. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right, I have to close that mouth. Oh, there's so many mouths to close. But I suppose this begs the question, did she run him off? Or did some jealous son of a bitch oust him? Wait, are you talking about Pillwan? No, are you talking about Tabitha? Yep. Uh, Jessica Raven Blunt, Tabby, Belle, she has the best nicknames because she has the best smile. <laughs> Oh, that's me. Yep. Dang, I figured that's what they were getting at, but it's weird to hear it out loud. You good, Stella? Yeah, I just had no idea. Jealous. So, what do you think of Tabitha then? The two men shift uncomfortably. Not the kindliest woman I've ever met. She runs the place all right. Tell that to all the boys she's been laying off lately. Keep going around saying that. We'll see how long till you're one of them boys. All I have to say is, a mind that's doing well doesn't go around laying off its workers for no reason. I'm not sure any of us are going to have jobs in a few years. Tate, you're a goddamn fool. You're going to be next if you keep up that kind of talk. Uh, Sylvester, I think we've got a problem. Street smart. By the time Stella finishes her sentence, you've already ducked around a corner and out of sight. Now, let me back up. You continue back towards Stella and Kanika, moving from shadow to shadow and keeping out of sight. You're interrupted by a sudden movement out of the corner of your eye. A girl carrying a bundle of snacks pops through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of a hill. Hey, uh, I think I just saw Rosalina. Wait, really? What's she doing here? Clearly, she's doing a delinquency. Sorry, my voice keeps changing. I mean, yeah, but what kind of delinquency? Only one way to find out. Let's go after her. You rush over the hill and get your bearings, the sounds of active mining fading into the distance. Rosalina is nowhere to be found, but dusty footprints point towards a nearby mine. She d oh. She didn't. I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago after a collapse that killed over a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drag me into an abandoned coal mine. Cool, it's been ages since I've had the chance to get some good spelunking in. Oh, at least we'll have a good guide down there in case things go south. Oh, Kanika likes us. Whoa, you sure you want to tag along, Nix? Sylvester and I can handle this on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. As much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not about to let Rosalina get hurt in there. Even if it means I have to go underground. Sal and Kanika disappear into the mines. Before you follow, you briefly wonder if you should let Tabitha know about this. You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. Let's see what you got. Oh, what is it? You know I'm in a meeting. Wait, but we don't. Oh. We didn't talk to her. <gasps> <laughs> I'm gonna report it in the Bugs channel. For ourselves. At Tony. <laughs> what is it? No, I'm in a meeting for Street Smart Minds Run. Oopsie Daisy. Alright. Oopsie Daisy, correct. <laughs> Kate just snuck into the Shaw mine. I figured you should know. What? Are you serious? Why do things keep happening to me? Oh, that's me still. Ugh, whatever. I'll head over there as soon as I can. Just stay where you are and wait for me, alright? God, I don't even know why I'm trying to reason with you. It's not like you'll listen. No need to get snacky. I'll wait. Good. Tabitha hangs up on you. Wait, wait for Tabitha. You find a tree to lean against and wait for your cousin. Stella and Kanika will probably be fine without you. 
You stand outside the mines, anxiously eyeing the tree line, hoping not to glimpse any inhuman movements. Huh. You actually waited for me. I don't know what to say. How about, thank you, Sylvester? I'm not thanking you for doing the bare minimum. Come on, let's get this over with. I don't like the thought of you walking around an abandoned coal mine, but I'd rather not leave you out here unattended. You should be safe enough with me there to guide the way. Tabitha huffs her way up to the mine entrance and disappears into the darkness. You follow her and enter the mine. The inside of the mine is warmer than you'd expected, the air thick and wet. The ceiling hangs much lower than you are tall, forcing you and Tabitha to hunch over, your legs bent in a painful squat as you begin to navigate its maze of corridors. Do you know why the entrance to this place was boarded up? Because deep down you like being a curmudgeon. <laughs> Very funny, but no. There was a collapse that killed 168 people. A man named Charles Shaw decided it was okay to use a faulty wood to use faulty wood for support struts, and the entire mine came down. It's almost ruined our family. A lucky few died instantaneously, but for most of the souls who perished here, it was slow and agonizing. Trapped under rubble and left to slowly succumb to crush injuries or dehydration. It took a week to clear out most of the rubble and recover the bodies. A few survivors who were dragged out were never the same. I can't say I blame them. Get it? It's dangerous down here. I'll be careful now. Is this supposed to be your idea of bonding? If you don't like it, don't try to bond with me. Unlike you, I had to grow up knowing the history our family carries on its back. I had to grow up knowing about the bodies that are still buried under our feet. 168 people died here. No matter who was at fault, it still happened in a mine whose deed sits in my desk. Tabitha's ruminations are interrupted by a thunderous knock echoing from deeper in the mine. That's gotta be a Tommy knocker, right? You're spending way too much time with Stella. That's not a Tommy knocker. That's some delinquent looking for a lifetime ban from my property. Come on, it came from this way. Tabitha hastens her pace and quickly disappears deeper into the mine. Follow. You take a deep breath and follow suit. The deeper you progress into the mine, the heavier the air becomes. Coal dust hangs in thick clouds around you, even though this place was abandoned over a century ago. Echoing through the tight corridors, you and Tabitha can pick up snippets of a tense conversation. I can't believe your dad sent people to follow you. That's messed up. Like, I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becca. It is messed up. I don't need him telling me where I could be. You could at least check in so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's not really asking for much. Come on, kiddos. There's some real spooky stuff going on in town right now. You shouldn't be hanging out down here. We're not kids. Yeah, we're teens. Well, you look like a bunch of kids to me. Are those canned strawberry margaritas? Where did you even get those? Oh, I know that isn't you, Miles. It had better not be you. Yeah, whatever, it's me. What are you even doing here? Looks like we found our trespassers. I still can't believe that Stella managed to drag Kanika out here. She avoids me like the plague. Oh, it's like the deal with you and Kanika. I kind of think I want to smash, so like, is that okay? <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. I don't hold anything against her, aside from the fact that she's always hated me. She probably just got jealous that Stella and I started spending time together. But that was years ago, so who knows? What do you think of Kanika? I think the two of us are more alike than she'd ever care to admit. I respect her, but don't tell her I said that. I wouldn't want to appear weak. No offense, but you are a little rough around the edges. That doesn't mean she has to give me a hard time. Have, have you, you tried, have you tried talking? talking to her? No. Even if I tried, it's not like she'd listen. Probably. Look, I've kind of given up on other people understanding me. It doesn't matter. 
So sad. Well, let's just move on. They're close. You breathe a sigh of relief as the tight passageways give way to a small cavern. Within, a group of teens engages Stella and Kanika in a heated argument. All of them are too caught up in the moment to notice you or Tabitha approach. My dad is a foreman at the continuous mining facility, and he says they only abandoned this mine because there wasn't enough coal left. So it's actually really safe, and we can hang out here whenever we want. Wait, Becca, I thought your dad was a charge hand? No, Alexis, he got promoted last month. Correction, your father was a foreman at the continuous mining facility. We'll see if he even has a job in the morning. What? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, hey, Tabby. Hey, Sylvester. We thought you'd lost you out there. Did you run off to sniff out Tabitha? Kanika sighs. Probably for the best. These kids are refusing to listen to us. Hey, don't talk about us like we aren't here. Yeah, we can hear you. Alexis, don't butt in. I'm trying to make a point. Do none of you understand what a boarded up mine entrance is supposed to mean? It means it's closed, condemned, not fit for human use. Aw, oh, come on. This place is, like, way sturdy. Check this out. The teen with the beanie jumps up and slaps a strut on the ceiling. Oh, was that the knocking we were hearing earlier? Oh my god. Zane, cut it out. You're embarrassing us. I'm so sorry for Zane's behavior. I don't think he realizes how extremely 8th grade it is to jump up and hit things. Uh, no offense, Rosalina. None. none taken. The other 8th graders are totally immature. Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill and smart, too. Enough. The damage is already done. Now leave. I'm tired of people in this town dragging my cousin headlong into danger. I can't believe I actually agree with Tabitha about anything, but this is the worst place I've ever been in my entire life, and I would love to see the sun again before I die. Aw, oh, come on, you guys. Maybe it's not a big deal. We used to do dangerous stuff all the time, and I still do dangerous stuff now. I mean, I don't like this particular situation, what with the whole ditchling thing, but outside of that, who are we to tell them where they can hang out? I don't know who you think you are in this situation, Stella, but I own this mine. I know there's limited room in a mine, but how close Stabby is standing to one another. <laughs> it is entirely within my rights to tell them to leave, much like it is entirely within my rights to tell you to leave. Was your lifetime ban for my mind's not a clear enough message for you? Hell yeah, Tabitha. Tear the sad 20-something to shreds. Hey, I'm defending you. And I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? Uh, running a clickbaity YouTube channel where you run around the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. So she's sad. So what? Give it a few years and you'll be sad too. The passage of time is inescapable. Look, just because we just wanted to give Rosalina a good time, her home life sucks right now. Yeah, tell them about where you have to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the past couple weeks. Dad says we can't stay at the house. They've got a hot... <clears throat> They've got a hot plate and a couple cots in one of the back rooms. It's actually a pretty sick setup. No, it isn't, Zane. Rosalina deserves better. I don't care about your home life. If you're going to do your underage drinking, go do it in the woods. Just get off my property. Tabitha. Look, Rosalina, I'm sure Oscar has a good reason for all that. He's a good guy and he cares about you. He thinks our house is haunted. Oh. Wait, what? And I should care because... Because it's such a bullshit excuse. I bet he couldn't afford it anymore and is lying to you to save face. What a coward. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Are you serious? Wait, no, this is an yeah, accident. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Isn't that, like, bullying or something? <laughs> Shut up, Zane. 
back up. He says it's haunted? I can't believe he didn't mention it to me. I could investigate. There's no ghost, Stella. It would be cool if there was, but Becca's right. I just wish he would be honest with me and tell me what's really going on. It's like he doesn't think I can handle it, like I'm still a little kid. Ugh, you're all children, and none of you realize how good you have it. Back in the day, each and every one of you would be pulling 12-hour shifts in this exact mine. If it weren't for the child labor laws, the five of you might have some actual character. Aw, thank you. Good job, Tony. <sighs> exactly. Rosalina's not that mature anyways. She still sleeps with stuffed animals. That doesn't mean she's not mature. I still have pork chop, you know. I rest my case. Why? What? What? <laughs> What did you say about child life? <laughs> God. <laughs> Sorry. All, all teens, all the surfer teens live in Australia. Schrodinger is saying, <laughs> you don't know what nationality he is until you make him say a line. He's <laughs> having a time. A foreign yeah, exchange Croydon, student. Yeah, Croydon, so it's just a foreign exchange Toward student. Toward Labour. Wait, yeah. I can't do it. I'm terrible. Foreign exchange student from Stryer. Oh, anyway. I'm right. living in Coaltown, USI. Wait, what would you say about child labour? Yeah. Wait, how do you know there isn't a ghost? But that's oh, you. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. I gotta be from Brooklyn again. Okay. How do you know there isn't a ghost? Ah, oh, this, this is too many things to keep track of. Ugh, why are all the adults in this town such weirdos? There's no ghost. There's no such thing as ghosts. Oscar is just lying. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. What if we break in and ghost bust the place anyways, just to be sure? It's like you always start. <laughs> I'm trying to stick with trying for him. Oh, okay. I'm trying. Okay. It's difficult. <laughs> We've been streaming for four and a half hours, Sheila. <laughs> oh my god, Zane. You can't bust a ghost if there is no ghost. Also, Rosalina lives there. She can't break into her own house. There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out how to bust it if it's actually real. And if it isn't real, well, problem solved. You know, Rosalina, you could always stay over at my house until Stella goes past your place. We have a finished basement with a pull-out couch. Why are we even talking about this? Like, it's a thing. It's not a thing. There is no ghost. Oh, those are his Dragon Ball pants, so... This dragon ball on his thigh there. Yeah. Dragon ball pants. I don't care, and I can't believe I've wasted this much time trying to argue with children. I'm washing my hands of this and calling the cops. Feel free to leave before they show up. We're gonna leave the teens in the mine just so I have less accents to do. Yeah. You hear that, Miles? We're leaving. I suggest the rest of you kids leave this empty mine before someone gets black lung or gets crushed by rocks or beats any one of the many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. You missed Edwardian era chimney sweep. You gotta bring that one in now. Oi! <laughs> Oi, mister! Oi, mister! I, I, I clean your chimney real good, mate! <laughs> Then what was it? Come on, Stella, didn't you have a whole list of perfectly natural explanations for scary mind noises? It's Tommy Knockers for sure. I know this isn't why we came down here, but we've got to check it out. Stella! Uh, I know, I know, but weird stuff's been happening around here the past few days. What if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes couldn't be higher. You have no sense of self-preservation? Aw, thanks, my darling. I want you out of here, Stella. Aw, oh, come on, Tabby. You can come along, too. If you guys are, like, going after something spooky, count me in. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Nobody is going deeper into the mine. Nobody is staying in the mine. You are all leaving. Please listen to Tabitha before my heart gives out. It'll be fun, Neeks. It will not. 
Wait a second. Where'd three of you run off to? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Wow, Kanika. Maybe if you weren't so scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneak off. I noticed them sneak off, and, like, I've been zoning out the whole time we've been here. Ugh, they must have squeezed through that child-sized tunnel. Dang, I've always wondered where that goes. I've never been able to get these hips through there. Stella, stop sneaking into my mines. Please, I am literally begging you. If only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, we could already be done with this little mess. But no, there just have to be remnants from a bygone era. Uh, uh, oh. can you just, like, talk about how child labor was, like, the good old days a minute ago? Okay, there we go. I'm kind of finding it again. Spin the wheel. Lance on Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Take an imaginary oh shot every God. time someone says Stella in a reprimanding tone of voice. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, the wheel has been spun. I was trying to get you to leave my mind. Becca's head pops out from the tunnel's entrance. We are not about to let you come in here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been here like a million times. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. I just, whatever. Come on, you two. I know a cool spot this way. Okay, I think I know where that tunnel rejoins the rest of the mines. I'll go look for them, and I want each and every one of you to take note of the fact that I'm doing that. If those idiots get themselves lost and die, I am not letting their families sue me into the ground. Are, are those really your priorities right now? Yeah, do you have a problem with that? I want the rest of you out of my mind. Except for you, Sylvester. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Yeah, sure. I could never fit in that tunnel anyways. They have crossed a barrier that I cannot, so my time here is up. Uh, Basil, thank you. The illustrations of her smug face in the tunnel are some of my top faves in the game. Hehe. <laughs> but only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. Whatever, I still have to do my dailies anyways, and the surface down here sucks. I will happily escort these two knuckleheads out of here. Puppy eyes. Puppy eyes. No, you are not about to weasel your way into this, Stella. Aw, oh, come on, Tabby. I've been down here a ton. I can totally help out. Tabitha sighs. Ugh, there's no getting rid of you, is there? Fine, I won't waste my time arguing. Oh, hi, doggy. Oh, hi, doggy. What's the point of going after them? Okay, no, I can't. I, I, Tommy was so's accent is too mysterious. It's too to mysterious, do. yeah. Could do like a, 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 a Toki War Tooth for Sylvester because I've lost Brooklyn. You remember Brooklyn? Yeah. The yeah. country. Yeah. What's the point of going after them? Sitot wants to listen to us. I don't want to be stuck in an abandoned mine playing cats and mouses all night. <laughs> Look. I just want to put in my due diligence in case their parents try to sue me for their own negligence. If we catch up to them and they decide they want to continue to be a nuisance, then fine. They can rot down here for all I care. Inspiring. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Their teenage bravado will probably start to shrivel away in not too long, and we'll be there to help them safely and calmly find the nearest exit when that happens. Annie, Tommy Wiseau doesn't do uh, a perfect Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> The accent is changing every moment. Don't worry, it'll be fun and safe. I'm sure that's exactly what you told him last night, and we all know how that ended. Stella's thinks she says, it'll be fun and safe. Hey, Tabitha, don't push Stella away like that. She hasn't done anything to deserve it. You did it! Yeah, back, baby! Brooklyn! <laughs> Ugh, not you two. I said she could tag along, didn't I? What's the big deal? Oh, hey, Angie, Angie Levin there. Thank, you, thank you so much. Hmm. Is that a bug? I don't know. Stella's bravado is, like, constant. Yeah, it's she has throughout. the bravados. I, I think that's something that's just there a because character trait. at some point in the game, there is a mandatory Stella has too much bravado moment. There's no path where you don't see that. In fact, you already have, uh, you already have the bravado moment of evading Duke in the woods. 
It's all right, Sylvester. Tabby's just a bit of a curmudgeon. Oh, the kid's bravado. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> I'm coming with you, but it's because I want to come along, not because you're making me. I just want to make that clear. Noted. Let's not linger any longer than we have to, shall we? Want me to take Gretchen with me? I don't know if it'll be easier to cover more ground without her. Yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want a repeat of last night, and who knows what we'll have to do. If we'll have to do any climbing. Puppy! Puppy! I'll see you on the other side. Hopefully soon. For sure. We won't be long. Cool. Can't wait to bust some ghosts tomorrow. Kaniko, Miles, and Zane head towards the entrance of the mines, leaving you, Tabitha, and Stella to find the remaining teens. All right, no dawdling. We should be able to catch up with them if we go this way. You and Stella exchange a glance as Tabitha ventures forward. Enter deeper into the mines. As the three of you move deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. But, Becca, why are we doing this again? I thought you... Th I thought you thought Tabitha was, like, really cool. Why are you trying to get her all mad? Uh, we're doing this because Tabitha is really cool. She doesn't let anyone boss her around. So Bye, we can't Tristan. just let her boss us Thank you so much for being around. here. Thank you so much for stopping by the, 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 the stream, the thing. Yeah. Aw, uh, you hear that, Tabby? Someone thinks you're cool. I can't believe she used to hang out with a nobody like Stella. <laughs> hey. I, I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. Her videos are really neat. Oh, that's great, Max, darling. Ah. So, there's so many details. So hard to keep track of them all. Oh, come on. She doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of a YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? The pained eye. I mean, not yet, but I'm in talks with Meat Rice. And I make plenty from ads and donations. How does it make you feel to have a teen girl think you're cool, Tabitha? I feel nothing about it. The opinions of children don't interest me. I don't know. You kind of hesitated there. You're reading into things that aren't there, Stella. Just because your livelihood revolves around what people think of you doesn't mean that I care what people think of me. I mean, Tabitha isn't, like, strictly defensive uh, of Tella. Uh, Tell Stella. Stella. Tell like, uh... Like, she has been banned from the mines Yeah, she's been banned from the mines. She's put up walls between her. Congratulations on your sponsor, that way. That's you. That's me. You do care. But yeah, Tabitha also tries to pretend she's not caring around Stella. Yeah. And that smirk is part of that trying. Wow. Four and a half hour stream. That's Difficult. how it goes. I'm, okay. Oof. You want this okay. one? Okay. Dang, dang, Stella. Meat rice? That's a big deal. They're like on every big podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Feels like a really big step for the channel. I just wish Becca hadn't said all of the things she said tonight. Yeah, I don't like her. Yeah, I don't like her. <laughs> Thanks, Sylvester. I'm surprised you don't have thicker skin about this, Stella. You never struck me as someone who let other people's opinions bother you. If you did, I wouldn't have tried. I wouldn't have to try so hard to keep you off my property. Well, I know you don't mean it. Agree to disagree. <laughs> oh man, I wish they were gossiping about me. Gosh, I'm not sure about that. I know they're just teens, but some of that stuff stung. stung. Another knock, closer, interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Is it just me, or is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? It's not just you. Okay, that knocking is starting to freak me out. Calm down, Rosalina. It's just mind sounds. Did, did you guys see that? No, no, it was just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. I saw it. Shut up! There's nothing down here! Stop trying to scare me! What did they... What did they see? Tommy knockers. 
It's not Tommy Knockers. They're probably just jumping at their own shadows. You said it yourself, Stella. As soon as they got deeper into the mine, their bravado in the face of authority would vanish into a puff of smoke. It's probably just rocks falling somewhere deeper in the mine, which is also bad for obvious reasons. Dude, I can't believe they're making us do this. They better get grounded when this is all said and done. Grounded. Grounded. As much as I appreciate the sentiment, I hope you're wrong. If they get grounded, it means people found out about this. I hate dealing with parents. Oh, that's interesting, Lupian. Did you know that when you drew these caves, Abby? I did not. These just seemed scarier to me. <laughs> Uh, Luvie and Blue says, yeah. I watched a stream yesterday where the streamer talked about how dangerous caves have flat ceilings, rounded ceilings are safer, and it was neat to see this scene as they move deeper. The ceilings become flat. I totally meant to do it. It was very spooky looking. I just felt like it shouldn't be that way, I guess. Uh, yeah, thanks, Max. I'll take a look next time I do a patch. Look on the bright side, Sylvester. If they didn't come down here, we'd have missed out on a golden opportunity to get spooked. Tabitha glares at Stella. You press on. As you progress deeper into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A century-old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the youths, their panicked arguing, echoing down the pitch-black corridors. And here we are. The tunnel they crawled through passes through the chamber below. It shouldn't be hard to find them once we get down there. I've never been this far in. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. Tabitha crawls up to the ladder and disappears over its edge. All right, let's do this. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins to climb down. Follow them into the pit. You walk to the ladder and climb down. You do that. You do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the way back. Come on. Pretty sure? I thought you'd been down here before. Okay, maybe I didn't get this far in. But whatever, it doesn't matter. I definitely remember the way out. Hurry, I don't want to be down here anymore. I think it was actually this way. Oh, shut up. No one even wanted you to come with us anyways. Becca. Yep, they're close, all right. Good thing they're so damn loud. It sounded like they're really lost. The voices around you, those of the teens and your companions, sound odd, distant. There is something in the darkness before you that's much louder, though you don't hear it. You can feel it in your chest like the deep growl of a predator. You find yourself stepping towards the black chamber before you, compelled by some unnatural force. Hey, are you alright, Sylvester? What do you think you're doing? Get away from there! Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light from your phone illuminates the chamber. Sylvester! Sylvester, are you alright? Oh, thank God, you're alive. It looked like you had a seizure or something, and then you and Tabby just conked out. I'm fine. Ugh. You can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither of you move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourselves while you're still recovering from whatever that was. I'm gonna get you both some help. I'll be back soon, I promise. Aw, oh, thank you for saying it's good, Arctic. By the way, you've been doing a lot of reading. Do you want me to take over the narration? I like it. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, look, I'm getting tired, so this makes it easier for me. You fade back out of consciousness as your companion clambers out of the pit, intent on your rescue. You raise up on your elbows, head still swimming from the visions, your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues, now magnitudes more intense than ever. Through it, you once again hear the panicked voices of bickering teenagers echoing down the stone corridors. Aww. Oh my gosh, thank you, Mew Arturo. So nice. Abby is definitely my favorite horror artist. Thank you so much. Ah. Becca, you're just getting us more lost. It's this way. If 
you're so sure, then why don't you just leave? I can't believe I let Alexis talk me into inviting you here in the first place. Becca, I'm just trying to help. I said go. Okay, I will. Alexis, you don't have to go with her. You know that, right? I, uh... Get aside, Alexis. I'm sure Becca knows where we're going. She wouldn't just lie. S sorry, Rosalina. The increasingly desperate voices of the teens are drowned out by the thunderous knocking. You can practically feel the ground shake beneath you. You can almost see the walls vibrate with the intensity of the hellish sound. God, that knocking is not helping my headache. What the hell just happened? Am I the only one who saw ghosts just now? I mean, maybe they were ghosts. No, I saw them too. There's gotta be fumes or something down here. It's an old mine. These places are death traps. Probably just hallucinated. Are you, like, literally gaslighting me? I said I saw it too. Stop being weird. We're leaving. Rosalina appears in the passageway to your left. She's out of breath, and it looks like she's been crying. I don't think, uh, Ditchlings weren't in the last oh, hallway. Yeah. There's probably just some similarities of designs. Yeah, since I am the artist for all of it, there's probably yeah. some, like, nasty little faces or something. I'm so sorry I snuck off like that. I just wanted Alexis to think I was cool. The entire cavern shakes with the sound of rock fall. I don't know what the hell is up with this knocking, but that is the sound of a mine collapse. Quick, up the ladder, both of you. Wait, Becca and Alexis are still down there. You can't just leave them here. Do you have a death wish, little girl? No, but I don't want them to die either. Please. Yoink. Reach towards Rosalina. There's no yeah. time to argue. Pick her up and start climbing. There's no time to argue. Against her protestations, you grab Rosalina with one arm and start climbing out of the pit with the other. Hey, wh what are you doing? We need to warn them. Put me down. Alexis, Becca, the way out is this way. If you just follow my voice, you'll be able to make it out. This way, come on. Your cousin moves with the kind of swiftness you'd expect from someone who spent their entire working life in and around coal mines. Becca, Alexis, can you still hear me? The knocking drowns out Rosalina's desperate shouts as the three of you crawl closer and closer to the entrance. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I left you guys. It's deafening now, as if someone were trying to break through the walls with fists of iron. This is known to experts as the King Kong technique of rescue. <laughs> you continue to push forward, your burning muscles giving way to pure adrenaline. Then comes the sound of splintering wood. You pick up the pace. The entrance is so close. I'm so sorry. Yeah, Tabitha is... I think she has powerful build as one of her traits. Yeah, for sure. And there it is. Freedom. USA. USA. The three of you manage to squeeze through the entrance just as the walls of the mine come crashing down. Alexis. Do you think the other two... Maybe they got out. It's possible, right? Maybe there's another entrance or something. Becca sucked good riddance. Or maybe they're still alive in there? Yeah, I think uh, Tabitha is also a powerful build street smart combo. Nice. More powerful build and hot and hot again. <laughs> God. I'm so sorry. Oh, we did this like on our Reddit AMA a while ago. It's it's very loose. Oh, it's yeah, not like we loose. made characters and assigned traits to them. I think... I uh, think several of them would probably have three or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oscar is probably powerful build, book smart. Um, Kanika is probably, like, mystical, book smart. Yeah. Stella is, like, hot, powerful build and maybe street smart, but yeah, it's not yeah. clear there. Yeah, yeah. Hard to say. <laughs> ah your turn. Yeah, Rosalina, are you okay? Your dad's on the way. He should be here any minute. Everyone has hot as free treat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What's Gretchen's build? Old. Talk, talk to animals. <laughs> and old. 
Um, you are I accidentally picked the perfect build to get through the first two chapters relatively unscathed. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm going back to camp. I'll be back with some men. And they can start digging. I'll I'll call Earl. It takes a bit of time, but eventually Tabitha arrives with men and a machine to start digging through the rubble. You, Stella, and Kanika are afforded a quiet moment to yourselves as the others get to work. Gretchen has talked to humans. <laughs> <laughs> talk to humans and talk to animals. Yeah. Do, do you think they're going to be okay? There was a stone coffin on the wall of that pit. It gave me some sort of a vision. I saw what happened to this place. Are you sure it wasn't just auto-suggestion? We talked about that mine a lot today. I don't know, Neeks. You weren't down there. Sylvester and Tabby had, like, simultaneous seizures next to a creepy stone carving. It was like something out of a movie. Just because they passed out or had seizures doesn't mean it wasn't auto-suggestion. Tabitha and I saw ghosts down there. They were right behind you just before you left. Did you not see them? Gretchen also has etiquette. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't see anything other than the two of you in that carving. That's super weird. I don't want to doubt what you experienced, but you were deep in a dark abandoned coal mine. Might have just been primed to see things. Yeah, there isn't a lot of opportunity for book smart, especially in chapter one, but then you get all the books in chapter two. And, and the chapter three thing. It's good. You know, now that I think about it, that totally fits the profile for some of the Tommyknocker Tommy Knocker stories. What if they're actual bona fide ghosts? Ghosts. Stella. Stella. Everything that happened down there centered around that main chamber where I saw that coffin. Stella showed me a photo. Weird stuff. Maybe you weren't entirely off base about the cult stuff you mentioned earlier today, but this thing felt old. You sure those were Tommy Knockers? Depends on what you mean by sure. Is anyone really sure of anything? They fit the description pretty well. I don't know what else they'd be. Not the top. I have no idea what happened in there. I need to do some reading on mind collapses, I guess. Do you think they're okay? Do you think they're okay? There were survivors in the last collapse. You don't want to feel guilt? Alexis doesn't deserve this. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody deserves this. If you and Tabby didn't pull Rosalina out when you did, you all might have wound up buried down there. I think you did the right thing. What happens now? Hey guys, I don't think she's quite ready to talk just yet. What happened down there? I think Tommyknock has brought down the mine. It was what? Sylvester's right. They're real. I got some audio of the knocking on my phone. They must have been furious that we went down there. This is all my fault. She's been so angry with me. If I'd just been able to provide more stability, she wouldn't be doing things like this, putting herself in danger. She's okay, Asuka. I made sure of that. Carried her out of there myself. Thank you, Sylvester. I just wish I could have kept her from going in there in the first place. If I just paid closer attention to her, maybe none of this would have happened and those kids wouldn't be down there. Can't help but feel it's my responsibility to prevent this, and I blew it. Yeah, uh, making it possible to lose the argument kind of goes against some of the uh, like core design principles. We don't we don't want something to feel like a gotcha or like somebody got the wrong answer and needs to reload their save. Yeah, we um, wanted it to be possible to kind of yeah. present the argument in different ways. I and suppose they are like valid. I suppose there could be a try and do it without book smart and fail. But that's a lot of... It felt kind of more like a game over. Yeah, like, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of extra chance. effort and people wouldn't read it properly. 
You have to be really careful about... Yeah, and Booksmart is able to argue even though other people also have that information because Booksmart is it's their able thing. to do that. Yeah, they're just better at arguing. Like Yeah, like too many people would just keep reloading thinking there is a way out. Um, and then it would and make we don't them want feel people bad. reloading. Yeah, and we can't give them that option if they yeah. are books fine. Also, we uh, have other plans for Mystic. Yeah, of course. You're being way too hard on yourself. You can't be expected to predict, to predict and prevent accidents. You're only human. He's right, Oscar. As a former reckless teen and a current oh. reckless adult, yeah, there's not much you can do about a situation mm. like this. I suppose you're all right. I am just human. Be a better human, though. Quidict and quivent. Rosalina told me to have been living in the library. I think she was trying to get away from that. Oscar sighs. Uh, yeah, so originally there was going to be a... Is try and grab both of them in episode one and then Duke and Gretchen die, but it's like, one, if you do that, you're just going to reload. Yeah. And it's a lot of extra writing. Um, and it's, like, obviously the wrong choice. Right, it's yeah. obviously the wrong choice. The book smart thing would be not obviously the wrong choice, and that would be so confusing. Um, and it's just like, we have limited resources, so... We do. Yeah, we want to give you a lot of choices, but not choices where it's, like... Not satisfying. Not, not choices that nobody's going to take. Yeah. And not choices that And they feel like that a don't... punishment for, like, exactly. taking it. Like, Ooh. there are some things where it's, like, we kind of give you a choice, but then it turns out not to be a choice, like, saying no to Stella. Yeah. Where it's, like, it adds to character stuff, but for right. big moments like that, it's more just, like, haha, you fool, you thought you could do this? Well, you'll just reload the save. You aren't gonna live in this state forever. <laughs> uh, because I like her coy facial expression. It feels like a good resting face for her, unless she's upset. Also, <laughs> it's, you know, I think Stella's crushing on some level, no matter what, always. Yep. Rosalina told you that? Yeah, it's true. You have to understand, there's something in that house. We believe you, Oscar. Not the that. I couldn't let it hurt her, and since I don't know how to get rid of it, I set up a back room at the library for us. Just until I could figure out how to fix things. I know she hates it, but I thought it would be better for her. Instead, it just drove her away. Staying with friends, not checking in. Now this. It's all because of that house. And because of me. I haven't been able to fix this. I just wish she could understand. You don't have to be alone in this. We can help. Yeah, we'll totally help you get rid of your ghost. Or, more likely, we'll figure out what non-ghost thing it actually is. Either way, though, we're here for you. Thanks, you guys. That really means a lot. Aw, oh, thank you, Wild Sage. Aw, oh, yeah. Happy to share. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you're... Even the most asinine, like, PC isn't really going to be worse than Tabitha. Yeah. <laughs> so... Who has, yeah. Yeah, and Stella's, like, kind of unflappable there. Dad, you must be so mad at me. Oh, Rosa, no. Of course I'm not mad at you. Do you think that maybe they got out? Maybe there's another exit somewhere. Rosalina. I should have pushed back harder. I knew the way out. I should have made them come with me. I just don't want them to be dead. I'm so sorry, Dad. You don't have to be sorry. You're alive and you're safe. We couldn't have gone back for them, right? We wouldn't have made it out if we went back. We did what we had to, to survive. No. If I could have carried you all out of there, I would have. But I couldn't. Those walls were coming down. <laughs> Giant These baby. muscles. These, these muscles can only lift so much. I know this is terrible, Rosa, but you're alive. You have no idea how grateful I am that you're still there. It's not fair, Dad. It's just not fair. Maybe your asshole character is worse than Tabitha. It depends on the context. You've only known Tabitha for a couple days, anyway. <laughs> Maybe she is worse. Maybe she's not. Oh, thank you, Wild Sage. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs> Stella's expression of disgust haunts me. I know, Rosa, I know. 
But I think the best thing you can do for your friends right now, until we get them out of there, is to just enjoy the life you have. I know I haven't made that easy for you. I know you've been frustrated with the choices I've made. But I'm gonna do what it takes to move us back into our house. We're gonna have a good life again, Rosa. Sorry I didn't do this sooner. I'm sorry this is what it took. Dad. We're on the case. We'll be okay. I promise. I'm going to take her home. Guess we'll see the rest of you tomorrow, and thank you, Sylvester. You have no idea how much I appreciate what you did for Rosalina. As Oscar and Rosalina leave, your cousin exhaustedly saunters over to you. Alright, Sylvester. My men are set up to start digging. Let's go home and get some rest. Now, hold on a minute. minute oh, Miss wait, Scarlet. No, yeah, you're the young one. I'll Mind if we have a quick word with your cousin, Miss? In private? Okay, fine. Just make it quick, and don't you dare try and pull anything on him. He did nothing wrong here. Ladies, I'm afraid that means you too. Don't you need to talk to us? We witnessed this too. Oh, sure, but that can wait. We know where to find y'all. This guy's a puppet. A puppet who came to life. I'm sure if I be. This is Deputy Dancer. You can call me Earl. Look, I'm running out of voices. <laughs> Pleased to make your appointments. Welcome to Scarlet Hollow. Hope this little accident hasn't colored your perception of the place. Lovely place to live, if you ask me. Lovely indeed. Now, Sheriff Hugby, don't you think it's a mighty odd that these teens found themselves in an old abandoned mine on the very property Sylvester's family happens to own? Don't you think it's even a might bit odder that Sylvester happened to be in there with them at the time of said collapse? I'd be lying if I said it weren't peculiar, though I'm sure you're an upright citizen, Sylvester. Now this is surely an unfortunate accident. Still, a good cop should ask themselves these questions. You gotta understand where we're coming from. Two kids, 15, 14, bear to life Brandon! in there. Hi! Hey, Brandon, how's it going? Our composer has yeah, joined the chat. Yeah, Tony's questions. doing a puppet voice for Earl. Maybe the dead. You were on the premises. Whether or not that was merely coincidence yes, to be seen. We've got to do our due diligence here. Hi, Thumpkiss. Welcome to the stream. We was just chaperoning them. We knew they were looking for trouble, and we figured if we were there, we could help them avoid the most of it. Oh, sure, sure. Good to watch out for younger folks. Could have kept them out of the mines, though, if you were supposed to be looking after them. Teens can be difficult, I understand. I'm a father of two teen girls myself. The things they get away with. All this is to say from your own house, You should do your best to stay out of trouble. There's plenty to do around here that isn't spelunking around unstable minds. I'd suggest you try and have an uneventful week. The only place I want to see your face again is the funeral on Sunday. God rest Pearl land. That yeah, wasn't the circumstantial. They haven't. They haven't arrested you. <laughs> what is this? God rest her. All righty then. Have a good one, Sylvester. I'm sure you blew up the mines. That's why they collapsed. Deputy Derrickson tips his hat to you. The two officers wander back towards the mine, Derrickson taking notes as they examine the scene. I wonder who Sylvester would try to romance. Oh, wait, I think I have a good idea. It would be somebody later, probably. You make your way towards Stella and Kanika. I just can't believe it. I left them behind in there to go get help. Is it my fault, Neeks? Stella, no, you did your best. It's not your fault. Oh, hey, guess the cops are done with you? What, are they going to take you in for being present at an accident? Sorry if they gave you a hard time. Small town cops, you know? Always blame everything on drifters. Even acts of God, I guess. Excellent. You didn't get arrested. Now, come on. Let's get back to the estate. I'd like to get some rest before I have to deal with the fallout of everything that happened tonight. Yeah, Brandon is the best. Brandon, you're amazing. Yeah. Mega talented. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Sylvester? Stella is tired. Excuse me. I just stopped trying to... Wait, what was that? Oh. 
Um, um, yeah. What? Oh, it's her just being like, stop. Like, Stella's immediately trying to make, make new plans. Tapas is unhappy. Just stop about trying it. to get my cousin killed, Stella. That makes sense. Yeah. Come on, let's go. I've read our game too much. Yeah. Nothing makes sense anywhere. Tapatha starts walking to her car, pulling you by your arm. I could walk to the car on my own. <laughs> Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. <coughs> you try to keep an eye on the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk behind the tree line. So you were dating Sam Wayne. What happened to him? Excuse me? I'm not dating anybody. I don't even know a Sam Wayne. Street smart. Tabitha is clearly lying to you. She knows a Sam Wayne. Whoever's been telling you this is clearly trying to spread rumors to hurt my character. Who said that? I want names. <laughs> Tabitha, he's been following the following one, right? Or Tabitha, he's been following me. Why? How should I know? I don't know what people have told you, but I'm sure it's all bullshit. I don't involve myself with their lives. Who do you who did you talk to? Some of my men? And you think they're just gonna be honest with a random stranger? You're more naive than I thought. Oh, and if you don't want to be followed by some weirdo, just stay home. Do you think Becca and Alexis are okay? We won't know for days at the earliest. Their parents should have kept tighter reins on them. I never got into any trouble like this when I was a teen, and I have Pearl Ann to thank for it. Hated it at the time, but that strictness paid off. Ugh, what am I telling you this for? What were we bonded? I guess, sure. <gasps> you gonna be saucy? No. You're right. There's a lot of adults who should have done a better time tonight. My muscles should have picked those kids up sooner. <laughs> exactly. People who aren't ready to be parents shouldn't be parents. And clearly there are some parents who aren't ready. Take Oscar. Oh, she's so fucking mean here. There are tons of people more qualified to be parents who can't even conceive, and here he is having kids at 18, having a kid at 19, and clearly letting her do just whatever the hell she wants. It's not fair. Do you want kids? Seems like that struck a nerve. Lots of people want kids. Why do you treat Stella like that? You and me two used to be friends? It was a different time in my life. I just wish she'd get that. We're not in high school anymore. I'm a different person than whoever she thinks she knows. Sorry about today. Tabitha doesn't answer. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said I was sorry. Did you hear me? I said I was sorry. At least you called. Yeah, she's so mean. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tapatha slink back into silence. I think that's probably the meanest thing that she says in the entire game. IMO. The entire game. So, so far. far! You once again cross the threshold into the estate, the musty stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with its undertones of mildew and wood rot. Well, this day was a lot more stressful than it needed to be. I'm sure it's the precursor to a horrif horrifically stressful week. I'm going to bed. I suggest you do the same. Thinking again about the therapist TLC. <laughs> Thanks for calling me about those kids, by the way. It was unexpected. And for waiting for me. I appreciated it. I'll see you in the morning. Zoom. Tabitha turns and makes her way up the stairs, her posture defeated. Turn in. You head up to your room to turn in. You collapse in Tabitha's dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the Shaw Mine, you barely even notice the dust. Uh, Max, that was, that was a joke. There's no therapist DLC. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody goes out of beach. Yeah, and, beach and episode. They all have a therapist just for Good them. luck finding what canonical moment it's, it fits in the story. Your phone buzzes on the table. Y'all, these are those things, right? Can you guess well, guys. of a pair of digitalings by the side of the road? I saw them again, too. 
another picture, this time of them staring from a tree. WTF. These things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there's more to them being here than the mine collapse. No way I'm sleeping tonight. You think about looking out the guest room window, but at this point, you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off, replaced by a creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes, even as you stare down at the ominous pictures on your phone. If it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you would almost feel comfortable as you settle in between the covers, your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. <laughs> Sorry, chat funny. When you close your... Oh, I was laughing just as these kids popped up. <laughs> anyway, funny. when you close your eyes, your thoughts drift to Alexis and Becca, terrified and alone, if not already dead. If not already dead. <laughs> your arms feel heavy. Mom, spaghetti. Your arms shoot back arms open. Spaghetti. Your eyes shoot back open. Your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Just the cat. It's always just the cat. <laughs> it's nice to see another living being, even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat. The comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease, and you finally slip into a deep sleep. That's how Spoons looks when people come over now, after the pandemic, like, the being able to have people over. is. She just looks like this, like, all the time. She's sleeping. I'm like, what happened to you? Three years without seeing people. <laughs> now she just looks mad all the time. Different versions of tracks. There will be no perfect ending to this game. Yes. All endings will have some amount of misery. Everything is pain. This is our only Werner Herzog endings to Scarlet Hollows. Yes. This is the end of episode two. Episode three awaits. Proceed if you dare. Okay, I need to go to the bathroom and stretch my legs for a second Brief and break. tweet. That oh, yeah. The next episode is starting. Episode two. It's is okay. That's what. Done. Um, fan fiction the is for. The marathon live stream continues. With Does Tabitha's ice cream three. have nuts? Or is it just I banana and chocolate? Know. It's just banana and chocolate. No nuts. four or five hours before. <laughs> I, I love cake. Give me sour candy and salted salt vinegar on. chips. Oh, here's my phone. the easiest way to do it, right? Yeah. Switch this account. <laughs> you pet Fru-Fru. Her fur is poisoned. You die instantly. Yeah, until now, the only episode without loss in my build of intellectual talk to animals is the third one. It only has emotional damage. <laughs> yeah, the mouse and the mac and cheese is gonna have fun. It's gonna be a while, but... Proceed, if you that if you if you dare. Oh wait, while well, you do this, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Yeah, you go bathroom first. I entertain. Oh, um, I think Abby Abby was implying a yet to be met romance option. Maybe Reese's mom.
to, uh, sorry, I didn't confirm Reese's mom as a romance option. Mm-hmm. How did you learn the coding for this game? Uh, as I went, but I also took three years of computer science way back in high school, so I had, like, a foundation to work with. Oh, uh, there actually, yeah, there was not a name for who Sylvester would romance. Not yet. He's going for the milk, Sylvester. <laughs> So, barring that, I, so I, glad I think Sylvester is, is in for coming. the big titty goth GF. Yeah, like if Sylvester, I feel like Sylvester would want desperately to be able to win over Kanika, but here's the thing. Tab, if you're simping for Tabitha, no, 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 it's gonna no, 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 no. be hard. I've been playing it smart. You have been playing Kanika yeah. still likes Sylvester, I guarantee That's it. Good. Are there any characters you ship together, excluding Stabby? I she ship... has a light Kanika Reese ship. Yeah, right? I, I ship Reese Kanika. I think that would be really, really sweet and cute. I think it would be really nice. I think that they would get along. I feel like she would be able to understand him. And he I would ship just Wayne be so and, happy that someone MC. was like nice to him. And also he, I think, would really like hanging out with Kanika all the time. Wayne MC ship. Oh yeah. That's my biggest. Wayne MC. Uh Kanika Reese. And I think those are the only ones. Five hours, 20 minutes in. Oh, oh, I got an RT now that we're doing it. Kanice, oh, yeah. that's such a good Kanice. ship name. Ranika. I also ship Wayne and myself. We love Wayne, says Chad. <laughs> I ship Dustin, every <laughs> other character. He hangs out at everybody's little shoulders. Ooh. Ooh that's fun. <laughs> I'm glad it's given you some uh, uh, new Wayne, since talking, he's protecting. Yeah, he's just looking out for you. He just wants to make sure you're not in danger. Okay, let me know when you're ready, Abby. Okay, I have RT'd. Let us proceed. Let us begin. You don't need a recap. I know what happened. You know what happened. Oh, the characters that didn't make it. No. Sunshine filters in through the dusty windows of the estate as your eyes flit open. Okay, though, to be fair, there was a gas station attempted. Ah! Uh, he was replaced by Bus Guy. Yeah. Who is better. He's so much better. Just better version. Yep. Wayne has the secret Sigma male trait. It's true. <laughs> you take off the veil, he has it on because his it's chin is so powerful that he has to cover it up. Yeah, everyone would throw themselves at him if not. JK, they're throwing themselves at each other anyway. Rain. Oh, is that Reese Wayne? Oh! Oh, me, oh my. <laughs> you managed to survive a second night in the town of Scarlet Hollow. Will bus guy ever show up again? Maybe. Do you have to take the bus out of town? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe he dies in the episode three bus accident. There is an episode three bus accident. 
As you pull yourself out of bed, you can feel the soot and grime of the Shaw mine still stuck to your skin. Oh, yeah, we're not going to be a gremlin. We're, we're, we're street smart. We know. We know that not showering would be gross. Aw, it's so cute, Andrew Libanair says. When I was playing, I got a little headcanon that Wayne and MC knew each other in a past life, and that's why he wants to protect them. Nice. You step into the guest bathroom and into the shower. The water is hot and, surprisingly enough, clean. As steam fills your lungs and soot washes down the drain, you... Everybody thinks about someone special. Specifically, you think about... Kanika? I think we're gonna think about Kanika. Nice. It's kind of big <laughs> You think about Kanika, the resident goth, and one of the most level-headed and fashionable people in town. Uh, fashionable because of the, the large tracts of land. <laughs> bus guy ditch like bus guy mind collapse. Oh, all of these chips. You're done here. You turn off the faucet and dry yourself off. Time to start your day. Check Let's... out the faucet. Ah, there are two of them now. Please get out of my dresser. Against your better judgment, you reach out to the opossums, hand outstretched. Oh, well, it was worth a shot. Maybe now they'll leave your dresser and return to nature where they belong. Thank you, Ayo Saki. I love I love dialogue options where it's like there's two versions and it, of the exact same thing, but it's clearly completely different contexts. Mm -hmm. Let's leave. Now we're texting everyone. You pull out your phone and open up your group chat with Stella and Kanika. <laughs> you send a photo of a pain old man. It'll probably be a bit before you get a response. You pull out your phone to text Kanika. Tony is on a mission. You send her a photo of an exhausted Ben Affleck. It'll probably be a bit before you get a response. You pull out your phone to text Stella. You send a photo of a creepy mascot in a grungy basement. It'll probably be a bit before you get a response. You've done everything you've wanted to do up here. It's time to start your day. You enter the kitchen to find your cousin in the midst of devouring a pint of banana chocolate chunk. She isn't alone. Frufru glares at you from her usual spot on the counter as a red-headed woman busies herself trying to tidy as best she can. Aw, oh, that's fun, Alec. Thank you, Griffin. I like those tracks a lot. Yeah. Don't worry, there's going to be many more variants of it. Yeah. Brandon cooked us up, like, oh, a so lot. I cannot wait. We won't be using all of them, but I think we're, we'll have, like, five or six in spread. total, I think. Tabitha's yeah. eyes dart to the corner of the room, almost as if she's ashamed of being caught in the act of stress-eating ice cream for breakfast. You hold out your boiled peanuts as an offering to the woman in the kitchen. Yeah, Jane, Jane is working on the dishes. She just got here. And so I don't have to change the background. Yay! Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for the generous offer, sweetie, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass. I had a really bad experience with boiled peanuts once in the summer of, oh, 17? Wait, let me think. 16? No, it was definitely 17. Anyways, my husband and Tulip and I were on this road trip to blow, Blowing Rock and... Sylvester, where did you even get those things? Hey, I'm Sylvester. Good morning. I'm Janie. Just here to do my little weekly cleaning. Whatever cleaning Miss Tabitha will let me do, at least. I could have this place looking brand new, you know. Don't go making any big renovations or moving anything around. I like knowing where my stuff is. Okie doke. It's so nice to finally meet you, Sylvester. I mean, I guess I did meet you on Monday when you popped into the diner. Janie. But seeing someone somewhere and meeting them face to face are two completely different things, I suppose. I, I. All I'm trying to say is that it's wonderful to finally actually meet you, and I am so happy part of my family is here to keep Miss Tabitha with everything. Yeah. Janie! Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Tabitha. Am I being too much again? Tabitha grumbles in acknowledgement. Oh, we have an ice cream for breakfast? I'll have no sass from you today. Two kids were buried in a mine collapse on my property. So I'm under a lot of stress right now, in case you hadn't put that together. And there is no we here. This stuff is way too hard to get a hold of for me to share. Tabitha takes one last spoonful of ice cream, then discards the empty container, returning to you with her trademark scowl. Let's get going. I've got an errand to run into town. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. 
the math here. 2022. Tulip was young. Yeah, like a, yeah. a wee near yes. infant. But still alive. <laughs> I was just Tulip's for like, a what, second. Tulip's like seven or something? Wait, yeah, she's like seven or something. Yeah. Baby, st- not baby, but not ten. <laughs> Let's get going. I've got an errand to run in town, and every time I've left you here alone, something terrible's wound up happening. So you're coming with me. We'll be out of there in a couple minutes. I feel like shit from last night, and I still have to wrap up my morning routine. Look, I get it, but there's a lot on my plate today, and if I want to spend some time with you before making... And I want to spend some time with you before things start piling on. Sorry. I, it's work. It's okay. We've been going for five and a half hours. I already waited long enough for you to get up. Janie, lock up when you leave, please. And don't go rearranging anything. I'll know. As you're ready to leave, Janie approaches from the far side of the kitchen. Tabitha remains between the two of you, impatiently tapping her foot. Oh, Sylvester, before you go, I heard about what happened last night. I mean, I heard about it before Miss Tabitha mentioned it just now, and then I heard it again. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry you got caught up in all that. I'll be praying for those poor kids. I can't imagine how scared they must be. I'd love to chat, but I'd hate to interrupt your work. I'm in town for another few days, though, if you've got time. Oh, our magic outfits? Yeah, it was an accident. We just have all the same clothes. It was intentional. I copied you. <laughs> of course, feel free to swing by the church any old time. Daniel and I are always there. Except when I'm working, of course. But Daniel is usually there regardless. Right, let's, let's go. go. Bye, Bye Janie. Danny. Be safe out there, you two. Ain't you that the Tab- tricky bit? Yeah, you and Tabitha walk through the doors of the estate and into her car. We got it all. The ride to town is uneventful. Your cousin, unsurprisingly, more focused on the road than on making conversation. All right, we're just popping into the general store for a few minutes. What are we doing at the general? Oh, yes, we're street smart. <gasps> picking up tea from Sybil. Oh, I gotcha. We're picking up tea. Yeah, I'm picking up tea. Why are you saying it all weird? Tea is slang for drugs here. Yeah, I get what you're putting down. Nah, it's okay, Tabitha. You can tell me if Sybil's your dealer. Did you think I was taking you with you, taking you with me to buy drugs? I'm picking up normal tea for drinking. Yeah, do it. Sure you are. You wink at your cousin. Her face tightens and into an all too familiar scowl. Yeah, after everything that's happened the past couple days. Uh, it's nice to just go on an errand. Exactly. You and Tabitha turn as the door to the general store bursts open. A flustered Kanika exits, shouting behind her. Fine, okay. Keep coddling him. Keep letting him get away with stuff you never would have let me so much as think about. I'm sick of carrying this family. Kanika storms off, the door slowly drifting shut behind her. Ugh, other people in their drama more people kept things to themselves, they'd be a lot happier. True strength is not being afraid to show when you're struggling. Yeah, true strength comes from being able to crush your emotions into a tiny ball. You can't get stronger if you don't... Oh, oh there's so the many! Options. Okay. Yeah, we know Tabitha. We know Tabitha would like this one. Exactly. The only people who think it's admirable to show a soft underbelly are those who have been lucky enough to not wind up with a dagger in their heart. One day that luck inevitably runs out, Sylvester. We're burning daylight. Come on already. The bells of the general store chime as you cross the threshold. The smells of old wood and steamy herbal tea flood your senses, making you feel instantly at home. Who hurt you, Tabitha? Everyone. (laughs) Good morning, you two. Hope you're doing well after last night's activities. Morning. Is the new blend ready? Of course. Sylvester, if you'd like to keep Miles company, Tabitha and I will just be a minute. I can't believe you actually tried to tell me you weren't here to buy drugs. I... Oh, Shifo certainly is. Didn't you know that there's no better place in Scarlet Hollow to stock up on the devil's lettuce than my little old tea shop? What? I am not some kind of stoner. Ugh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Think think what you will. I'm just pulling your leg, dear. Sybil motions for Tabitha to follow, and they both disappear into the tea room, closing the door behind them with a tinkling of bells. Yeah, I, I love that. Good job, Tony. 
You find a subtle spot near the door and listen in. The walls to the tea room are surprisingly thick, and you can only make out snippets of the conversation. I know it. Longer, short notice. Art, easy to come by. Is there enough? Just fine. Make sure this is all. <laughs> Not keeping it. You only have one. I'm playing up times. Your listening session is halted as the tingling of bells announces another patron. It's only helpful if you have keen eye and street smart. Or in this case, another two patrons. Well! Wait, is that well? <laughs> Are you going to be both of them? Powerful build. Yeah, of course. You've never seen the man beside Duke before, but whoever he is, he's big. Powerful build. <laughs> yeah. Recognize powerful build. If it ain't Sylvester, oh, this is Miss Scarlet's cousin. He was there still the night in the woods. Spin the accent wheels. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. My name's Bo. I'm Duke's boy. Perfect. Hope you've been fired better since all that. Eclipses. How's Betty doing? Oh, she's hanging in there. Too bad there's no vet in town anymore. Not that I'm certain a vet could do her much good. We got her comfortable, at least. Bobby face. We got her set up in a closet with a heat lamp. Been trying to feed her all her favorite food, strangled eggs and whatnot. But she hasn't been too long to sleep. At least she's not out in them woods. Have you been? You hanging in there? <clears throat> oh my god, the switching is so hard. <laughs> well, I can't complain. Now that we know what's been getting at the chickens, them things won't s as much as step foot on my property. Just Not with Bo and me watching the perimeter with our shotguns at the ready. We even set up the missus up with his pistol. Good thing we was watching. Nearly caught Dooley is trying to make off with Big Betty. It's if he could have carried off a nearly 2,000 pound pumpkin on his own. I'd almost love to see him try. It's not like we'll be taking her to the state fair anyway. Now all she's good for is making the world's largest pumpkin pie. I don't think Mama has a tin big enough for a big better size pie than it. Those good lines. Big Betty is a Big Betty is a pumpkin? Oh man, it's I too know. hard to switch. <laughs> As somebody's had chickens for several years, the pretty stuff gets me at the fields. Chickens, they are pets. Sure is. Probably would have taken home at least a few ribbons at the fair this year. Maybe even a world record if we were lucky. Oh, well, my hands are more important. We'll just have to grow an even bigger one next year, David. Land's been good to us. We should sure grow them a bit big out on the Callaway farm. Who's Julius? Julius Tremaine. He practically spits the name. Some cousin, however many times removed. Though I have ever claim him as kin. He owns the farm next to ours, so he doesn't seem to have a good grasp on whose property is whose. Thinks he owns a half all the land. Always sneaking around and taking vegetables we planted. Yes, Julius does support you and see. <laughs> the way he tells it, we're the ones stealing from him, saying he's the one putting seeds in the ground. Yeah, I'm putting a UNC flag <laughs> outside Julius's house. He's a miserable old cuss, and he knows it. Seeing vegetables growing up other folks' hard labor is probably the only joy he has in life. Things have only gotten worse. I need to hear whispers about what happened at the mines last night. So sorry to hear about those young ladies. Scarlet Hollow ain't so safe this week, we'll see. Excellent work, by the way. Acting three whole parts. Have you seen any of those creatures around your farm? Yeah, we saw a few of them things. They got scarred off before I could start shooting. Okay, hold on. Scarred off! Let me just... Right to the bugs panel. Nasty little buggers. We've all been losing sleep, making sure we can keep an eye on things. It's even rubbing off on the hands. None of the little ladies have been laying this week. You know, Daddy, I bet some big mastiff can keep them things away. This seems like just the kind of job for a guard dog. Hey, don't you start again. We ain't getting a dog. I got enough mouths to feed. And as much as you say you'll take responsibility, I know it'd just be me cleaning up after it. Besides... I don't have much faith those things would be stopped by a dog. I saw more than a few of them. Next. 
Those things we saw on Monday are apparently called Ditchlings. They're supposed to be a bad omen. Ditchlings? Sounds like some old oh. folk tale. <laughs> huh? Oh, that was Bo. Oh, Ooh, sorry. Cool. I suppose that suits him. As for being an omen, I believe that too. But I suppose there's not much to be done if they're forewarned in some kind of disaster. That's looking out for me and mine. Still, I appreciate you telling me, Sylvester. Bo is older than the main cast. Yeah, it's like He's maybe 30 boy. Nice seeing you, Duke. We best get on with our shopping. Can't spend too long away from the farm with those little chests running around. Can't leave Mama all by herself up there for very long. You have a good one. Hope Scarlet Hollow treats you better from now on. It was nice meeting you, Sylvester. And please tell Miss Scarlet I'm sorry about her mama. Yay. Big! You did it! Shuffle Big. off into the aisles. Tabitha, Tabitha and Sybil are still, still in the tea room. room. Your phone buzzes. Oh my god, hey, I overslept. Still gotta make myself breakfast. Meet library after and figure out plan? And then it buzzes again. Stella sends you back an image of an exhausted alien. Hey again, lol, if you want to come over for breakfast, but not hate it. And then it buzzes yet again. Somebody was busy this morning. Sliding into the DMs, are we? Winky, Winky face. face. Oh, this is you. If you want to hang out before the library thing, it's parked in the abandoned lot by the gas station. It's hard to miss. And that's that. You can't possibly get any more texts. This is Isaacs from the mine. You gave me your number yesterday. I'm out behind the diner if you want to talk. You have plenty of time before dinner at Reese's house. Well, yeah, you probably have time to slip off and hear what Isaacs has to say before Tabitha even knows that you're gone. You hold the bells on the door at the general store, quieting them while you make a silent exit. You find Isaacs smoking out by the dumpsters behind Winnie's diner. Thought you weren't going to show. Ooh, ah! Finally. Mr. X. Turn around and leave without saying a single word. <laughs> Here I am. Listen. Listen, I don't ever... <laughs> oh, that's you. Wait. Oh. That's wrong. Listen, I don't have a lot of time to talk, okay, especially with you. On, hold on. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, okay. I put two and two together. I know you're related to the boss, and the other guys are all riled up. They're talking action. If they saw me out here with you, they'd think I was some kind of scab. But none of them will listen to me, especially now. They've all, all got bigger things to worry about than a single missing miner. I haven't forgotten about him, though. Anything you want to know, just ask. What kind of action are people talking? Can I get some craps in? <laughs> Isaacs glances around nervously. They're talking about a strike. But you didn't hear it from me. So, <laughs> Tabitha was dating an employee. Yeah, they're just bros. Yeah, why is that? Bros why why is that? Really care about too. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Isaine. Isaine. <laughs> yeah, wasn't the first time either. I knew some of the other fellas she dated. They said she was the coldest woman they'd ever met. Had a habit of dropping on a few. Sorry, had a habit of dropping them a few months in before picking up the next poor son of a bitch who fell for her wiles. Guess us cold boys are pretty desperate. Especially when a woman of means like that approaches you. You never know if you're going to be the one who lucks out and locks down that old family wealth. Guess Wayne wasn't lucky. Wayne's not missing, though. I keep running into him. We keep getting into tussles. 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 But why wouldn't he come tell me he's all right? Where's he staying? Why is he hiding from everybody? It just doesn't sound like him. I'm not sure the man you think is Wayne is really him. It's all, uh, goopy now. I think there's something wrong with him. Something medical. Goopy? Jesus, I hope he's getting treatment. Maybe that's why he's been distant. Why would he be following me, though? Damned if I know. I didn't even know you existed until yesterday. I suppose Tabitha could have told him about you, and maybe he's trying to get someone close to his ex. Seems like a pathetic move to me, but relationships change people. Maybe even a man like Wayne could be broken like by someone like her. 
anything happen to him at the mines? Find any weird stuff? Uncover anything that wasn't meant to be uncovered? No, I, I don't think so. The few shifts he was picking up were all above ground, mostly operating machinery. Pretty cushy stuff, to be honest. Do you think Tabs that did something to him? Yes, I do. That, or maybe Pearl Ann. I don't know what it would be, but something happened up at that house. The week it went down, everyone was so up in arms about Miss Pearl Ann's death, almost nobody cared about the fact that some transplant miner had gone missing. Do you know how Pearl Ann died? Heard it was natural causes, died in her sleep. She was old and a smoker. Figured her lungs finally gave up on her. What was he like? He was a lighthearted kind of guy, always joking around on the job. Amazing fellow to grab beers with. Not keen on doing hard work, so it wasn't too strange when he barely picked up any shifts once that relationship started. I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm sure he saw her as a bit of a meal ticket, so maybe he wasn't too smart, but he was a good friend. Closest one I had. Isaac sighs, taking one last drag of his cigarette. I appreciate you coming by to talk. Can't say I'm happy with what you've told me, but I'm glad somebody is looking into this. Seems like everybody else was perfectly happy to sweep it under the rug. Isaacs tosses his cigarette butt. Goes without saying that you better not go telling anyone we talked. And if you see him, or whoever is pretending to be him, tell his buddy tell him his buddy is worried about him, alright? Isaacs heads back inside, and you find yourself alone again. Romantic cohabitation. Okay, okay. Important decision. Yeah. Do we do we snitch? If we snitch, like... we can't hang out with Tabitha. Okay. We but want to every, hang out but with Tabitha, Most right? people have done the Tabitha hangout. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I wonder like... if we snitch and hang out with Kanika. Try and get that would the, be the BTGF. Try to get them both. Yeah, get them both. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Sure. Yeah. Though I do love the track that plays in the Tabitha scene. But most people have played through it, so. Hmm... Hmm. Right? We got to, right? I I think Don't narc. A lot of people. Yeah, let's go back. All right. Let's go back. All right. And I think we can tell her it's there. Okay, okay. You know, it's better to, this person to say these things in person. know our game better than this. You make it to the entrance of the general store just as a furious Tabitha leaves. Oh, there you are. I thought you'd run off again. What were you doing? What? Oh, no. Oh, it's got to be a bug. Yeah, bug. Ugh, run okay. it off again? Okay, but... Yeah. I take that back, actually. This was very expected. I... Oh, man. Not if... yeah. Abby, Abby, it's fine. Oh, no, that is fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't stress about, like, a little thing. Yeah. yeah. This is tough. Okay. I'll let you choose, so I don't have to. Your miners are about to strike. You're welcome. Are you serious? On top of everything else I have to deal with? Oh, wet club. Wet club. Oh. Wet club. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. Yeah. This is a fresh ep. And, a, a, and a rarely rare taken path. path. Yeah. A I don't even know path. if we had tested this ourselves that much. I don't know. My sources are confidential. If you want good info, they'll stay that way. Good. Fine, fine. I love the line of, I saw a cat. I wanted to pet it. <laughs> Thank you for telling me, Sylvester. It's good to know your loyalty lies with your family. This is going to be hell, but at least now I know it's coming. I can start looking into temporary workers tonight. Maybe some negotiators. I was hoping we'd get to spend a little time together this morning, but I have to stay ahead of this. I'll see you after work. Stay out of trouble. Your cousin rushes off to her car, and you're once again, oh, um, once more okay. alone with the rest of your day ahead of you. You're going to remember all of these. Don't worry about it. Go after Kanika. Yeah, I'm sure Tony's going to like fix it right after. Oh. You follow the directions Kanika texted you, and soon find yourself in a disused parking lot hidden behind the shuttered shops on Main Street. She's sitting alone in the back of her van. But she notices you, notices you lurking on the edge of the parking lot and waves, her troubled expression brightening into a smile. 
Hey, you made it. Hop on in. So Paris is a weird place to hang out. I'm uh, taking a mental health day. Kind of needed some space from the store. Plus, I feel like ass. I'm exhausted. A little out of it. Top of the search engine, the Vivica's monster's still operating. Must have inhaled too much coal dust last night. Well, you look great. You're trying to lay down the charm on me. Maybe it's working. Keep it up and see. See? It's We're street We're smart. Street fields. smart can be the ultimate weasel. <laughs> Ugh, do you think you're contagious? <laughs> Don't click that one. Ah, what's going on with you and your folks? She sighs. You sure you want me to get into it? I don't want to dump all that drama on you. Lay it on me. I'm a fiend for dramas. <laughs> well, I'm happy to provide. Especially since you were there last night. You really, uh, Last year it. we hung out with Kenny too. Uh, yeah. I, I think I like that she is show. the most underrated love interest in our game so I far. I like her. Um, coming out of something like that unscathed and knowing not everyone was so lucky. There's no way to really imagine how that feels until it's happened to you. So after everything that happened, I had to deal with my brother. It really made me feel like I was the bad guy, especially once we got home. It's like what happened to those girls was my fault. My mom didn't help. She never does. She always takes a side, saying it's young and allowed to make mistakes. Mistakes I could never dream of getting away with. If we told her what happened, she just said the same shit she always does about family and getting along and sent us to bed with tea. Her favorite method of conflict resolution. As if a little hot leaf water ever really helped anybody. Your fault! That's rich! Right? I kind of boiled over this morning, though. She wound up blaming me for letting Miles sneak off into the mine, saying I'd be... That if I'd been working like I was supposed to, he wouldn't have gotten into trouble. Like, I'm supposed to be in charge of a sullen teenager every second of the day. While working. It's not like I don't care. I'm always stressing out about that kid or the store or the million other th little things I'm supposed to deal with. None of this should be on me. These are the best years of my life, and I'm wasting them in this dying town, keeping a store afloat while my mom just messes around with her little herbs or whatever. I made it out of here, damn it. I'd gotten into grad school. I was good at it. I was going to graduate with honors and everything. But Dad died, and I came back to the funeral, and I had to stick around just to help Mom sort out a few things. First it was a month, then two, and now here I am, over a year later, and those few things became my life. I don't want to be this person. If I could, I'd just drive this van all the way to the coast, lie down on the beach, and never come back. Sounds like your family's holding you back on purpose. Like they're scared that if you leave, you'll never come back and they'll crumble without you. You should just leave right now. You should take me with you. Maybe tomorrow. Sal made all those ghost hunting plans. I can't just skip out on her like that. But yeah. Uh, bye, Akmo. Bye. Thank you so much for being here. But yeah, tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. And yeah, you can come with. God, and of course I feel like an asshole for talking about all this now, the morning after a mine collapse, but I guess that's what pushed all this over the edge. Nothing like a major disaster to make you question the direction your life has taken, right? I wouldn't have met you if you hadn't stuck around. It's not all bad. You're right. I guess some good things can come from messed up situations. I've already met you. More reason for us to leave tomorrow, I guess. Alright, though, why tomorrow? Be serious about getting out of here. It should be today. Can't let Stella down like that. Before you say anything, this is different than the stuff with my family. I like Stella. You know, it sounds like the mine is about to strike. Long time coming. Good for them. Hope they take your cousin to the cleaner. Now you do it after last night, aside from the family stuff. Not great if you couldn't tell by now. At least I was able to sleep once the adrenaline wore off, even if I feel like I barely got any rest at all. Now I've just got a raging headache. Ugh, I hope I'm not coming down with something. Before things got heated with my folks, Mom gave me some more of this tea that's supposedly good for, I don't know, recovery, rejuvenation. It must have been caffeinated or something because it did not help me fall asleep. But it's kind of helping with the headache and... At least it tastes good. What about you? Normal. Normal. 
sure about that. I don't know. Most people who are feeling normal say it quite like that, but hey, at least you seem to be holding it together. We'll make sure to have a chill one today. We'll just hang out with friends and have some fun trying to look for ghosts that don't exist. Or maybe don't exist. Not gonna lie, I'm starting to question my fundamental understanding of how the world works. You know, you and my cousin don't seem to get along very well. It's putting it lightly, but yeah. Sometimes you don't get along with people. If you have to ask, I think she's a repugnant, selfish human being to her core. And she's a big jerk, too. You know she respects you, right? She told me so herself. She told me not to tell you, so you know she meant it. That's cute. I didn't think it was possible for me to think any less of her. Did, did she do something to you? It seems personal. Besides her general bad attitude, no, she hasn't necessarily done anything to me. But her mom tried to buy the general store out from under my dad more times than he could count. She's an absolute snake of a woman, and the apple didn't far fall, fall far from the tree, judging by how Tabitha treats the miners. If I weren't here, I'm sure the store would already belong to the Scarlets. There's no way my mom or Miles would have the backbone to stand up to her. Just another way this town manages to keep its nasty little hooks in me. Wouldn't her buying the general store be your ticket out of here, though? It's not that simple. My dad worked so hard to keep that store out of the Scarlet's hands. He knew as soon as Pearl Ann got it, she'd have a stranglehold on housing, work, and supplies for the miners. Next thing you know, your town has lost a hundred years of progress and you're back to the era of company towns. If I left, it would be a slap in the face to everything my family has worked towards since my grandfather's time. sucks that I'm the only one in the family who cares about that anymore, but I guess that's life. Crazy to think I might just leave it all for the vultures. She and Stella seem like they're close. At least they used to be. Yeah, I don't know what Stella saw in her. We got pretty close in high school. I was taking a lot of online AP classes, so it wasn't... So I wasn't around like I used to be. Maybe it's my fault they wound up hanging out so much. Seemed like they were always together, but by the time I got back to town, they didn't seem to be talking anymore. I've really got the whole picture of what happened there, but thank God it meant I didn't have to see that woman all the time. Maybe Stella brought out a better side of her. Maybe, but whatever side she might have seen, I sure as hell haven't seen it. I can't put my finger on why, but I really like her. It's like I need her validation. <laughs> For real? She must be on her on good behavior. Or maybe you're not as cool as I thought. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, go subject tonight, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I'm still here, right? I can't wait to find whatever leaky pipe or slanted floor or bad insulation made it seem like the place was haunted. Like a puzzle, you know? What if ghosts are just a red herring? What if all this is actually because of aliens? I somehow doubt that. I really do wonder what, uh, what's going on in there, though. Oscar's always struck me as such a rational guy. Seems like it'd take a lot to rile him up like this. Like, if you think there's a ghost in that house, there's gotta be something really messed up with the place. Hopefully it's safe and there isn't a carbon monoxide leak or anything like that. Oscar's smart, though. He wouldn't make that mistake. We don't need to talk about Reese. Let's share a quiet moment. See Reese soon enough. A soft breeze blows across the lot as you and Kanika share a quiet moment. Both your phones buzz in unison. You reach for them at the same time. Almost forgot it's Mayor Jimmy yeah, Day! We have a sprite for her looking at her phone. I have to add that in. I'm adding it to the Bugs channel. Good excuse to head over to the library. We should check in with Oscar and Rosalina. Yes, we should. Meet y'all there in half an hour. Wow, I totally blanked on the Mayor Jimmy thing. It's almost like we just went through a dramatic event or something and I'm not on top of my schedule. But Stella's right. This gives us a chance to meet up with Oscar. And Mayor Jimmy's awful cute. But it's he as cute as me. Is he as cute as me? It's a different kind of cute. 
I don't think you have to worry about him as a potential competition if that's what you were getting at. Anyways, we'll chill with Mayor Jimmy, go to races for dinner. By the way, then, with Kanika, if she gets really stumbly when you flirt with her, that means she really likes you. Yeah, I think most of like the stumbliness is for the hot trick so far. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's she really likes hot trick. <laughs> and thanks for letting me vent earlier. It helps. Shall we? I mean, most people really like hot people. Most because you haven't had really too many opportunities for actual And you know, people. one of the fun things about making a game like this is different people find different characters more romancy. Mm -hmm. I'm good at words. I'm great at words. <laughs> you and Kaniko make your way to the library. It's busier than usual, and a small crowd has formed in a corner of the main foyer. 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 Yes, the whole gang's here. I've been waiting to introduce Sylvester to the mayor for, like, the entire time I've known him. It'll be worth it. Trust us. All right, shall we? He's a dog. You can tell this dog is the mayor from his little sash and his fancy top hat. There's a regal air about him, almost as if he knows the position of authority he's been elected to. You haven't met the serious man by his side, but you have to assume that he's the mayor's handler. The mayor's little nose starts twitching as you approach. His doggy eyes shine with a curious intensity. He knows you have something. Finally, it's time to dispose of my faithful companion. You hold out your now slightly rancid bag of boiled peanuts. The mayor's nose twitches eagerly at the strong or their strong odor, and then he's on them in a flash, ripping through the plastic and devouring the soft-shelled legumes. Legumes. Drop it, sir. Drop it. Yeah, it's a really good seed for talk to animals. The security detail tries to tear him away, but it's too late. The peanuts are already eaten. Oh, hey, you finally got rid of those things. Thank God. Better hope those nuts settle well. The mayor gets any tummel, tummy trouble after eating your disgusting pocket peanuts. There will be hell to pay. He holds out his paw as if to shake your hand. We're doomed. Ah, uh, we're doomed. Doomed? No way. Not while we're on the case. Scarlet Hollow has lasted uh, since at least the early 1900s with a dog at its highest seat of power. So I don't think that's what'll make or break things. Maybe a dog mayor is good luck. Who knows? Gretchen squirms in Stella's arms, straining to get at Mayor Jimmy. Hey, whoa, Gretchen, calm down, old girl. You're gonna pull a muscle. Miss Richmond, I'm gonna have to ask you and your dog to step away from the mayor. I should have known better. These two have never been able to get along. Dog mayor. Stella walks off, struggling to hold Gretchen back. I'm glad people like the dog mayor. Kanika is quick to follow. It looks like everyone else is already talking to Oscar in the next room. Before you can catch up to your companions, you're intercepted by a nervous man with a cross around his neck. Street smart, whoever he is, you can feel his desperation to make a good first impression. A self-sustained and self-fulfilling prophecy. Sounds like old Gretchen and the mayor may have some unresolved issues, wouldn't you say? I'm past the day in your Oh, bye, Alec. Thank you so much bye, for Alec. being here. Have a good day. Oh, wow, Alec. Thank you so oh much gosh. for the thank other you. huge donation. Massively, so kind. massively so appreciated. Kind. I'm past the day in your I take it you're Sylvester. Everyone's been buzzing about you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm so sorry about your aunt. But I'm sure she's in a better place. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. We both know Pearl Ann's in hell. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't that bad. <laughs> Most people are good deep down inside. It's not, it's best not to speak ill of the dead. Hey, do you know anything about ghosts? Ghosts? I've never encountered one myself, but I have heard stories of folks who have been visited by their loved ones from beyond the grave. And it seems like it provides them with a sort of spiritual healing. Like their beloved relatives are watching over them, even in death. Is this about Pearl Ann? 
Or perhaps your mother? Have you been visited by her? No, Asuka's place is haunted. Oh, like a Scooby-Doo episode or something? I'm afraid I don't buy into that particular notion. It's a bit too spiritualist. Now, if it were a vision of one of his parents trying to contact him from the heaven, I could really understand that. But I simply don't believe in the vicious spirits lingering in neither heaven nor hell, jumping out of closets to scare us. I'm sure it's a perfectly reasonable explanation for whatever it is he saw. should come ghost hunting with us tonight, then. Prove it's not a haunting. Abby. The blood drains from his face as he gulps nervously. Oh, I, I promised my daughter we would watch Veggie Tales tonight, so I'm afraid I have plans. But let me know if you see anything strange. I'd love to hear your account of this Here's my card. He hands you a business card. Call me if you need me. Yeah, I would watch Veggie Tales with my religious neighbors. People in town seem to think there's something wrong with you. Ah! 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 They're calling me creepy again. <laughs> wow, why would they do that? <laughs> Some folks like to tell little jokes like that. Folks in this town sure are an interested sense of humor. But it's really funny. Anyway, I started it off and lend an ear if you ever needed to talk through your feelings about Burland's passing. Or your mother's passing, for that matter. <laughs> I don't think you're creepy. Everyone else is wrong. Thank you, Sylvester. He almost looks like he's about to cry. Talk to. I've been told an excellent listener. I'll put the same to Tabitha, of course, since she and my wife Janie are friends, but I think she's been a bit too busy to take me up on it. The song is so good! Yeah, good job, Brandon. Yeah, like, I feel like it hadn't really come together of the creepy vibe until we got the music, and it was just like, there it is. We don't even have to work Aww, at thank it. Thank you, uh, Jessica. Uh, he waves politely before heading up the stairs to join the crowd around Mayor Jimmy. Nothing to do now but catch up with your companions. You find them Daddy. already talking to Oscar deeper into the library. You sure we can't just get it over with while the sun's up? I don't know if I can handle getting scared shitless in the dark two nights in a row. I wish we could, especially since I'm not particularly excited about going back in there after dark either, but I'm pretty sure it only comes out when the sun goes down. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I'm going in until that spirit is at full power. We should uh, do like voice acting for it, but only one character gets a voice. It's yeah, Ditchy. Daniel, and it's you. Ditchy the Ditchling. <laughs> ditchy the Ditchling. I want to be sure we get the best evidence possible. This could be my one shot to get real proof of ghosts. I'm not going to waste it just because I'm impatient. Y'all are going to be the death of me. <laughs> and you're sure there's nothing we can do for Rosalina right now? I don't... Oh, that's you. I don't think so. She's been locked up in the back room all day. Hasn't been very interested in talking to anyone. I think the best we can do is stick to the plan. Ghost bust the house clean and give her a real bed to sleep in tonight. I... Hey. I just hope it's possible to get rid of this thing. It was a pretty serious ghost, uh, infestation. Is that what you call something like this? I believe it's called a haunting, but ghost infestation also sounds good. I suppose we're the ghost hunters, so we can call it whatever we want. Anyways, I'll be bringing all the ghost hunting supplies anyone could ever need, so you should be all set on preparations. The only thing y'all need to bring is an open mind. Don't worry, Asuka. We'll fix this. Heck yeah, we will. Yeah, whatever this is, we'll get to the bottom of it. Tonight. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. 
Well, if we're not doing the hunt now, I guess we should have, head over to Reese's. Absolutely. Come on, Sylvester. Time to go to bother our friend. I'm gonna get back to it. See y'all tonight. Time to go. So I finally met Pastor Daniel. Only a matter of time until he tried to pull you aside about grief counseling. When my dad died, oh, I. Hi, Grinch Gamer. Thanks so much thanks for Thanks so here. much for coming. When my dad died, I had to ban him from the general store for a week. He wouldn't stop leaving these little pamphlets at the checkout. I don't know where he finds so many. I think he just really wants people to like him, but he comes off as desperate. It's a vicious cycle. Aw, uh, when you put it like that, his whole situation is kind of sad. Even if that's the case, it doesn't mean I have to like him. Whatever his deal is goes <coughs> beyond trying too hard to get, get people to like him. The man was grinning through all of my dad's funeral. He's not normal. I don't mean that in a stigmatizing mental illness kind of way. There's just this little siren that goes off every time I see him that tells me to get away from him. That's exactly how I would describe it, too. The whole town feels the same way. Now that I think about it, you must be pretty lonely. Well, we can look for friends somewhere else. Mind if I invite Tabitha ghost hunting? Please don't. Oh my god, yes! Can you imagine how much fun that would be if she actually shows? Stella, come on. I know you think you have some sort of bond with her, but she's awful. She isn't even nice to you. You just haven't given her a chance. Maybe if she comes along tonight, the two of you will finally get along. No. no I'm inviting her. Kanika sighs as you shoot your cousin a text and invite her to the evening's ghost hunt. All right, you invited her. Let's not get into it. If we're lucky, she'll be too busy at the mines to even show. Aw, oh, don't say that, Neeks. If we're lucky, we'll have another opportunity to forge a bond of friendship between the two of you. What about inviting Avery? Oh, yeah, totally. I don't know why I hadn't thought of that. I'm sure they'd get a hoot out of it. Yeah, I can't say I mind having a calming presence with us tonight. We won't be much help to Oscar if we start jumping at our own shadows. Cool, I'll text him on the way over to Reese's. All right, shall we head out? The three of you leave the library for an early dinner at Reese's. You once again find yourself in front of Reese's house. A cold hesitation grips you as the building looms over the hilltop. Though it's only early afternoon, it feels much later. The sun already sinking behind the tall mountains that surround Scarlet Hollow. We're a little early. What if Dr. Kelly yells at us? There is no such thing as early when you're hanging out with friends. That's just extra time you get to spend together. Okay, but what if she yells at us? It's too late. The door swings open. Hey. Reese! Oh my god, dude, it's been ages. You must be Sylvester, right? <laughs> so is quiet. A good, is this a good Reese voice? Maybe a little too quiet? Oh, is it too quiet? That seems good. Oh, this is good? Yeah. You must be Sylvester, right? I've heard a lot about you. Stella's been relentless about making sure I get all the Sylvester updates. Gretchen starts yelping at Reese, straining against Stella's grip as she tries to get between them. Oh, it's quieter than the music? Oh, shoot. Should we switch spots? If we switch spots, we'll be labeled correctly. Oh, that's true. Here, I'll... Sorry. I hope that's not making too much terrible noise with the microphone there. All right. Switch. Oh, no, my headphones. It's your time. Okay. Sir. Sir, Sir. your organs? Sir. Ah. Sir. Are they here already? I knew you'd show up early, Stella. And you brought the dog. Great. Yeah, I thought she might cheer Reese up. I don't know what's gotten into her all of a sudden. The dog stays outside. But... It's okay, Stella. We can let her chill in my van for a bit. I'll run the AC and leave her some treats. You know I always have some of those EC2 dog jer jerkies stashed away. But we go everywhere together. Do you want to come in or not? Kanika nervously tugs Stella away towards her van. Well, what about you, Sylvester? You coming in? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. You follow Reese and Dr. Kelly inside. Stella and Kanika aren't far behind you. The house feels cold. 
Not only is there an odd chill in the air, but the building itself feels too sterile, uncomfortably tidy to the point where you're nervous to touch anything. If it weren't for the aroma of store-bought dinner rolls baking in the oven and the unsettling artwork hanging on the walls, you'd be half convinced you'd wandered into a real estate showing. So, how can I lend a hand? By sitting down at the table and not puttering around in my kitchen. I made sure everything was done well in advance, so the only thing left are the dinner rolls, which shouldn't be long. Yeah, we're, we're cosplaying as Dr. Kelly. Yeah, it's my favorite flannel because it's the gothest one. Then we can have a quick dinner. You can leave my house and go on about your business. I was kind of hoping to see Reese's new art. We still have time now, right? You aren't seriously considering subjecting your friends to your disaster of a room, are you? It's not that bad. You can still see the floor. Dr. Kelly raises a single questioning eyebrow. I don't mind a little mess. Yeah, I doubt it could be any worse than the way I keep my room. Yes, okay, fine. As long as you stay out of the kitchen, I don't care what you get up to. Tana Raja. Tana Rajas. Thank Rock you for the Rajas. follow. Appreciate it. Thank Welcome you so much. But yeah, have, has her name been said at some point? What was it? I forgot. It's in our Is notes. It Sue? No, no, it's not Sue. It starts with an M, I think. Anyway. Yes, okay, yeah, fine. We, she has a name. She it's has apparently a name. not important. Yeah. Cool. We'll just be downstairs. You won't even know we're here. You make your way towards the basement stairs. Her first name is Doc. <laughs> the basement is what you might expect out of a tortured artist who spends all his time confined to his studio. Discarded canvases line its edges, while trash and sketches leak out from their piles in the corners of the room, hiding the bare cement floor. Ghoulish faces coat the walls in paint, sneering out at their creator. Kelly Kelly. <laughs> Dr. My Doc work. Kelly Kelly. I did this. I was the tortured artist all along. Mom is so scary. She can be a little intense, kind of overprotective, which I guess makes sense. Is that still too quiet? Anyways, make yourselves comfortable. You'll have to forgive the mess. I've been distracted lately. I haven't been cleaning much. Hey, yeah. You need us to sneak you out of here? This place feels like a prison. Unfortunately, the prison we're dealing with here is my body, not my room. <laughs> Are you sure there's nothing we can do? Your company is plenty. It's nice to have living people down here for a change. I know we'd visit more if your mom let us. Did she tell you she turned us away yesterday? She said we couldn't even talk to you. It's a little controlling. You came by yesterday. She didn't tell me, but I was probably asleep, that's all. She didn't want to wake me up. I don't think that's her being controlling or anything. Not to cast any doubt on that, but she did say I couldn't bring you any food. She knows that's how I show my friends how much I appreciate them, and she knows I can work around all kinds of allergies and intolerances. I'm not gonna lie, it felt weird. I don't know. My body is pretty particular when it comes to food. She just prefers to have full control over what I eat, so... Yeah. Okay, maybe that does sound controlling. But it's for a good reason. If I eat the wrong thing, it could really mess me up, so... She has to regulate my food. So, is uh, Stella told you everything? Uh, it's happened the past couple of days? Oh, she's told me all about what you guys have found out there. I wish I could see some of it myself, but, you know. He gestures in futility towards the walls of the basement. Are you sure you can't just sneak out one of these nights? The doc isn't keeping me prisoner here, Stella. I'm sick. You know that. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to... There's nothing to apologize for, and I appreciate the effort. Really, I do. There's just nothing you could really rescue me from. That die has already been cast. 
But we were talking about the past couple of days, weren't we? Yeah, what about the ditchlings? Yeah, they've been coming up to my window at night. Wait, really? Is that why you texted me that they looked like something out of your nightmares? Yeah, I thought I was hallucinating. I hadn't put it together that we might have been seeing the same thing until just now. I've been sketching them, actually. Tell me what you think. As you did. He pulls out a sketchbook from one of the piles in his room. Okay, that's exactly what I saw on my way home last night. What does it mean that they've been lurking around here, though? I don't know, but I like the company. They're kind of beautiful in a sad way, if you ask me. I agree to disagree with you there. Those things are going to be stuck in my nightmares until the day I die. Uh, do you think the town is doomed? Still trying to get a beat on that. <laughs> I think everything is probably doomed at some point. But I guess that's Obvious. answering a different question. Wait, what if I, like, do an asthma for a race? Oh my god. Oh yeah, sorry, click. You can click. I read that line. Do I think the town of Scarlet Hollow is on the brink of collapse? Probably not. But it's not like I have a lot of perspective on what it's like out there. How was that? For yeah, how was that? <laughs> there could be rioting on Main Street, and if Stella or the Doc didn't tell me, I just wouldn't know. Reese Asper, I would totally look tell you if there was a riot. Would Dr. Kelly tell you, though? I mean, yeah, I'd hope so, but the point I'm trying to make is that other people are my eyes out there. I'm surprised he isn't more angsty. It's impossible to do. Just keep clicking. Yeah, just keep clicking. Yeah, did you try to do Sylvester Asmer? Oh, God. <laughs> what do you think of my cousin? <laughs> she was always so distant and mean. I probably would have thought she had it out for me personally if she wasn't like that towards everyone, or if I thought she even knew my name. But people change. Maybe she's nicer now. She's, she's like, still terrible. You guys just never took the chance to get to know her. She's actually really funny and sweet. I'll pass, thanks. Yeah, sure, Wayne. What do you think's going on with Wayne? Who? You know, the guy who's been following Sylvester around being all ominous. Oh, yeah. That slasher creep. I appreciate the classic Jason vibe he has going on. Here's hoping he doesn't live up to the look. For all our sakes. It's gotta be too close to the microphone. Oh my god. Uh, See ya, Brandon. <laughs> Thanks for swinging by. Thanks everyone leave because we're doing Reese voice too close to the Yay. microphone. What are you sick with? Good question. Sorry, Reese. Sylvester's a little direct. You don't have to talk about your illness. <laughs> it's okay. I've come to terms with the way the rest of my life is going to be. I just imagine Reese is just standing really close to my ear. Oh, you're so macabre, Reese. You make it sound like you've been sentenced to death. Dot, 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 dot. You haven't, right? Not exactly. No one knows what's wrong with me, but it's been getting worse. I can barely keep most food down. My skin always itches, like there are worms crawling underneath it. <laughs> I could live for a long time, or a short time. No one's sure. But I'm definitely not going to get better. Hey! Oh, I'm sorry. Skipped. I thought that was the end. No. So I've done my mourning. My best years are behind me. My future is unknowable. But one day I'll wind up in a pine box, just like everyone else. And I'm okay with that. Dang, Reese, I may be a goth, but that's some real nihilistic shit. Aw, thank you, folks. We'll make sure to come by more often from here on out. Friendship heals all wounds, right? Thanks, guys, but you really shouldn't worry about me. I have my art. I'm doing fine, really. 
It's all those years of improv. It's done this to you. Turned you into this. Surely there must be something the doctors can do for you. If it's just helping deal with the symptoms. The doc upstairs is consulted with a lot of specialists. I've tried a lot of medications. Sure, some have been able to alleviate symptoms, but they always come with their own fun side effects. It wound up being a question of picking which set of discomforts I wanted to deal with. I settled on constant nausea and vomiting and a persistent itch I can't scratch. It's manageable. As long as I can still paint, I don't care. And hey, it isn't all bad. Some of it's just weird. Like this. Grease pulls on the skin of his arm. It stretches unnaturally. Hyperelasticity. Kinda cool, right? Whoa. Does that not hurt? Nope. It feels fine. Like I said, it gets itchy under the skin sometimes, but I don't know if that's the elasticity, the medicine, or some other part of my condition. Your aunt. Your, your aunt. Slap these bad boys on a bug. You could make a buck or two. That's what I've been telling him. If you posted these online somewhere, you could get big, man. I think I'll keep them to myself until I die. You know how it is with dead artists. Their art sells for way more. I hope the doc or whoever winds up inheriting my work makes millions off them. And be able to rest easy knowing somebody had retroactively given my life value. Or you could sell them while you're still alive and enjoy the fruits of your labor. I, I, yeah, I rephrased the line a little. Oh, so okay. the last words are... That sounds complicated. I'd rather just spend my time painting, leave the hard work to someone else. Yeah, it's quite a movie collection you got. <laughs> got any Rex? Let me think. Oh, have you ever heard of Shinochi? Deathblood. I saw that for the first time recently and it blew me away. Everyone asks if it's a real movie. It's not, but it is it's essentially Noroi the Curse. Yeah. Um, it just, I don't know. We wanted to make up a name because it was fun. Yeah. Also, Noroi the Curse is excellent. You should watch it. Yeah. Excellent example of both Japanese horror and found footage done right. We could even put it on after dinner if you guys are interested. Dang, I would usually be down for that, but we've got to head over to Oscars after this. We promised we'd Ghostbusters place. He's apparently been dealing with a bad haunting. And I feel like we should really be there for him tonight, considering everything that's happened. He and Rosalina both need our support right now. Ah, I don't like horror movies anyways. That's fair. They're not for everyone. But I'd give this one a shot. It's not a gore fest like you might expect from a horror movie. It's all about the dread. That's the good stuff. You can always trust Reese's horror picks. He always finds these obscure movies that wind up knocking your socks off. I still have nightmares about whatever that French one was. That was so messed up. Oh yeah, the French are brutal. Don't worry, Sylvester. I won't traumatize you like that. That's a pleasure reserved for old friends. Reese, don't make Kanika watch Martyrs. <laughs> Reese's mom shouts from the kitchen. If anybody, Reese or uh, Kanika would be able to handle that. I mean, you know, she clearly was made to watch Martyrs by Reese there. Yeah, but she I, liked it. Yeah. Dinner's yeah, on the table. Liked. Guess that's it for catching up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having fun. I'm having I'm fun. I'm glad you're having fun. 
Make sure you all wash your hands with soap. I don't want anyone sharing their germs at the dinner table. Sure thing, Doc. I've already washed them. I said that. Oh. I don't care. Wash them again. You make your way towards the sink, but are stopped in your tracks by the pull of an odd door at the end of the hallway. It feels out of place, like you've accidentally wandered into a hospital waiting room. But more than that, you feel something radiating out from behind it. Something dark and cold. Something that reminds you of the dusty tunnels you narrowly escaped last night. An oppressive hum just beyond your hearing fills the air, and you feel strange. You are compelled to approach the door, drawn in as if hypnotized. Before you know it, the doorknob is turning in your hand, your heart full of both deep dread and a compulsive need to know what might be on the other side. What do you think you're doing? Well? I'm just cleaning this doorknob. Dr. Kelly narrows her eyes with some suspicion. Worry less about cleaning my doorknobs and more about cleaning your hands. Come on, everyone's waiting on you. Return to the door. You won't let her interrupt you. You need to know what's behind the door. Oh, no, you don't. Come on, wash your hands and sit down. She grabs you by the shoulder, yanking you away. You do as she says, cleaning up under her watchful eyes and allowing yourself to be ushered back to the table and away from the door. Dinner is already laid out. Dinner rolls, spaghetti, and a light salad. With a wig. Scarlet? No, 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 I'm red crimson. <laughs> You can tell I'm not from around here from my British accent. Yes, ah, I'm visiting from a foreign nation. <laughs> Kanika anxiously picks at her food. Stella is nervously talkative, and Reese is suddenly quiet and tense. Suddenly. Wow, he wasn't like that before. Quieter and tenser. <laughs> his shoulders tight as his mother perches on the chair next to his. Dr. Kelly eyes all of you with a sharp, fierce gaze. She sits opposite you at the far head of the table, her features silhouetted against the light of the setting sun and the window behind her. Powerful build. It's a position of authority, where her height gives her advantage point over everyone else. No one at this table does anything without her noticing. It almost feels like, despite the presence of your friends, this sh is strictly a conversation between you and the doctor. Shree Smart. Given her protectiveness towards Reese, you find it odd that he's seated between the two of you rather than the other way around. It's almost as though she's guarded not only towards you and Stella and Kanika, but towards her son as well. Pills. She slides a few tablets towards Reese. He obediently swallows them. This is excellent, Dr. Kelly. Is the pasta sauce homemade? No, it's from a jar. I worked too many hours to make my own pasta sauce. Well, you have excellent taste in brands. And if you ever want any tips on easy homemade co home cooked pasta sauces, you know I... No thanks, Stella. I have the internet if I need recipes. Uh, thanks again for having us, Dr. Kelly. We really appreciate it. You didn't tell me they came by yesterday. You were asleep. I didn't want them to wake you up. But you could have told me. Why? They were coming over today anyway. I'd just rather know these things. Noted. Street smart. Noted, but she won't do anything about it. Her son will remain in the dark. Should we just go for it? Should we just. Sure, why Boom. not? Kerplow. Do it! Yeah. Sometimes this is. You know, I, thought, I think I saw a video online about a family like yours. Turns out the mom had been poisoning a kid for 18 years. That is such a funny story. The dinner table goes quiet. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I saw that one too. Wild stuff. Is that so? The silence returns. Seconds feel drawn out like minutes. Aside from Reese's mom staring down the table, nobody is making eye contact with anyone else. Okay, I was trying to fuse the tension a bit. St small talk? Yeah. Uh, not the food's good. Maybe just, um... What were, what were they like as kids? like as kids? Noisy and messy, like all kids. And they always had those little projects, videos or crafts or animal rescues, whatever it was that had captured their imagination that week. 
So, like I said, noisy and messy. Did we bring a dead squirrel to your house once? Oh god, not the squirrel. I remember the squirrel. Didn't you think the doc could Frankenstein it back to life or something? I was like 12. I was very susceptible to what I saw in media. And very sad about the squirrel. It's one of those things that keeps me up at night. I still feel guilty about bringing that thing into your house, Dr. Kelly. I'm just glad you didn't make it a habit. Tabitha. How well do you know Tabitha? Not very. I'd know her a lot better if your family didn't seem to be so afraid of doctors. I can count on one hand the number of times she's been in my office. No wonder everyone but that old Everdeen died so young. Hopefully your mother was better about taking you to the doctor's visits. I wouldn't be surprised if there was something genetic at play. and It's much better to catch those things early. Yikes. Let's move out of this menu. Danger menu. Danger menu. Danger menu. Hmm. Think those kids are okay? It's possible. We'll see. In the meantime, I'm just stuck here waiting for the call. Here's hoping it doesn't come. An anxious, anxious silence depends, <laughs> descends on the dinner table where it's hard. Aside from Reese's mom staring down the table, nobody's making eye contact with anyone else. Uh, um, yeah, how about them hairless creatures? You see any critters? I don't tend to go wandering in the woods, so no. You gotta learn how to be a skeptic at some point. I, felt, I love that Kanika thought it could be Frankenstein. Pre-Scully phase Kanika. Yep, before she had her dreams crushed. coming to our windows at night. They've been... What? There are these things called ditchlings, and they've been preying on the local wildlife, and Sylvester and I found a whole nest of them the other night when we... Oh, I see. There's some of your little cryptozoological creatures. I know it sounds pretty out there, but I've seen these things in person. We're not messing around. They're, they're out there, laying eggs and animals and doing God knows what else. And here I thought you'd finally managed to get an even head on your shoulders, Kanika. Seems like Stella might be a bad influence on you. I know her little stories can be convincing, but that's only because she's managed to be so thoroughly convinced herself. Sorry, I keep adding words. She's not making up stories. Neither is Kanika, neither am I. All you have to do is look outside after dark. There have been more every night. They're all pale and doughy, and their faces, they're like sculptures of humans that didn't set right. I see. You stay up late, too late painting your grisly faces, so you've started to see them everywhere. I'm sure whatever's outside is just raccoons or... Stop. Stop doubting everything I say. Stop trying to rewrite things I tell you to fit what you think should be true shit going down in Scarlet Hollow whether you want to face it or not. The tension at the dinner table reaches a breaking point. Alright, that's enough. Dr. Kelly is interrupted by Reese before she can finish her thought. So we were talking about maybe watching a movie sometime this week while Sylvester is still in town. We'll have to see how you're feeling. I can handle a movie, Doc. Yeah, we'll just sit downstairs in the dark. Reese is used to that. I'm sure he'll be okay. You're always overestimating how much you're able to do, Reese. This is why you keep getting sick. If I get sick, so what? It's not like that's ever going to change. I'm sick every day, and I'm not getting better. I don't want to spend the last few miserable years of my life holed up in the basement alone just because seeing my friends has been deemed too strenuous. I'm an adult for God's sake. I can't believe I have to ask for permission from my mom just to have friends of... Three stops mid-sentence, wincing in pain and wrapping <laughs> <in> his arms. <laughs> 
Don't say things like that. I'm doing everything I can to fix silence as Dr. Kelly's eyes shoot open. Reese? Reese abruptly pulls himself from the table and leaves. Damn it. I knew it. I knew this would be too much. Everyone, get out of my house, please. Just leave us alone. Uh, Stop trying to interfere with his life. All it does is hurt him more. Alish Kalia, thank you so much for swinging by the stream. We can't just leave him like this. Now is when he, need, he needs friends the most. No, now is when he needs me the most. I am his doctor and his mother. I know you care about him. I know that, and he knows it too. But all any of you would do is get in the way. So just leave, please. Don't think we don't know something's up here. I don't care what you think. Just, I just want you out so I can take care of my son. The three of you are rushed to the door. We'll be back, Reese. I hope you feel better soon. Dr. Kelly shuts the door in your faces. The click of a lock signals the end of your dinner at Reese's. Do you really think Reese's mom is poisoning him? If she is, I swear to God. She wouldn't. That's just so horrible. Who could do something like that to their own kid and for so long? No, no, there's no way. Y'all are barking up the wrong tree. It seems far-fetched, and it's definitely rare, but I don't think we can rule it out. Something weird happened when I went to wash my hands. It was like I was forced to try and break into the clinic. Forced how? It was like something was making me go there. I wonder. Was it like that carving in the pit last night? Before you had that seizure, it was kind of like you were hypnotized. I wasn't there, but I guess I'll take your word on it. Hypnotism seems like a step up from what we've been dealing with, though. I mean, I don't know. A lot happened last night, but the whole thing was very trance-like. Yeah, it's probably nothing. Yeah, maybe you were just feeling some of the after-effects of last night. But just at the door to the clinic? That seems significant. Even if it is, what would we even do about that? We'd investigate it, of course. Maybe tomorrow. I am not breaking into Dr. Kelly's clinic based on a bad vibe Sylvester got. Did either of you get the impression that Dr. Kelly's afraid of Reese? Afraid. She never turned her back towards him. Are you sure she wasn't just being overprotective? I'm sure that's all that's going on. And she has every right to be. I mean, the poor guy took two bites of food and got sick immediately. I can't imagine what that's like for the both of them to go through. Yeah, but if she was being overprotective, she'd have sat between us and him. She had her back to the window. That's interesting. If anyone should be afraid of anyone in that house, Reese should be afraid of his mom. I think you're both reading into things too much. Dr. Kelly's good people. Look, I'm just saying, maybe there's more to their dynamic than just him being sick, but it's not like there's much we can do about it right now. We could probably go back and forth on this for a while. Let's grab Gretchen and get going. The sun is setting, and we wouldn't want to miss a second of ghost action. Stella hurries off down the hill, almost as if to run away from what just happened. You and Kanika follow her down the slowly darkening street. Lit by the orange hues of the setting sun, the library feels different. What was once a quaint building in a small town now stands as an imposing structure, its walls holding something that stares back at you with menace. Maybe Stella is right. Maybe ghosts aren't real, and the rest of tonight is going to be a pleasant break from the events of the past few days. Street smart. You can't help but feel like you're about to walk into a slasher movie. You run through a mental list of everyone who's joining you, trying to figure out if you'd make it to the end. Powerful build. People in horror movies usually die because they don't fight back, or because they run away after tripping someone instead of delivering a finishing blow. You won't make that mistake. Enter library. Just as its, as its exterior was intimidating in the setting sun, the inside of the library is dark, its shadows deep and foreboding. The meet and greet with the mayor ended quite some time ago, and the throngs of visitors took whatever joy was in this place with them as they left. Hey, Oscar, are you back yet? Shh! You can't yell in a library. It's against the rules. It's after hours. Rules only apply before 5 p.m. Now it's our domain. 
Hey, you're here sooner than I expected. Hope dinner went okay? Yeah, it went okay. Reese wasn't feeling up for a longer hangout, unfortunately. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. It just means we have more time to hunt ghosts. I've come fully loaded. Got my EMF reader, temperature gauge, spirit box, infrared camera, UV light, video cameras, salt flashlights for everybody in case the ghost messes with the electricity, parabolic microphone, sharpies and paper for automatic writing, matches and candles for rituals. Oh, and a Ouija board. I know they're toys, but you never know what might come in handy. Wow, this is a lot of ghost hunting stuff for something that was so last minute. Do you just have this stuff ready to go in a bug out bag or something? Of course I do. I actually stashed a couple bags here overnight after I got back from the mines. Excuse me? I wasn't about to carry everything around all day. This way we can go in light and pop out to grab more stuff once things start getting spooky. I may never have found any compelling evidence of ghosts, but that's not for lack of trying. And after last night, I'm more than ready to try again. Uh, no, that was not intentional. Question is, was it deliberate that the powerful build save was in the first episode so the player would match the overconfidence in many of the powerful build lines? Uh, yeah, not intentional, but it was something that we realized would be the case, and, like, soon after we made the decision, and we leaned into it. Hey, hope I'm not too late. Have I missed any creepy paranormal stuff? Avery, glad you could make it. The more pairs of hands we have, the more equipment we can carry. Well, St Stella got in here last night because she has street smart, and if you have street yeah. smart, no lock can hold you. Yeah, unless there is a lady standing in front of the door saying, go wash your hands. Or a brick wall that'll eventually be patched out. Yes. Sure thing, always happy to offer a hand or two. Glad there will be someone else with a level head in there tonight. Whoa, is that an EMF reader? I've never seen one in person. Look at all this stuff. Spirit box. Parabolic. Y'all really covered your bases. Maybe I spoke too soon. You know me, Kanika. I'm as level-headed as they come. I'm just not ready to rule out weird paranormal stuff. When people tell me they saw a ghost, who am I to say they didn't? I mean, y'all apparently saw some really unexplainable stuff on Monday, and that mine only collapsing again after a hundred years while y'all were, were there. I'm just saying, anything seems possible right now. Aliens, aliens. Oh, the alien slide! Yeah! There could always be a rational, non-supernatural explanation to what I saw last night. Like aliens. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I could see that. Nope. No way. We're not going down that route. It was just a mind collapse. Sure, we all got a little riled up in there, but the knocking is just what happens before a mind collapse. There's nothing supernatural or extraterrestrial about it. But what if it was a buried spaceship rising from the ground and disturbing the mind, causing the collapse? You gotta keep an open mind. That's all I'm saying. Back in my day, the locks would lead you to a brick wall. Oh, that's a good one. I'm writing that down in my notes. Can't rule anything out. You're all messing with me, aren't you? Never. Yo! Don't rush off ghost busting without Zane! No way I was gonna forget your promise, Stella. <laughs> I can't do it for- If it's more than one sentence, I'm screwed. <laughs> Zane, glad you could make it. Yeah, there is a Silent Hill game where one of there's, there's a, joke a joke ending where it's right? aliens. I was confronted by my own mortality for the first time yesterday, so I'm desperate for answers about the afterlife and what to ease my troubled mind. God. <laughs> now let's go meet with some ghosts. <laughs> what was that one? <laughs> I hope my house is big enough for six ghost hunters at once. If this is everyone, uh can go ahead and that's everyone <laughs> wait what about tabby what about her she's not here let's get started i guess she can catch up to us when she gets here well if y'all are itching to get started it's through the back follow me you and your companions grab some equipment from one of stella's carefully stashed bug out bags before heading towards the junction connecting oscar's house and the library we will probably be doing new shirts soon. It's uh, 
on the to-do list. But yeah, bus guy shirt is definitely on the list. <laughs> Zane is an instrumental to being who simultaneously grew up in five different countries. <laughs> Looks like the sun is almost set. This is when stuff usually starts to kick off. I haven't been back inside for about a week, so I have no idea what to expect. Hey! There's no way you're going... Sorry, there's no way you're doing this without me. Rosalina, we talked about this. No, you talked at me about it. I'm sick of other people making decisions for me. I just want to be able to live life in our... <laughs> to live in a house... Oh my god, sorry. <sighs> I just want to be able to live in our house again. I'm going in there and sleeping in my room tonight, no matter what. Let Oscar handle yeah. this. You decide it's best to let Oscar handle this. Rosa, it could get dangerous in there. Just hang out in the library and we'll all have this taken care of in a few hours. I don't want to be coddled just because you're scared. If Zane is coming, I have every right to be there. She's got a good point, Miss G. <laughs> God! <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the one we sell right now is a logo for the game. We'll probably add a I want to yeah shirt and Tony maybe some that. of uh, Stella's sure. shirts. Like her Mothman one and the uh, Ghost Tracks one. Uh, Bus Guy's shirt was a TKO design from Jackbox yeah. that I bought the design of. There is one shirt of it in existence. No, there's two. I bought one for each of us. It is in this house somewhere. I think Tony wears them both. I think I wear them both, yeah. Thanks, Dad. Now let's get our house back. When it's clean, I'll wear the I Want to Yeah shirt on Scarlet Hollow streams. I've done that before. You all cross over the threshold and enter Oscar's living room. Family photos line the walls, and stacks of books sit comfortably on wooden furniture. Okay, looks pretty normal for now. I don't remember that picture being on the first floor, but that could be non-supernatural. None of my equipment is picking up anything around the picture, but I'll set up a camera in case it falls again could be important evidence. You might want to save your cameras for Rosalina's room. That's where I've seen the ghost manifest. It's just down the hall. Oscar and Kanika startled as the door swings open. Seems I made it just in time. Let's get this show on the road. I don't have all night. Tabby! Great. She's here. Wow, Sylvester, you really brought the whole gang together today. I have every right to be here, Kanika. My family built this place, you know. Yeah, I know. We all know. Sylvester, what made you think inviting her was a good idea? She's my cousin. What? I like her. We're friends. <laughs> good face. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so what? Like, it's this weird to be friends with your cousin? Wow, Sylvester, do you have any idea how hard it is to get these two in the same room? This is amazing. Yeah, amazing. It's a word for it. Sounds like we're in for an interesting night. I'm glad I didn't stay in the same town with people I went to high school with. No wonder small towns have so much drama. I wonder if the ghosts will even show with this many people around. Oh, wait, is it just me or does it suddenly feel colder? It sure does. I definitely feel that. Same. I've got chills. The temperature- oh. The temperature gun says it's actually a couple degrees colder, but that's normal. Rooms and hallways are sometimes colder than other parts of the house. Whoa, a genuine cold spot. I gotta snap a pig for posterity. Is that it? This isn't very scary. Wait. Rosalina, if the ghost mostly manifests in your room, shouldn't you have seen it? I've only seen the stain. Dad made me switch rooms with him way before we moved out. I wasn't about to let my daughter sleep in a haunted bedroom. I spent most of my nights on the couch before we set up shop in the library. Even if there is something back there, I'm not scared of it. I'm mad at it. Powerful build. Yes. The ghost is just scared because I'm here. It knows it doesn't stand a chance. I didn't realize muscles were supposed to be some sort of paranormal deterrent. They are if you're Sylvester. Maybe it's chill. I don't know. No, if I were a ghost, I'd be mad chill. 
if you saw what I've seen, I don't think you'd be saying that. That's an interesting point, though. What if ghosts usually are friendly, and they're only terrifying because they don't know how to be anything else? Yeah, like, I know if I were a ghost, I'd just vibe. But what if my vibes were bad and I didn't know it? I shudder to think of the possibilities. What did you rope me into, Sylvester? Um, okay. Oscar takes a deep breath before continuing. Let's, uh, head to Rosalina's room. Follow me. That feeling again. Like the mines. Like the door to the clinic. A dusty, suffocating, dizzying feeling. Something is in this house. The whether it's a ghost or something worse, you aren't sure. Whoa. This is where I've seen it. It appears on top of the stain. Yeesh, that's gotta be tough to scrub out. Doesn't the county own this house? Do they know about the damaged carpet? Have you seen your house? I don't see how that's relevant. Weird, I'm not getting anything. It's not even cold. It's the same temperature as the living room. Nothing on the EMF either. And your equipment is wrong. The stain is definitely paranormal. I've scrubbed it out too many times to count that it just keeps coming back. It's just a stain, Dad. Can't we just cover it back up? I don't mind sleeping in here. Maybe we have to scrub it out first. Could be the paranormal stuff will activate if we give it reason to. Oh, good idea. I've never heard of a bleach-activated ghost before. You don't use bleach to clean a carpet, Tabitha. Whatever. How was I supposed to know that? Not everybody gets to learn how to clean things. Y'all are offering free carpet cleaning. Be my guest. Ghost blood. Ghost blood. Definitely ghost blood. Or it's just a rusty pipe leaking all over your floor. I think that'd be a bigger problem than what Sylvester and Stella are suggesting. I don't know. Ghost blood sounds pretty intense. Have you all tried ripping up the carpet to see what's causing the stain? The government owns this house. There's no way I'm leaving a big red stain in their carpet. Made sure it was pristine every morning. Besides, I kind of also assumed it was ghost blood, which it is. Don't worry. I'm sure they'll just take you to court for neglect instead. Did it not occur to you that there could be a leaky pipe under the floor? What if there's something written under there? Only one way to be sure. Stella excitedly starts tugging at the corner of the carpet. Oh dear. I'm doing the government a favor, really. We'll cover for you. You don't have to sweat it. Wow. Stella pulls back the carpet, revealing a hatch. The floor around it stained reddish-brown. Okay, maybe I don't want to sleep in here. A hatch! We're going down there, right? Oh, oh no, that's the wrong one! So Fester ain't a coward. Of course we are. This is even better than finding a message. But, but there's no basement in this house. At least we weren't told about a basement. And look, all the red stuff is coming from underneath. Oh, yeah, this is super haunted, all right. You've got a basement chock full of ghosts. I can just feel it. Still no readings, though. None of the equipment's made a sound. Yes, like Stella, like Gretchen. Like person, like dog. Both of them run into danger. Of course not. Y'all know last month was super rainy. It's clearly been a long time since anyone stepped foot in the basement or crawl space or whatever it is under that hatch. There must be a leak that flooded the whole area under the house. The water dissolved the caulk around the edge and leaked through to the carpet, and it's red because North Carolina has red-ass dirt. It's as simple as that. It's not mud. It's blood. Human blood. I tested it. Well, well you, you tested, tested it, it wrong. wrong. It can't be blood, right? Kanika's right. You've got a muddy floor, and that's why it's so cold in here, too. If there's wet dirt under the house. Congratulations. You solved your ghost problem. No way. There is an old hatch in the floor that someone tried to seal up. We're not leaving until we know what's down there. I'm with Stella. This is my room, and I need to know what's down there. Have you considered that they may have tried sealing it up because it's unsafe? Uh-oh. Do you think the flooding could have made the house unstable? I'm all in on ghost hunting, but I don't know if I could crawl into another dangerous crevice. I'm going for it. Bathroom break. 
Have fun. Do and we that. can switch seats again. <gasps> yeah, I like the other seat. I like that seat. Ooh, gotta stretch those legs. Ghost time. Yay. Ah. Just zoning out while Tony does the bathroom. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Yes. It's a miracle. Time to get more water. Ghost time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're probably like a third of the way through the script for episode four. Yeah, something like that. It's going quite well so far. Yeah, that's what a bunch of extra stuff I've had to do. And then the coding and art is long. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. You come to an Oscar's living room. You can't tell what time it is, and your friends are nowhere in sight. The building feels colder, and there's something about the air that feels wrong. It's stale, with an undercurrent of mold and earth. It makes you feel claustrophobic, as though you're in a coffin, each breath depleting what little oxygen is left. How did, how did we end up back here? Where is everyone? Did we pass out again? Is there a gas leak in the basement or something? It is indeed getting more and more difficult to write. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Was the ghost? No way. It had to have been something nasty in that basement. The whole town is full of old tunnels. It wouldn't surprise me if that's why that hatch was sealed in the first place. Now let's get the hell out of here before the bad air gives us brain damage. <laughs> we just remember all of yeah, it. Yeah, we just remember for it. For now, for episode seven, we're going to have to get a whiteboard. Yeah. Your cousin marches to the front door and opens it. Why why does it look like Oscar's house is in front of us? Didn't we just leave? I must just be misremembering. Let's go. No, no, you're right. There shouldn't be a door there. Clearly, whatever was in that basement is messing with our heads. We just left Oscar's house. The library has to be on the other side of that door. I mean, we could... Um, we could add more goals. And also, I like to see the fan art. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we might have a new goal next week. Ooh, that'd be Mid fun. next week. Sure. You know what I'm thinking We'll come about. up with something. I don't know what you're thinking oh, about, but you can you tell me after. Know. Yeah. No spoils. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Sorry to say yeah a lot. The two of you cross the hallway and open the door. Something isn't right. It feels like a late summer afternoon. The air is warm and wet, and the scent of flowers drifts on the breeze. This... 
It's fine. Nothing wrong here. This is, this is so, so cool. cool. Speak for yourself. Is this what it feels like to be high? Did we get drugged? I wouldn't know, and it's all thanks to my school's dare program. <laughs> Wait, shoot, which one should I do? Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah, this is what happens after a puff or two of a marijuana cigarette. I didn't realize you were such a lightweight. Are you serious? People do this for fun? There's got to be an exit somewhere. We just have to look. Wait, do you, do you hear music? Movement stirs as a figure cloaked in shadows rises to attention. Stella? Who, Who are, are you? you? What, what are, are you, you doing, doing on, on my property? property? Huh? Holy shit, Stella, you scared me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cut it out. Did you, Did you say, say Eddie? Eddie? No, no one's, one's called, called me that in a long time. It's Edward Dean now. I'm, I'm not a child, child anymore. Edward Dean? Eddie? You've got to be kidding me. Do it. You grab Stella by the shoulders, attempting to shake her from her trance. But as you try to pull her shoulder, it's as if she's held back by invisible ropes. I wish I could say the same. You should have stayed gone. And you absolutely shouldn't have shown up here, of all places. Oh no, Clockwork Penguin, I'm so... That must have been so scary! <laughs> Did fusion happen? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, we messed it up! Dang. If you're caught, I, I don't think you understand, understand what father might do. Yay! Wait, oh, that's interesting. Huh. Should, that, that should be a snap for out of it, but harder. Let's see I'm what happens. I'm just gonna... Yeah. Just one second. <laughs> Fix snap her out of it. One. You uh, grab Stella by the shoulders, okay. attempting to shake her from the trance. You pull with all your strength, digging your heels into the strange, shifting earth beneath you. You feel the invisible rope snap. H help me! Get me out of here! It hurt! You can hear the ropes tighten around her again. Your physical strength is meaningless here. Oh my god. Stella. I can't. It's not that easy for me. My brothers were sent to the Western Front, and now I'm the only Scarlet left besides Father. I have responsibilities, Charlie. Ooh, should I do whisper? Yeah, my part will be whispers. Alright. That's spooky. Shut up. Shut up. This is getting old real fast. I agree. We should try to find an exit or something. I've had enough. You should just get out of town while you still can. Whatever you came back for, it's not worth it. Grade A pasteurized egg. One. Fun username. Two. Thank you so much for the follow. Let her go, spirit. I'll get you out of here, Stella. I promise. On the v vow of our friendship. <laughs> it is rude of this ghost. She's gone, along with the shadow in the corner of the room. Come on. We must have taken the wrong door out of the annex. We're getting out of here before anything else happens. I'm going after Stella. I think, I think. Your cousin try, tries yanks your arm back towards the entrance, but you f push forward, dragging her behind you as you move. You push forward, ignoring Tabitha's grip on your arm as you follow the path through the thick foliage. The two of you are met by a closed door standing in the middle of the garden's greenery. That's ominous. Open the door. Let's turn back. Yeah, good idea. The two of you turn around, only to be met with the same door. Where are we? Maybe we turn 360 degrees instead of 180. Let's try again. You both turn again. The door is even closer. Screw this. She storms up to the door and throws it open. Bells ring as a cacophony rages outside. The door in front of you pulsates as figures unseen bang against it 
The shaded figure from the garden sits in the corner, ever so slightly more defined. Are you kidding me? This is messed up. We need help. God, please let this call go through. Tabitha anxiously taps her foot as she waits for her phone to connect. Hey, it's... what? No, it's Tabitha. Didn't you see the caller ID? Stop interrupting me. Can't you hear what I'm... Your cousin is cut off by the dial tone of a disconnected call. Great. She couldn't hear a word I said. It's like run around. Your father has left town, Charlie. We're I'm moving, moving to, to a, a new, new house, house okay? okay? It's this is the shadowy figure in the corner dictating the flow <laughs> of events. I can. Times three. <laughs> the last thing you're going to do is wait to find out. You plant your feet against the ground and launch yourself into a powerful tackle. Only you don't actually go anywhere. It's suddenly as if the floor beneath you has become a treadmill. And try though you might, you find yourself comically running in place. Aw, egg, thank you. Aw, oh, thank you! What are you doing? D d if I can't punch the ghost, what's the point? What's the point of doing anything? <laughs> you poor simple thing. He can't, he can't come back. Come back. We've we got to live somewhere else now, but that'll, that'll be fun, fun right? right? That's gonna destroy you. There'll be new kids to play with. with. You, you can, can show them your little, little dolls. dolls. Hurry, Hurry, sweetie. We, we don't, don't have, have much time. time. This is horrible. This whole thing is horrible. I hate it here. <laughs> Why can't I punch it? <laughs> Agreed. No. She, she can't come. come. I, I never want you to say her name, name again. Do you hear me? We aren't friends, friends with the Scarlets Scarlet. anymore. Oh God, God. They're, they're outside. Are, are those torches? torches? We don't have time. Charlie, we yeah. have to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can stop that if you want. It's fun though. Rosalina is whisked away, leaving you and Tabitha in the empty room. It's also very fun. It's very fun to listen to. As she departs, the front door stops pounding and opens into a beckoning white void. We're in hell. We both died, and we're in hell. Are we supposed to be Charlie? Is Charlie the ghost? Your guess is as good as mine. What did you call on the phone earlier? Friend of the family. Not that it matters, though. The call didn't go through, so we're on our own. Okay, okay, let's put our heads together. What do we know? We know that we can't leave, and we know that we're not possessed, at least as far as we can tell. And whatever we saw in this room, at least, happened right after the Shaw mine collapsed in 1918. I think the only option on the table for us right now is to keep doing what it wants us to do. Maybe it'll stop at some point. Maybe we'll figure out a way to escape. Ghostbusters! <laughs> That's who she called. Right. There's only one way to get to the end of this, shall we? Yeah, let's get this over with. You and Tabitha walk up to where the pounding door used to stand and step into the void. You're outside, and it's night. A false moon looming massive in the painted sky. The night feels thick and warm. The insects lively. Their calls unnaturally tinny. Everything feels warped and wrong, like you're listening to a record fished from the bottom of a pond. Ugh, what magic words do we have to say to get you to let us go? We're sorry, okay? Whatever our family did to piss you off so much, we're sorry. You poor dear. Poor dear. I've, I've been, been keeping track, track of you, scuttling, scuttling around, around town like, like a dog cat. cat. You've, You've fallen, fallen hard, hard for Miss Everdeen, haven't you? You're my ride out of here! Mika, you better not be dead! You're my ride out of this place! <laughs> Excuse me? Were, were you planning on skipping town? There's no need to be embarrassed. Your secret is safe with me. You know, I never did approve of what the Scarlets did to your family. And what it did to the two of you youngins. Childhood sweethearts. Just think how lovely it would be if you, if you could just be happy together. That's what you want, isn't it? Oh, so Edward, Dean, and Charlie, huh? Ah! Let me just spoil it for you and say it doesn't work out. Our great-grandfather's name was not Charles. 
I'm sure by now you you realize the young lady doesn't plan on leaving with you. But it's not for lack of desire, as you well know. It's Enoch. Even if you dragged her over the town limits, it's all over her would make sure neither of you were ever happy again. Just think of what happened to your poor mother and father. Do you want that to be the two of you? What do you know about Enoch, Pat? Great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather. He was in charge of the mines when they collapsed. I don't know much besides that, so don't bother asking. Oh, that's... Is that another thing? To our parents. <laughs> uh, we talked about this. Assuming this ghost is Charlie, its parents were driven out of town after the Shaw mine collapse in 1918. Were you not paying attention? The powers at work here are stronger than even your love could withstand. You need to break the bonds holding her here. Then you can both go free. No more misfortune. Not for you, not, not for, for anyone else, else bold enough to step foot outside the holler. Kanika Mime's handing you something, though her hand is empty. Everything you need to know is on that map. I don't trust whoever this lady is. She's got some kind of ulterior motive. Agreed. Clearly this dude should never have taken whatever she just handed him. Anybody who did is a sucker. That's where you'll find them. You need her there. Then read what I've written down. And be careful. Good luck to the two of you. I hope you get your happiness. And then she's gone. Tabitha sighs. Okay, let's find the way out. Unless you have any ideas, I don't think there's anything else we can do until we get to the end. Or until we die. Whichever. Before the two of you can leave, a smell hits you. Sweating, suffocated flesh, with a tinge of the saccharin and stomach-turning scent of decay. There you are. <laughs> I would have found you sooner, but the resonant clearly doesn't want me here. The smell of love. It doesn't seem to have the same issue with these miserable little parents. <laughs> Hello, Ed, boys. Many doors, yes. Bottom feeders always manage to slip through the cracks, don't they? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I wanted to. Oh, oh shit! One. Which one? It's I gotta be the. I could switch the dishling, yeah. right? I could squish a dishling too if I wanted to. Those things are like hollow. You really don't have to be afraid. None of me, none of the creatures trapped you in this vision. <laughs> Tabitha grabs your arm, her grip tight and nervous. Yes, you do. What an unfortunate situation we've been dragged into, Celeste. Why can't you do as I ask and stay out of trouble? Oh my god. But the girl will let you wish she. Stella? Stella! Is that her name? <laughs> There you go. The Stella reference. Perhaps I should pay her a visit if she makes it out alive. <laughs> Tabitha bolts for the underbrush, desperately pulling you along. S Stella. It? You either know something about Wayne and I don't, or you have a pretty interesting coping mechanism. <laughs> That, I think that's what Tony was going for. I was I was doing a Brando. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that thing isn't Sam Wayne. Couldn't you smell it? <laughs> the perfect Brando payoff. W O W. Wow. <laughs> can can yeah. we please go and just drop it? I don't want to spend another second thinking about what we just saw. Oh, it's the fun room. Oh, this one is so hard for people. It's hard for me. 
The two of you step out from the brush and into a long wooden corridor lined by bottles and rails. A figure rises to attention, blocking your way. I'm afraid he doesn't. Oh, I'm afraid, afraid he, he doesn't, doesn't have long. long. If, if there's anything you need to say to him, him I'd, I'd say, say it now. now. Sorry about the noises. I as Zane is, as Zane is swept away, the room pulls itself to you, and you find yourself looming over a deathbed. Oscar lies in its center, looking pitifully small. I'm sorry, boy. Sorry I let my troubles drive your mama away. And sorry those troubles mean I'm leaving you all alone now. Yeah, so this is the dad. Played by, by a dad. It looks especially painful, like, on an emotional level. Even if everyone else could understand what we were saying, I wonder if he can even hear us. Damn it, Junior, how many times do I have to tell you? I tried to stop it from happening, but that damn snake Enoch went behind my back. Oh, what bullshit. Strike a nerve? Strike a nerve, Tabby. It was Charles Shaw's fault. That's just a fact. Is that a fact? Or is that just what you've been told? It's in the history books. It's a fact. Oh, uh, bye, Vermara. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for being here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there was a Wayne Trippia. <laughs> Not this time. No, there was, there was the... the mm, Wayne looks like young Marlon Brando trivia. Yeah, yeah. Early on. That was from very early. You're right. I've, I've been, been using, using that excuse for too many years. At a certain point, a man has to accept when he's dug his own grave. They may have run me out, but, but they, they didn't put, put the, the bottle in my hand. Still. Yeah. Wait, it's not. They destroyed, destroyed our legacy, boy. Both, Both our names, names are cursed with that history. I'll, I'll be, be dead, dead and gone, gone soon, but, but I won't be able to rest. Not, not until, until our name is cleared. Not, not until, until you can pass on this name with pride. This is my only request, Charlie. Go back there. Tell people the truth. Try to find proof. I don't know what you'll have to do, but please. I know I ain't been the best father, but I'm no murderer. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. <laughs> don't even bother listening then. I don't care what this ghost is trying to tell us. All these people are dead and buried and their actions have gone with them. Damn it, boy, I may not have till the morning. Promise me, promise you'll go back, and at the very least show that Enoch bastard what for. No! You watch as Oscar's body seizes and falls through the sheets, taking the rattling pile of bottles with him. The ghost, this ghost is so full of it. Yeet. Your cousin steps forward and disappears through the hole left in the bed, leaving you to follow. You find yourself pressed uncomfortably against a trellis. A small castle sits off to one side of the wall, and the bars of a prison loom over both of all of it and all of you. Oh, I make up the, the trellis, trellis again. again. How, How very, very Romeo, Romeo and Juliet, Juliet of you. you. No, no need to run off. off. I, won't I won't tell, tell the old, old man. man. Though you've, you've gotten, gotten sloppy, sloppy, you, you should, should try to be, be more, more careful if you don't want him putting you in an early grave. <laughs> Arg, why can't I punch like my favorite game, Dark Soul? <laughs> okay, who's this? You, you keep asking me things like I know any better than you do. We've both been seeing the same rooms. You do know you wouldn't be so nervous if you didn't. I'm nervous because we're trapped in a ghost realm and forced to watch a bunch of skits where real human beings are used as puppets. Get off my back. Yay. Yay. For all we know, none of this has even happened. And even if any of this did happen, who's to say this is even close to an accurate interpretation? We're watching the memories of a dead man. No, not, not one of her brothers. brothers. I'm, I'm a prisoner. prisoner. Another, Another victim, victim of, of the, the Scarlet's lies. Like, like you, Charles Shaw. Be straight with me, Tabitha. What do you know? Okay, fine. Sure. 
Maybe it's possible the old Scarlets let Charles Shaw take the rap when they could have stepped up and taken more responsibility. But why do you think I'd know the details? That's the sort of secret people tend to take to their graves. And we're an important family around here. I'm sure a lot of people feel like they've been victims of us because we're easy to blame. A mere generation makes no difference. His blood runs in your veins, does it not? And now it runs in hers. Yes, it seems your little trysts bore fruit. And oh, will you ever be in trouble when the old man finds out? Tabitha's eyes go wide. You know who this is. Quit dodging the question. Shh, let it talk. I think this might be important. You know you don't have to keep dangling there. Come inside. You'll be able to hear me through the door just fine. The world around you swirls, and you and Tabitha find yourselves pulled to the other side of the wall. A door bound by countless locks and chains pulsates before you. Not gonna <laughs> let up until you spill the beans. Stop talking, we might miss something. That's not what I invited you in for. I couldn't escape even with your help. I merely wanted to offer a warning. Avery is the entity, a gender inclusive term for non binary people. Ah, I identify as entity. You can't tell me what to do. You can't take her with you. It's not possible. You can always stay and die. But if I were you, I would use my healthy legs and run as far away from Scarlet Hollow as possible. I hear the beaches are nice. Why don't you take a permanent vacation there? This mysterious figure's got, got the, the right, right idea. idea. Uh, You've been, been talking to, to the witch, witch, then. How very interesting. interesting. Charlie, Charlie, get away, get away from, from the, the door. door. Don't, Don't listen, listen to it. it. Stella. Our witch is real? Witch is real? <laughs> I forgot so many of these. Who knows, but don't take anything this thing says at face value. It could be saying things to intentionally mess with us. How, How does, does it, it know that? that? <laughs> Wait, it's gender is simply his natural musk. This, this is too much. I just want to go home. Do you feel sick? I feel sick. Tell me everything. Why were you so riveted to that conversation? Charlie isn't related to us, if that's what you're asking. I know that much, I think. But I guess... There were some family secrets I was never lit in on. I was just surprised. Cyborg Tabitha. Family two Dear L's. Eyes. Family. 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 But also, yes, Cyborg Tabitha. Dear eyes. Come on, the quicker we get through this, the quicker we'll be out of this ghost place. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, which is being real is the most startling part. You and Tabitha walk after Stella and into the darkness. Family. You and your cousin find yourselves crouched under a large table. Stella stares through you as indecipherable murmurs and shuffling feet echoes from the echo from the end of the table. Ugh, I don't know, but this feels so much worse than the last room. They're, They're so, so lovely. lovely. Are, Are you sure, sure I can, can keep one? one? You, you must have worked, worked very hard on them. them. Hey, this one's extra creepy. Is she doing a baby voice? Yeah, it's humiliating. This ghost really respect for his actors. I'll try to keep, and keep it away from, from my brother so they, they don't smash it. Though I wish I could, I could make it move like you can. And you can even do, do the, the voices. voices. You, you know, know, you could, could probably make real money if you put on a show for people. Yeah. Dang, even possessed Stella's out here trying to monetize hobbies. Ooh, ooh, possession. Don't joke. Pissing off the ghost. A traveling show? And you'd want me there too? Oh, oh could, could we, we go, go to, to the towns along, along the beach? beach? I've, I've heard the Outer Banks, banks are the most, most beautiful place in the world. Ah, get out of the beach. The beaches are nice. I get it. If I ever, if I ever got a vacation, that's where I'd go. Thank, Thank you, Charlie. Charlie. I've, I've always, always wanted, wanted to, to see, see the, the ocean. ocean. Dot, dot. There. You done now, Charlie? Can we leave? Everything crashes to a thunderous black before you or Tabitha can get in another word. A 
single spotlight remains, illuminating a trap door in the center of the stage. You feel drawn to it. The trap door. Are we back in Rosalina's room? We must be. Which one of us is going to open it? Why are you asking that? Are you scared? Even if I was, I'd never tell you. I'm not weak. <laughs> okay, you should open it then. Uh, okay, fine. I'm not scared. It creaks open all on its own. Oh, God. This is so much worse than opening us ourselves. You and Tabitha are shoved from behind and tumbled through the hatch. <laughs> Come to North Carolina. Get stuck in a hell town. Oh, my God. Do you think we could get money from them? You want to be Charlie? It took some digging, but it's there. The map was right. That means there's hope, Eddie. Whatever it is that Enoch did, we can undo it. We can be happy to get it. Ethical dilemma for chapter three. You can pay the ghost to go away, but he only accepts Dogecoin. Uh, Welcome, evil. Sneaky Rogue. Hello, Sneaky Rogue. <laughs> what up, Haunted Holler people? Smash that like and subscribe. Check out my ghost fund ghost me. Ghost fund me. Ghost fund me. <laughs> Your cousin violently heaves into the void, but nothing comes up. <laughs> you could do for North Carolina what the Stalker Games did for Pripyat. There's nothing here. This place is completely empty. Okay, everyone's missing and we're suspended in an infinite void. Do we start walking or what? <laughs> okay, we won't start walking uh, then. What now? Do you repent? Do you, Do you repent, repent for, for your, your crimes? crimes? You know. <laughs> Why should I be? I'm not responsible for any of this. Neither am I. You, you must, must answer be. for the crimes committed by your scarlet blood. Are you kidding me? I hate it here. I hate it here so much. Until you do, I cannot die. I want to die. Please. Please. I've, I've been, been alone, alone in the dark for, for so long. long. All, All I, I ask is for some of your years. years. To pay for the years that were taken from me. What what, what are you saying? My life was stolen from me. I want some of yours. It's only fair. No, no, no. It absolutely not fair. You've got to be kidding me. Neither of us had anything to do with what happened to you. The sins of the father are to be laid upon the children. One of you must forfeit. It doesn't matter which. Bullshit. Well, what happens if we say no? Then I will stay. I will stay until I get what I'm owed. I don't understand. I'm not very bright. You will live a shorter, shorter life, and I will, I will finally be satisfied. I will have justice. I will finally die. I will leave this house at last. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. How, How short, short are we talking? How short are we talking? You aren't seriously entertaining this thing, are you? That isn't for you to know. Just as it wasn't for me to know. One day, sooner than you'd like, you will die. The sentence has been handed down. Make your choice. I hope I didn't come too late. Mom? All of you had better get out of here before the spirit regains its composure. Aggression is behind Stella here. Woo! Zip Also, yes, Tabby, as in Black Tabby Games, is totally an Abby. A portmanteau. Tabitha was not an intentional also a Tabby. Yeah, that was not on purpose. This is certainly a strong one, isn't it? Uh, no comment, Autono. Um, but I will say that of all of the major decisions so far, this one is perhaps the uh, most complicated. Yes. Don't worry about the others. They're safe. 
I got your call, Tabitha, but it was definitely not easy getting down here. Get us out of this, this pit, Sybil. Tabitha, I don't think it's wise to leave something like this where anyone could stumble across it. Why is that our problem? It wants something, doesn't it? And I think it, I know, I think you know which of you should volunteer. You, you must be joking. You're the eldest cousin. You're the one who's actually lived in this town. It's only right. Absolutely not. We should just leave. I'm not giving in to the demands of some dead guy. Shit, okay, which one are we doing? This is tough. I feel like we should let Tabitha take it. I don't know. What do you think? To not leave. Do a sacrifice. I think we should do the sacrifice. Well, we're protecting our beautiful cousin. I'll not leave him before I put this thing to rest. You take a step towards the spotlight. As you move forward, you feel Tabitha's hand on your shoulder. Sylvester, what are you doing? Oscar and Rosalie are going to live if I don't do this. Is that what you're worried about? Good God, don't give up years of your life just for somebody's rental. I own properties. I'll, I'll even throw in a discount. Okay, well, what if someone wanders in, into this place and gets stuck in this labyrinth of impossible labyrinth. wounds? Then we'll close up the library. It might just go away on its own. Who knows? Why give up something like years of your life to some ghost who might not even be telling the truth? It's okay, Tabitha. This is what fam. Yeah, we know about family. We know about family. This is what family's for, right? No, I'm not letting something like this happen to you. Let's get this over with. See, it's possible even with the pack and not hanging out with her. So I guess we snitched. As Tabitha steps into the spotlight, everything crashes to black. Family. Family. <laughs> oh, she can do it. It's uh, a very complicated check. It only happens on playthroughs uh, where you as the player would like her. Yeah. Which makes the blow that much heavier. It makes it so much worse. You come to a basement. You come to in a basement, I think. It's cold and wet, and a mound of dirt sits before you. Aw, oh, thank you, Ayo Asaki. Charlie going to the light gets me every time. Yeah, show her one crumb of affection and she dies for you. <laughs> <laughs> Tabitha's hand breaks through the dirt. She claws her way out of the ground, gasping for breath. It's for the best, dear. Yeah, there's a lot of balancing with the, the code for her step again, too. Trying to roughly have it land on, you know, a, the right fractionality of what players who did her stuff um, actually get it to... Uh, yeah, we didn't want it to be everybody. Off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, click through. Hey, Tappy, you okay? Your cousin doesn't say anything in response. Where's uh, everyone else? They're safe outside. I felt it best to make sure they got out before anything else could happen. Good on the two of you for sorting out the unfinished business holding that poor creature here. This place is no longer a threat to anyone. Is she okay, Sybil? She's in shock right now. Having a spirit rip out a part of you isn't exactly a pleasant experience. She should recover, though. 
Mostly. Don't talk about me like I'm not here. See, she'll be fine. Tabitha mutters something under her breath. You'll be fine, dear. Just be sure to drink plenty of tea. Why her? She invited you here. It didn't seem right that you should bear that kind of burden for the both of you. How did you get in here? Spirits like this are predictable. Once I understood what it wanted, it wasn't too difficult to see through its illusions. You step forward to peer into the pit your cousin clawed her way out of. Charlie's mummified remains stare up at you, sad and broken, at the bottom of the pit. The spirit's remains are down there, I assume. Hey, it looks so small. Regardless of what you went through tonight, he was just a man. I'll make sure the body gets a proper burial. Come on, Tabitha, let's get out of here. Tabitha stumbles to her feet and walks with you to the stairs. The ghost wasn't lying about wanting years of her life. The lines on her face now mark your cousin as on the cusp of middle age. So, Annie, I don't think it's heavy spoilers to say that, yes, uh, if Tabitha makes this decision, it dramatically impacts the way other people in town think about her. Yeah. You're outside. It's real this time. A cool autumn breeze blows small piles of dried leaves across the steps of the library. I'm parked just over there. Let's head back. I feel like shit. Yeah, you look like shit, cuz. That's terrible. Tabitha doesn't wait for a response, pushing past you and heading towards the car. Now that now she's got the trademark scarlet cheekbones. Yeah. I'm gonna peace out two mites. <laughs> back to back encounters with me own mortality. We've got a lot to ponder. <laughs> See you, Rosalina. Sorry. <laughs> Zane walks off the road. Horrific. You've been doing so much voice. I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you earlier in the night. I had no idea what y'all were planning to do. Oh, right, this is me. How are we supposed to know it would be like that? Things have been strange around town, sweetie. Now's not the time to be poking around in the supernatural. I thought you learned that lesson yesterday. But magic isn't real. I mean, it's not supposed to be. God, that hurt. Everything is so sore. My bones weren't meant to bend like that. I'm gonna be hurting for a few days at least. Sylvester, is it? Oh, ah. safe oh you saved the chest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, all of our automatic lights are turning off. Oh, I see. Uh. Some other dialogue options I'm gonna have here for the patch. Knew that Tabitha had a hot of gold buried somewhere under all the coal dust and grumpiness. <laughs> I'd say I didn't believe it happened, but she looks awful right now. Maybe I misjudged her. I, I don't know what to say. Tell her she has my deepest gratitude. And that I'm so, so sorry. I don't know how I can possibly make this up to her. I can't believe it, but I'm just gonna go in there. Should have used a smudge stick. <laughs> they should have used the smudge stick. Should have stopped the hunt, yeah. They spent, like, the whole grace period before uh, hunts could happen just, like, shooting the shit in there. Yeah, they were their sanity was going down by the second. It's It's a miracle that no one died. I'm okay. I was wondering the same thing. I just saw a ghost and she's standing off by herself. It'd be a normal reaction from anyone else who'd just seen a ghost, but this is Stella we're talking about. <laughs> hey, Stella! Wanna hang out with the rest of the class? What? Oh. I'm okay. I'll see you guys later. She hurries off down the road. I think she might be a bit of... She'll be fine! <laughs> Hi, Sorcerer Finch! Hello! Out of curiosity, ditching the ditchling aside, who would be the first person you'd want voice acted? 
And would you have a voice effect for them? I got no answers. Man. Thinking about voice acting is like a, a far-flung dream. I like the thought of a prosy D doing like Oscar. Oh, he would be great. Would be yeah. Great. I don't know. Should we go after her? She's a strong girl. She's had to grapple with a lot of turmoil in her life. She can handle an evening like this. Whoa. And nobody here should be rushing after anyone right now. Imagine Wayne sounding like Candyman for some reason. I, He's I, got the I, I get that vibe. Yeah. That goes doubly for you, Kadika. We don't want that cold of yours to get any worse. I need to be better about closing Sybil's mouth. Oh, there's so much annoying stuff to patch. Oscar, you tried pretty hard to warn us about things. We didn't take you seriously. I thought if there was a ghost, they could punch it. I thought wrong. Well, I should have done a better job warning you. I should have known how bad I could have gotten in there. I shouldn't have let Rosalina come with us. Dad, what did I tell you? Stop blaming yourself. You couldn't have stopped me. If you tried, I was just going to sneak in after you. You didn't put a ghost in our house. This is not on you. I know you've both had a difficult time of this, but the storm has passed. Things will start getting better from here. Mm, there's another coughing in there. Sybil honestly uh, wants to save discussions for episode four so we could release episode three on time yeah. and uh, save content for the next one. Yeah. And we were tired, and also in front of everybody. If oh. I if I admit a sin, a crime, whatever, it's that uh, we maybe finished this episode like the day before it came out. Yep. As we do with as we wind episodes. up doing with all of them. That's why they do the patches. Yep. Early access. It's great. Thank you, early access. Love you. Pretty weird coincidence, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a little lost. Do you find any carvings around town? It's news to me, too. I'm sure everyone here could stand around theorizing about this, this and that all night long. There'll be plenty of time for that tomorrow. <laughs> Sybil is so mystical. She knew you needed more time to finish episode four installed. <laughs> We ran into Wayne in one of those rooms, and we vaguely threatened Stella. We kept poking around. Wait, are you serious? Should we be worried about her? <laughs> oh yeah, we're not hot. Uh, he also crushed a ditchlin with his bare hands. It was pretty scary. I mean, they're kind of soft, right? They probably wouldn't be that hard to crush, maybe. There's someone else in there, but that's my house. Rosalina and I live there. Did he say anything else to you? We don't need to trouble Sylvester for any details. No one pay any mind to that man. <laughs> He's just a drifter. He'll be gone soon enough. In the meantime, steer clear and he won't make trouble. Were you all conscious that whole time? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, uh, we wouldn't... We wouldn't have written something like this if it uh, wasn't also in character for Sybil. Everyone glances at each other. Though none of them technically gave any of their years away, you can see how exhausted they are, how unsettled. Deadlines just sometimes uh, lead to creative problem solving. Yeah. And I, I think there was also a component of like, it felt like there weren't a lot of interesting conversations we could front load this episode with about episode two, because there's such an exhaustive stream of menus after the mind collapse, and we wanted to uh, to be able to avoid that. Yeah, to have people kind of explore their feelings after they've had time away from it. Yeah, because also like that that adds like a, a good opportunity for like extra uh, an so extra glad. type of uh, recap. I'm so glad everybody cried. <laughs> Thank you all for crying. Or almost crying. Pretty sure we remember everything, at least until Sybil showed up and snapped us out of it. Yeah, I should head back. She's sick. I should probably head back inside. 
need to get chili out and there's still work to do to get Rosalina set up for tonight. Don't be a stranger. Let us know if you need anything, Oscar. I will. Thank you. All of you. Again. Thank you for liking our game. I believe it's time for me to get my daughter home as well. But... Kaninka, dear. You haven't been feeling well. You need to get some rest. Uh, the VOD will be up immediately, and it should be on uh, YouTube right away, too, because we're simulcasting there. Okay. See you tomorrow, Sylvester? Yeah, I haven't forgotten what we talked about this morning. Cool. Bye, everybody. Kanika's, Kanika wearily treks back to the general store. Uh, there is going to be a lot of reminders throughout the text that you uh, from taking the sacrifice, and it is going to continually impact your ability to do things. Yes. Civil places a hand on your arm, holding you back for a moment. If there's a lot, if you take the sacrifice, there's a lot of dialogue options in the tail end where your fatigue from it prevents you from like fully going through an explore menu, for instance. And I think some people haven't noticed it, but there's a, a, a filter. Yeah, pe people Old have mostly filter. noticed. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. There's like a eye disease filter. <laughs> a glaucoma filter. Yeah, a glaucoma filter. I'm sure you have questions after everything you saw tonight, but let's not get into it here. And we'll be adding a couple accessibility options for that filter, no, wait, because cataract, I realize for, I realize for some players, uh, <laughs> if you're already visually impaired, it can like make the game next to unplayable, so you'll yeah. be able to both have a reduced version that'll be more of just like a tinge, and then a version where it's just not there. Oh, bye, Wild Sage. Thanks so much for being bye, everyone. here. I think everyone could use a little rest and relaxation right now, yourself included. If you swing by the tea room sometime tomorrow, say early afternoon, you and I can have a little chat. I'll see you then, Sylvester. Sybil leaves you and catches up to her daughter. I guess it's just two of us now. Can I friend zone Avery? Oh no, we're not hot, so that's fine. Bye! Nah. Uh, do you regret coming along? Do you regret coming along tonight? Look, that was a horrible experience. It'll stick with me for the rest of my days. But it's also kind of amazing for that. I don't know if that makes sense, but how many people can say they were genuinely possessed by a ghost? Well, I guess you finally got some shared drama with everyone now. Avery chuckles, then grabs at their ribs, wincing. Yeah, I guess I do, huh? I know tonight was horrific, but it was also thrilling. And knowing we uh, all went through it together, it makes it easier. There are people to commiserate with tomorrow morning when soreness really starts to settle in. Which reminds me, I'd better get back home. I'm supposed to have a shift in the AM. Might have to call in sick, but I was hoping good night's sleep is enough to heal up. And uh, tell Tabitha I hope she feels better soon. See you, Sylvester. Avery heads off, leaving the square in front of the library empty. Avery has never been bothered by anything, even being possessed by a ghost. Time to wrap things up here. Uh, yeah, having powerful build is going to have some special adjustments for uh, the sacrifice aging. I think uh, a lot of it will be in the direction of dad bot, like dad strength. Yeah. The ride back is nearly silent. Tabitha is vis visibly exhausted, her face drawn and pale. Fresh furrows have formed at the corners of her mouth and at the edges of her eyes, and her once uniformly sandy blonde hair is painted with streaks of white. Uh, so, uh, I guess it's ghosts, ghosts are real. real. Yeah, I guess so. It feels like people should be making a bigger deal about this. You'd be surprised how quickly people adjust to terrible realities. I'd much rather move on from what happened tonight than make a big deal out of it. I'm sure most of your little friends feel the same way. Yeah, I think this is actually a good look for you. Is it? Because it doesn't feel good. It feels like something's been ripped out from inside of me. I should have been the one to take a half burden in. Why'd you step in? Sybil was right. It wouldn't have been fair to you. What's it feel like losing years? It feels bad. Oh, thanks, Tabitha. I mean it. We're family. We do things for each other. No need to thank me. 
You slide back into silence as the car makes its way back to the estate. So many sprites to have a hut. Forever. As the car pulls up to the estate, you and your cousin wordlessly make your way to the foyer. Tabitha... Oh, foyer's capitalized here. Has it always been that way? Tabitha no. noticeably strains to open the front door. I've never been so tired in my life. I'm going to bed. Please don't get sucked into any more ghost dimensions before I can wake up and rescue you again. So tired. We want to talk about Wayne first. Really talk. Sylvester, I'm so tired. I'd really rather not. There's going to be opportunities for one-on-one -on -one time with other characters in future episodes. There won't be... I don't think there will be anything similar until, like, the tail end of the story oh, to yeah. the thing in this episode. Yeah. Because it's very much going to be a all-plot-moving-forward oh, type of thing Thank here. you all for saying we put yeah, so much work into you. Thank you so much. You really didn't want me talking to him. What does he know that you're afraid I'll find out? So, like, for reference... There's going to, I think next episode is going to be the first opportunity to lock in romances. Yeah. Which will lead to some more one-on-one -on -one opportunities from there. Um, but again, it'll be like plot-driven one-on-one instead yeah. of just like... Just chilling. kind of sitting around shooting the shit. Yeah. yeah, people don't really feel like shooting the shit after ghosts are real. After ghosts are real. I just know him. Please trust me when I say he's bad news. Have I not done enough to earn your trust? How many more years of my life do I need to offer up to get you to believe me when I warn you about things? So Wayne's a he now. Back in the ghost realm. He was an it. Is Wayne gender fluid? <laughs> Does it really matter? I was scared in there, right? And right now I'm so exhausted I can barely think straight. Who cares if Wayne is a he or an it anyways? Either way's bad news and you'd best steer clear. You think he's actually gonna hurt Stella? No, he's a creep, but I don't think he has it in to hurt her. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Stella is irritatingly resourceful. She'll be fine. Look, I can barely stand right now, but if you're gonna keep bringing this up, and if people are gonna talk behind my back, I at least want you to know my side of things. Perlan didn't like it when I dated someone for too long. She'd pressure me to break up with them, and if I push back, she'd find a way to handle it herself. If you want to know what went wrong with Wayne, you'd be better off asking her, but she's dead as a doornail, so unless we're stuck dealing with two ghosts in one week, that's not happening. Case closed. Be honest. Did you off the old lady? No, 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 no. I'm just gonna. No, do it. do it, do it, do it. I don't want to accuse her of murder. Aww. She just, like, she olded herself for little Sylvester. Wow. Wow, wow what, what a, a bitch. bitch. <laughs> you said it, not me. Be glad the first time you're meeting the woman is at her funeral. I'm sorry. I just feel absolutely awful right now. I don't think I can handle any more talking. I gotta sleep. Don't keep poking around looking for trouble. You just have to make it to the funeral. Four more days, that's all. Then the bus comes. No, I don't have to leave. You get used to this place. That's good to hear. It would be nice not being the only Scarlet left. Anyway, night. See you tomorrow. What bus? It crashed! Yeah, what bus? It crashed. We don't know that in this run. You don't even notice yourself entering the guest room and falling into bed. Suddenly, you're just there, buried under your family's musty covers. I didn't want more menus. Yeah, we don't need more menus. <laughs> She's tired. It's Wednesday night. Nearly half a week has passed since you first arrived in town, and a little over half a week remains until the bus comes to take you home. Very few people have their po boiled peanuts left after this episode. The spirit of Charles Shaw Jr. has been put to rest at the expense of unknown years of your cousin's life. The specter of the night's events will linger over her for every day she has left, a grim reminder of the price she'd willingly paid for the crimes of a great-grandmother she despised. Maybe her decision will bring her peace of mind. Maybe she can still right the capsized ship of her broken life. Or maybe things will only spiral out of hand from here. 
This is the end of episode three. Yeah, thank stick you. up, eh? Uh, this, thank you so much for playing. We hope to have episode four released before the end of the year. Let's save this one. Why not? I like Oof. that stuff with Tabitha at the end. Oh, oh, we did just, it! Just under eight hours. I knew it would be eight hours. Yeah, Can't wait until the marathon after episode seven comes out. And we die. Thank you so much, like six everyone, for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you so much. So much. Hi, Bob. We did it. Ah, now we get to sit around. Maybe we'll watch a horror movie. Thinking about how we're probably going to do one of these when the whole game is done. Thinking about what that's going to be like. That intense. might have to be two streams. I, I don't see us being able to finish all I of it. I don't know. If, go. I mean, you know, it's a marathon, right? Yeah. Yay, thank you all so much for being here. Yeah. This was great. It's great. We sure did. A uh, good day's work. Time to there. rest forever. Sorry right. about the bugs that we found. Right. Well, I mean, you know, it's, the it's better to find them. Kind of fix all the bugs. Oh, this is a person. The perfect thing to listen to. Well, bu busted out desserts for tomorrow. Ooh, fun. I hope you have a good tomorrow. With oh, it's Easter. I was like, oh, what is it, a day? It is a it's, day. It's, it's Easter. Easter's. We should get some mini eggs. Or something. <laughs> thank you all so much. And thank you for enjoying our work. Thanks for being so nice to us. Yeah. Thanks for being invested in our little thing that we do. All of these things. Thank you for donating. Yeah, There's so many bits. Donated. Thank so you many so dollars. much for the dollars, for the bits, for everything. Yes, good night all. Have a lovely I'm day. Wait until we hit eight hours, which is uh, <laughs> under like, fifty seconds yeah. from now. As you can see, the lights on, in the studio are all on timers because it's bedtime, and almost all of them have gone off. That's how you know it's the end of the day. Y'all are too kind. Too kind. Too, too kind. kind. Thirty more seconds. Yeah. <sighs> this, uh, it's I always good the to eight. do these because then we can get a refresher on details, such as Deputy Derrickson has two teenage daughters. Oh, yeah, I remember that, too. And I was like, I forgot I wrote that. I forgot. Why aren't they friends with the gang? I mean, Maybe they probably they have self-respect. Oh, yeah, they probably are just like, they don't want to hang out with kids going to a fucking... Yeah, they don't want to fucking mine. hang out with them. Their dad crew. is a cop. I mean, they're oh, crazy. Alec, thank you like... for. Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Oh, it's that's eight. so nice. Okay. We do.